Yeah. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. And and was was Dan? I mean, we've talked about what his legacy mm -hmm. and comedy has been with Schitt's Creek. I yeah. I said it five times. Yeah. Um, was he a big draw to be part of? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I loved I love Schitt's Creek. I think like a lot of people like that like helped me through the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm ever grateful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, but I just I love the script because it wasn't sort of like a and it didn't feel like a like a, a raucous comedy. It yeah. just felt like a very authentic um, uh, experience of friendship and what mm -hmm. that means and how like so sometimes grief can help us get closer to the mm -hmm. people we love and mm -hmm. also to our authentic selves. And I think we're quite frightened of grief in a way. Yeah. And this is just a sort of a, a sort of a tender peon to it in a way. That's nice. Hamesh, what was it like having Dan as your uh, director? <laughs> Gird yourself. Gird yourself. Oh yeah, I'm not sure I should. No. Yeah, let's air, let's air the laundry here um, on television. Yeah, why, why not? No, it was wonderful. It was yeah. great. He is so generous. We were just talking about this last night, weren't we? About how generous Dan is mm. as a person and therefore yeah. as a director, as a writer, as a co-star. And he set a wonderful tone mm -hmm. for us all to work in and. We just had the best time, yeah. We hear there's a karaoke scene. Yeah. Where you, you, you let it go? Yeah, well, look, here's the thing. I, I got really ill in the week leading up to the karaoke scene. Oh. And so I genuinely couldn't sing when we got to, the, to doing it. <laughs> yeah. Which was helpful. <laughs> The other thing that people don't ever talk about with like karaoke scenes in movies is that you can't actually have the music. Oh, I know. Oh, yes. right. so right. you're, it's like why, an, why is that? Well, because it'll interfere with the recording yeah. of the actual voice. Oh, so it's so a cappella. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Dead silence. Oh, no. Screaming into silence. <laughs> That's all right for someone who can sing. If you can't sing, like it was a nightmare. Really? So yeah. But I couldn't because my voice was completely I gone. See. Well, your uh, singing listen. is better than most of ours, <laughs> badly. Okay, can we talk about the food. Yeah, on we set? have to talk about we it. We heard it was top drawer. We want to know why what? and what it was. I'm sorry, yeah. but the fact that y'all both mentioned the food yeah. means something. Well, usually, like, the onset food isn't anything to write home about, is mm -hmm. it? And this time it was. <laughs> At the end of the day, food is the key to people's enthusiasm, it's the key yeah. to their hearts, it's the key to feeling taken care of. Yeah. You have to feed people well. Yeah. That's an important thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And pe being in Paris, f you know, it was. T tables, four mile long tables of every possible food you could oh, imagine. My God. To the point where I actually think we worked harder in the mornings just to break to get for to lunch. <laughs> just to get to lunch. Oh, yeah. You guys, we, we adore you. We're so happy you guys Thank came. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having congratulations us. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Very much. And congratulations to all you. much for having us. It's, 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 I love a movie that celebrates grief yes. in, a, in a funny, yeah. beautiful yeah. way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Good Grief is streaming now on Netflix. Coming up next, the happiness expert who co-wrote his latest bestseller with Oprah. We've got Arthur C. Brooks with us coming up right after this. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Look, look what Huda has I under been looking forward to this not even all week long all month long uh, Arthur C Brooks is an expert 
on happiness. He's a Harvard professor, a columnist for The Atlantic, and the author of 13 books, including the number one bestseller, which I just finished reading, From Strength to Strength. It is amazing. Thank you. Okay, Arthur's newest book is also a number one bestseller. He co-authored it <laughs> with somebody you may know. Her name is Oprah, and it's called Build the Life You Want, the Art and Science of Getting Happier. Hi, Arthur. Hi, nice this to see you. you. By the way, this is such a thrill. This is the first time I'm meeting you. Yeah. I've been reading your books, and I'm just inspired. And I love what you say about happiness and how a lot of people say, if I'm happy, I'll feel good. Just right. get me to happy. Yeah, yeah. Right. But that's not it at all. It's a terrible goal because we can't get to happy. It's not yeah. a destination. It's a direction. Yeah. We, we can all get happier if we actually understand a little bit of the science and change our habits. But if we say, look, I got to be happy, then we're yeah. setting ourselves up for failure and frustration, we won't be able to manage ourselves appropriately. That's yeah. a really important thing for us to remember. Oprah calls it, not happiness, happy yearness. Happy yearness. That's the goal. I She's like so that. great with words, right? So we write a book together and I'm doing all the science. She says, we need a word. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happy yearness. It's uh -huh. happy yearness. And I love that you say, you write about the fact that we don't have to be happy all the time. I mean, yeah. first of all, that's completely unrealistic. Yeah, it's also dangerous. You yeah. know, we have negative and positive emotions. And the biggest mistake that we make is saying, I don't want bad feelings. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You need negative emotions. Yeah. You'd be dead without negative emotions. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they, they exist because they're information about the outside world. The point is you need to learn from them, grow from them, and manage them. And that's a lot about that, what Oprah and I write about. That's, that's the work, is learning to manage your emotions so they don't manage you. And when you do that, when you really crack the code, you're alive. You're having mm -hmm. the good and the bad feelings and it's all part of the life experience mm -hmm. and they're not running your life and making you miserable. I like how you guys say emotions are just kind of a tap on the shoulder. Yeah. They're yeah. not the thing. It's like reminding you you're angry but there's something that's going on that you need to address. Exactly right. You're not your emotions. Yeah. You're a person with emotions. Yeah. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. So we talk about this technique called metacognition. Big fancy word. Yeah, we academics that? talk that way. It's basically <laughs> thinking about thinking. It's understanding yourself. You got to have a PhD in you, uh -huh. right? I mean, it's, it's it's Hoda studies is really what uh -huh. your what your PhD is in. And once you understand yourself, you can get a little bit of distance between yourself and your emotions. Yeah. And then you can actually manage your emotions. You do this through prayer, through meditation, through journaling. There's so many ways to do it. And once you get a little bit of space. You're your life can really change. I, we talked about this. I got to hang with you earlier yeah. when this book was published. It's like, I also think this is so important to read and then help you redefine how you parent. Right. Because our kids need to know it's okay to be sad and scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so what's advice when it comes to that? Well, one of the biggest mistakes that parents make today, and you know, I'm, I have young adult children yeah. and, and I'm a grandfather now. And so I've been thinking about this an awful lot. And I teach students who are on average 25 to 30 years old. Right. I teach MBA students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. studying the science of happiness is one of their electives mm -hmm. and one of the things that I see is that parents are too freaked out about their parent about their kids being unhappy oh, about the, and they're freaked out about it. Yeah. a lot of helicopter parenting is because they're thinking about their kids feelings all the time and they're trying yeah. to wipe out the bad feelings and that's a mistake yeah your kid needs to be alive your kid needs to learn yeah. your kid needs to grow you want your child to have a full life of happy yearness mm -hmm. not trying to get them into the zone mm -hmm. of you know unreality which is happiness itself and yeah. when you do that you protect them too much from the experiences and then they wind up becoming adults and, and not Don't knowing know how, how to, to suffer. handle it yeah <laughs> I like how you draw a distinction between pleasure pleasure is what you get when you bite into the chocolate chip cookie yeah. or pleasure is what you get when you take the drink or pleasure right. is what you get it's like an instant thing that happens to you and that and then there's another kind of satisfaction that comes with sort of a collective feeling. Yeah, this is a really important thing. So happiness is defined as a combination of enjoyment and satisfaction and meaning. Mm -hmm. Those are the meaning, three things that we yeah. need. Now, I didn't say pleasure. Pleasure is related to enjoyment. A lot of people are seeking pleasure, but that's just a brain phenomenon. Yeah. You know, back in the 60s, they used to say, if it feels good, do it. Yeah. That's a great way to ruin your life. <laughs> because <laughs> all you're doing is you're hitting the lever again and again and yeah. again. It's a little center of your brain. It's called the ventral striatum. It's your pleasure center inside your brain. Yeah. And when you do things for just for pleasure, you hit it again and again and again. You get addicted. Yeah. Right. That's a great way to wreck your life. Yeah. What you need is to take the sources of pleasure and add two things, people and memory. And that takes the experience of the pleasure and it turns into a really human full thing called enjoyment. So, and here's the way to think about it. If something gives you pleasure and it can be addictive, 
drinking, yeah, drugs, you know, yeah. drugs, scrolling, scrolling yeah. shopping, e eating, yeah. you know, your junky food, gambling, whatever it happens to be. If you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. Mm, this is the key so, way to so remember good. it, right? Interesting. If it's addictive and it gives you pleasure, don't do it alone. You got to add people and memory. Then it becomes a source of enjoyment, and that will give you greater happiness. Um, but we we don't we have not enough time with you. But I, first, wait, quickly, it can't be there are four areas we can push it. There are no. four areas, right? four yeah. areas that are scientifically yeah. yes. proven right. to help science be happier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah four investments, kind of the, what the are happiness four hundred one k plan. Mm. Where should you invest your mm -hmm. your time? Your faith, your mm -hmm. family your friendships, and serving other people with your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the big four. Like people spend a lot of time on things that are kind of extraneous and little things and you know, self-improvement things that are just kind of at the margins. The big four are your transcendent life, you know, your faith or your spirituality, or your philosophy of life. Not necessarily my faith. I'm a Christian, it's really yeah. important to me, but but what you need is something bigger than you that lets you zoom out on life. Mm -hmm. That's super important. You need to get small mm -hmm. because when you're too big, you're gonna be obsessed. It's like watching the most boring sitcom over and over and over again <laughs> every single day yeah, by force. Yeah. Family life, people define it in different ways, but we know that these are mystical relationships mm -hmm. of love. We didn't choose them. God yeah. knows in lots of cases we wouldn't have chosen them, <laughs> but they drive us crazy because they're so important. Mm -hmm. The third is friendships. Mm -hmm. Now, today, a lot of people have a lot of friends, but they're not real friends. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're deal friends. Deal friends. We know the difference between real and deal. Yeah. Or virtual friends. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Doesn't count. In person, in real life, eye contact and touch. Yeah. yeah. There's touch. a lot of neuroscience about why that matters, but we all kind of get it. Uh -huh. And last but not least, our, our, our work has to serve other people. We have to create value with our lives. Mm -hmm. And if we do those four every day, checklist, at the end of the day, examine kind of your, your day and say, did I do something for my faith? Did I do something for my family? Mm -hmm. Did I call my mom yeah did I do something with her did, ke keeping in touch with my real friends not just my deal friends yeah and do I believe I serve people today and if it's check 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 you're gonna go happier. to bed happier, happier. get up happier that's one more thing is there a <laughs> there's a science to falling in love yeah this, there's a yeah. science. Yeah, I want to hear sure. what this is. Yeah, yeah. So this is what my students are, you know, 28 yeah. years old. This is what they really is like. And Professor Brooks, forget all the other stuff. Let's just talk about the how to fall, how to fall in love and stay in love, which is really important. So the brain goes through a series of very discreet steps when you're starting to fall in love. You mm -hmm. know, it has a lot of, you know, there's, there's, there, you know, there's sex hormones, and then there's, there's neurotransmitters mm -hmm. that are starting to fire, and all kinds of complicated chemistry that's going on. But ultimately, the science of falling in love says this. There's a lot a lot of you know passion at the very beginning mm -hmm. a lot of infatuation at the very beginning but the goal of falling in love is friendship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's really what it is and so what I tell my students is the goal of your partnership it shouldn't be being passionate forever that's Disney movies yeah like happily ever after and yeah. you know looking into each other's eyes and being deeply in love like I've been married 33 years mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> she's watching <laughs> Careful. hey she's a fan you know? <laughs> hey. <laughs> and but the whole point is that you're relationship should be tending toward best friendship that's mm -hmm. the science because that uses a there's a there's actually a neuropeptide it's a hormone that functions in the brain called oxytocin mm -hmm. that's the that's the hormone of human bonding and mm -hmm. ultimately that's what links you to your intimates to your children to your closest friends and to your spouse and this kind of companionate love can be plenty passionate still yeah. will be but that's really the goal the science of falling in love and staying in love is getting to deep friendship at the end of the day that's mm -hmm. why marriage are satisfi satisfying and they really last. Okay. okay. Well, by the way, you're doing this really cool thing with the Atlantic yeah. where every day one key to getting <clears throat> yeah. happier. Uh, what does Oprah say again? Oh, happy ha yearness. Happy yearness. Yeah, yearness. Defining happy yearness. 31 yearness. days to happy yearness. Yeah. So okay. we can check it out. We'll yeah. put it on our website. We'll put it on our website. Yeah, yeah. Thank super you so fun. much, Arthur. Arthur, thank nice to see you. you. What a thrill. Great Come to be back. with you. Why I need more. Why is it over? Wait, why is it over? We need more. Check out buildthelifeyouwantedtoday.com slash books. Coming up next, your Golden Globes weekend watch list. Look at the movies and stars that could win big. This. Why is that so good? It should have been too.
Golden Globe Awards are this Sunday, so you've got a little more than 48 hours to pick it, pack in all the movies and TV shows. We have a lot to watch. We, that have, we a have a lot. See. <laughs> yeah, here with your Golden Globes weekend watch list is Rotten Tomatoes, Naz Perez. Hi, Naz. Naz. Okay, this, is, this is pretty cool. I cannot believe the Golden Globes are already almost here. So what are we going to expect from the show? Oh, my God. Well, the 81st Golden Globes yeah. are obviously airing this Sunday. It's my favorite season, award mm. season. Mm -hmm. Comedian Joe Coy is going to be hosting it. Oh, oh we love him. Ever hosting an award show. I'm so excited for him. He has really relatable humor. Big story going into the night is Barbie is the most nominated film with nine nominations. It's mm -hmm. actually tied with Cabaret for being the second most nominated film oh. in Golden Globes history. It's wow. nominated for Best Picture Comedy. Greta Gerwig's nominated for directing. Of course, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are nominated in the acting categories. <laughs> and what makes the Globes different this year is that now there are six nominees as opposed to five in each category. That scene's so We funny. love that scene on Barbie. It's so good. So what is going to win Best Picture? What do you think? Best Picture drama, I think for sure, is going to go to Oppenheimer, right? Yeah, this that's is what Oppenheimer's saying. Lose. By the way, all movies in this category are certified fresh on the tomato meter, but I just want to give a shout out to the movie Past Lives. Jenna, we were just talking yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. Henry oh, watched it on the airplane home and loved it, and yeah. actually Gavin recommended it to me, so therefore yeah. I recommended it to Henry. I love this movie, and the Globes did too. It got Love's five nominations. Concept. So basically, this movie is about two childhood friends who are reunited 20 years after being separated when one of them mm. immigrates to America from South Korea. But do you know why I love it. Mm. You have, have you ever been in a relationship with someone and you thought it was going to work out, but then the universe had different plans? Yeah. You just think to yourself, maybe in a past life it would have yeah. worked out. If you've ever yeah. felt that sentiment, that movie is for you, and you guys can run. Henry, this yeah. is Henry Hager's platform. review. It's quiet but very lovely. Oh, <laughs> I, I like that. It is I very like lovely. That. Okay, yeah, so what about past lives? best actress in a drama? Who yeah. thinks going to take it? Best actress in a drama. I mean, this category is stacked. I mean, you have Annette Bening playing real life swinner Diana Nyad, but I think this is going to go to Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower yeah, Moon. Yeah. Yes. And obviously, you know, stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, directed by Martin Scorsese, but she really is the emotional center of this film, which is about the Osage Nation murders in 1920s Oklahoma uh, when oil was found on their tribal land. This is a true story. It was mm. actually one of the first major investigations of the It's FBI. an incredible book, too, if anybody wants to it read is. it first. It is, and she's a mesmerizing presence, critics have said. Um, she's actually the first indigenous person to be nominated Amazing. in this category. If she wins, it'll give her momentum going into the Oscars. Oscars, and if she wins that, she'd be the first Native American woman to win Best Actor. Love it. That's Oscars. incredible. Who's up for Best Actor in a drama? Best Actor. I love this category. Also really stacked. I think the two front runners here are J. Robert Oppenheimer, uh, mm -hmm. played by Killian Murphy, yeah. and then Bradley Cooper, who yes. plays the composer, uh -huh. conductor, music legend, Leonard Bernstein. I just want to give a quick shout out to Barry Keoghan, though, for his delicious performance in Saltburn. It's one of my favorites. I personally, Jenna and Hoda, want Bradley Cooper to take this. He's yeah. always surprising us. He directed Stars and Maestro, 79% certified fresh on the tomato meter. Mm -hmm. It's a story about the complicated life and marriage between him and his wife, Felicia. Mm -hmm. There is a six-minute scene in this film where he's conducting an orchestra in yeah. a cathedral. He does it in one take, worked with two leading conductors to pull it off. Oh my it's gosh. so impressive. You guys have to watch it. It's streaming now wow. on Netflix. So okay. My, okay, you watch it on Netflix. It's good to know. Okay, yeah. what about Best Actress in a Comedy or yeah. Musical? Yeah. Oh Margo? You think I, it's Margo? Okay, so no, actually. But this category is insane. If you have Fantasia Brino for The oh, Color yeah. Purple, oh, Margo, who's perfect in Barbie. The front runner, Jenna, is actually Emma Stone in Poor Things. She is unstoppable. This wow. is a career best performance for it's actually her highest rated film on the tomato meter. This is a story, if you guys haven't seen this movie, about a woman who's brought back to life by a scientist. Think female Frankenstein, but like with a twist. She brings. Is it funny? Is it, it's, it is funny. She. It's based on a book, Jenna. I know you love reading. Uh, there's so much physicality. <laughs> I know she loves there it. There you go. There's so much physicality in this role. It really shows Emma Stone's range. She's also nominated at the Globes for her TV role in The Curse. Worlds apart from wow. what she plays in this. This film is 93% certified fresh. It is so good. I think it'll beat Barbie in Best Picture Comedy, and you guys can watch it Whoa. in theater. Wow, wow. that's a bold prediction. Watch it before Sunday. Let's do Best sure. Actor in a Musical or Comedy. Oh, okay, so I think this is going to be between Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers yeah. and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Personally, I'd love to see Jeffrey Wright take this. American fiction is so good. I've heard it's amazing. It? Yeah. No. You, How can we watch it? You would love it. Yeah. Um, you guys can watch it in theaters now. Jeffrey Wright plays a really frustrated author who's tired of the business profiting off novels that rely on racial stereotypes. Mm. So he has this idea to prove a point where he writes this outlandish, stereotypical story about black people under an alias. And much to his dismay, it becomes a huge hit. Oh. But the stars in this movie you guys would love. Tracy Ellis Ross, who the three love. of us love. Issa Rae, Sterling 
Sterling K. Brown in one of my favorite roles that he's ever been in. Um, it is so, so good. Also about the complicated uh, life between him and his family. But you guys can watch it in theaters. By the way, American see fiction. that. You know when someone loves what they're doing? Yes. You love what you're doing. <laughs> I oh, no. love what you're doing. I really that do. Was I really love good. Thanks, Thank Nas. You. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. We appreciate it. Okay, coming up next, what's in store for 2024? We've got your astrological forecast coming up right after this. Good job, Nas. That was great. It's a new year, so we thought it'd be fun to find out what's written in the stars for us, for all of us, yeah. in 2024. We called our friend and astrologer and transformational coach, Jennifer Rassiopi, to share her forecast for this year. She's the author of Cosmic Health. We love when you come yes, here. Yes, we do. So can we do some big picture here? How would you say 2024 is going to shape up overall? Yeah, 2024 is a really exciting year. It's full of hairpin turns, innovation, and lots of opportunities to explore new potentials. We kick the year off with almost no retrograde activity. Mercury, the planet of communication. Just it has been in retrograde, right? Yes. yes. I can tell. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> a lot of craziness happening. It has been, but it's coming out. Yeah, so Mercury just stationed direct on January 1st, and by the end of the month, we don't have any retrograde activity again till early spring. So right out of the gates, the year kicks off with a lot of positive momentum. Okay. But it's really April that we'll see like the marquee events for astrology this year. We have a total solar eclipse that we'll mm -hmm. see across the U.S. And then we have this other really important astrological configuration known as the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Jupiter is growth. Uranus is change. They come together. And so we can expect electrifying energy, big shifts, ahas. And the year is really fast. So um, we want to get our ducks in a row now, clean up lingering messes. Uh, let go of what we can, get uh -huh. free where we can. Awesome. Okay, okay let's hear about Hoda and hear what her year's going to be like. For all the Leos like. out there. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, well, specific to you, and then we'll go okay. into the fire signs. Okay. Hoda, you have a, a dynamic year. You're coming in on the end of your Saturn return right now. Saturn's opposing your moon. So it's, you got to go slow. You got to really do the work of embodying where you're at, tending yeah. to the difficult, the, uh, you know, the, the parts of life that are challenging. But come spring, you have gangbuster energy in your oh, chart. Oh, yes! Mm. So your your motto this year is go slow to go fast. Especially... Go fast. Es we kind of said that. Yeah. Not exactly that But way. I like it that way. Go slow, go go fast. slow okay. to go fast. Especially right now, you want to consolidate lessons. Just go really slow. Be really mindful. But as you get into... April, May, we're talking like once in a lifetime energy where things that you really want start to come to fruition and or, you know, what you don't even expect. It's expecting the unexpected in a positive way. So just put your heart, your prayers in your heart, surrender to the divine and get ready because it's going to be really nice. Get ready. Oh, I can't wait Buckle till then. Okay, let's talk about Jenna. <laughs> so Jenna, you two are going through a lot of Saturn stuff. You have Saturn squaring your sun. You're just wrapping that up. But this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happens really right on um, a very pivotal point in your chart that sets off your grand trine in earth so it's a manifesting energy you have a grand trine in earth you're a great manifester you have a wonderful sense of humor this all gets really activated this spring so again expect the unexpected but you're going to have tons of epiphanies revelations and just deep changes within your soul around mm. how you're doing things how you're showing up it's also a time of release letting go of old expectations stepping into a new version of yourself mm. okay all right should we go through the signs because people want to know all right let's start with the fire signs people who are aries leos and sagittarius yeah so fire 
are signs. You want to be really mindful about acting reactively. You know, being reactive isn't going to get you closer to your destiny or your desired outcomes. You want to slow down, be patient, show up proactively and productively to nuances and see how that changes things. Um, make changes by channeling into your creativity without doing any damage to relationships. Mm, interesting. Okay. okay, let's move on to Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Okay, so our Earth signs are going through tremendous transformation. Pluto is leaving Capricorn, and you've changed really from the inside out. The old chapter's ending, a new bridge is about to appear to where you're going next. You want to trust your gut, mm. tune into your inner wisdom, and channel your higher self to the best of your ability. All right, let's talk about the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Gangbuster activity this year. So wow. Pluto's moving into Aquarius and with this is like changing from the inside out. There's a heavy dose of grit coming your way. You can really, really expect beneficial connections with positive people. Jupiter's moving into Gemini later this year. So you have to trust yourself. Let go of the old and outworn. Really, um, yeah, just go with what mm -hmm. you know to be mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally we have water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Mm -hmm. So don't let yesterday's pain overshadow, uh, overshadow today's potential. It's over, you've survived, now start to look, about, look towards what's happening next. Saturn, the planet of discipline and structures in Pisces, so you have to pay attention to your daily commitments, um, show up to tasks. It's through daily dedication that success becomes inevitable. Awesome. Oh my gosh. What a great year we it's have ahead. It's going to be really fun. I'm you excited. You need to mark your calendar I am, I am. for April. I got it. Trust me. <laughs> thank, thank you, you thank so you, much. Thank you, Jennifer. My pleasure. And to check out Jennifer's book, Cosmic Health, go today.com slash book. And we'll be back right after this. Wow. Thank you. Wow. So April is when it's happening. going to do it for us next week. Kevin Hart's going to be here. Plus, we're going to catch up with Mel B. And from the new Mean Girls movie, we've got actress Busy Phillips. I can't wait to see that Mean Girls That's movie. Good week. Okay, y'all, enjoy your weekend. Bye. It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, incoming, that major winter storm barreling toward the East Coast this morning. Millions now under winter storm alerts. Al's got your full weekend forecast. Then unanswered questions. After more than a decade, Casey Anthony's parents are speaking out. Did you knowingly conceal Kaylee's whereabouts? No. OK, so you're struggling with that one a little bit. Taking a lie detector test in a brand new special, the full story straight ahead. Plus, long distance call. NA1 SS. This is KC3 SGV. Harry Smith visits a group of high schoolers trying to contact someone far, far away. You have to hit a target. Right, exactly. You're hitting something that's 254 miles away, traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, and you're hoping that everything goes correctly. <laughs> Their call to the International Space Station you do not want to miss. And major backpedaling. A Peloton instructor takes aim at director Christopher Nolan. Anybody see this in that two and a half hours of my life that I want back? The famed director catching the critique while taking her class. How he reacted and what she's now saying coming up on Popstar today, Friday, January 5th, 2024. Vermont is how it is to see me. Growth trip to New York. Celebrating our third anniversary. From Columbus, Ohio. Happy Friday from Lubbock, Texas.
Kentucky, Arkansas, Santa Cruz, California, and, and Lake, Lake City, City Minnesota. Minnesota. Here to celebrate Emma's 12th birthday from Montana, Texas, <laughs> on a mother-daughter trip from Boca Raton, Florida. Today's my 50th. Hi to my students at Anchorage Pines Elementary. In Loxahatchee, Florida. After 40 years of watching this show, we finally made it to celebrate Leslie's 57th birthday. At the Today Show! Ah! Well, we are back, 14 with one of our absolute favorite series here at the Today Show. Mr. Smith goes to. Okay, this morning Mr. Smith here is taking us to a high school in Pennsylvania where a very special radio call, years in the making, Drew, as much attention as a big game there. Hi, Harry. You know, we didn't really know what we were walking into. It felt kind of like some state high school championship was going on. And, oh, my goodness, for the kids who were involved, they got it. The sky was the limit. <laughs> In a town near Erie, Pennsylvania. And they want to assess. This is KC3 SGV. A group of students are trying to contact someone who is not and particularly assess, easy to reach. Assess. This is KC3 SGV. All those numbers and letters are ham radio call signs. NA1 SS is the this International is Space SGV. Station. Three, two, one. The first Hello, amateur Hello, contact Hello, in space Hello, happened 40 Hello, years Hello, ago Hello, with the space shuttle Hello, Columbia. Hello, W1JXN. This is W5LFL. Uh, you're our first contact from uh, orbit. What advice would you Since then, a group called ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, has organized radio calls between astronauts and some million students worldwide. What do you do for fun on the space station? Over. Most of the time, adults do the setup. But at Harbor Creek High School, it's all about the students. Which license do you have? Uh, I have the Technician General and Amateur Extra Licenses. All of these students are licensed amateur radio operators, studying for a series of federal communications exams and passing to use radio waves to reach out to the world. My last contact was in Austria. But now, literally aiming higher, this space station call years in the making, endless hours of after school and weekends of preparation. This is the one you use to yes. contact the space, space yes. station? Did you guys put all of this stuff together? We've set everything up from the antennas to the radios, to the power supplies, antenna controllers. We've set this whole event up ourselves. The students have a 10 minute window to make contact. Then question astronaut Andreas Mogensen. They can be very- Assistant principal Drew Mortensen heads the advanced technology club at the school. After attending an amateur radio seminar, he thought, I'll bet our students can do this. You have to hit a target. Right, exactly. You're hitting something that's 254 miles away, traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, and you're hoping that everything goes correctly. Like, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? No, right, exactly, no. The gym looks like it's set up for homecoming. Signs, balloons, you can feel the buzz. As classes file in to watch, the technology kids are psyched, anxious. Today, the students of Harbor Creek are on a journey to boldly go where few hams have gone before. The time has come. 15-year-old Giles Veit begins the call. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3 SGV. The gym full of students wondering, will this work? NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3 SGV. NA1SS. Giles calls again. KC3 SGV. And again. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3 SGV. Finally. Hey, Commander Mogensen, we have you a 5-7, a pretty good signal. So, are you ready for some questions? I am ready for questions. Go ahead. Lots of the club members get to take turns. Living in space a as a payoff for the hours of work they've invested. Why do you think that space exploration is important? Over. Space exploration is important in many ways. One, because it's about knowledge. It's about expanding our horizons both physically but also in 10 short minutes, the space station is out of range. For the students!
What was it like hitting that button over and over? As soon as we heard Commander Mogison respond, that was such a relief, really. I'm just looking at the smile on your face. Yeah. What else are you feeling right now? Um, lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mortensen is brimming with pride. Yes. Yeah. How big of an emotional investment was this for you? I love my kids. I do. I absolutely love them. And so, for them to get to have that experience is huge. Why you become a teacher? Yep, absolutely. I clapped again. Yes, there were some tears that day too, right? Yeah. Lovely school, not, oh. not exactly loaded with resources. Nope. Yeah. The kids went out, they raised money to get the equipment oh. and everything oh. else, did it all themselves. That's right, All the, the nerds were one, right. they won. <laughs> and what's interesting is they started this a couple of years ago, that advanced technology yeah. club has grown and oh. grown and grown. They're doing astronomy, they're doing all kinds of really cool stuff. And if you want to do this with your school, yeah. call this group A. R I S S Aris. It's just Google it. It just does the heart good to see yeah. good kids, good teacher, yep. working hard, doing something incredible. And the Science. buzz in there was like, I can whoa, 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 this yeah. is what's going to happen. And obviously you being there is exactly pretty cool, Exactly right. too. I'm sure the whole community is watching there this morning, oh. the parents, yeah. the teachers, so all of you this morning. Kudos. Awesome. STEM rules. You were in the AV club. I was in the AV club. I have my first class, well, I had my first class FCC reading. Which is not easy to get. You know, it was, uh, it was a big so deal. They're still yeah. licensing for radio. I mean, this is still a cool Right. Technology. But Savannah, yeah. this is a message to you and I oh. as the underachievers in high school. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say, oh, we were underachievers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the elderly. <laughs> no, no. And like, by the oh. way, ham radio, very important. Uh, secondary, you know, when, when other forms of You're communication right. go out, During ham disasters. radio is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah big time like stuff. So that's right. right. It's, it's something that we really do need. Well, congrats right. to those kids. Absolutely. Coming up on 837 now with one of the most talented guys in Hollywood. Emmy winner, Oscar and Grammy nominee, Seth MacFarlane. Seth, he's the man behind hit shows, of course, like The Family Guy and the raunchy teddy bear in those wildly popular TED films. And now that bear is back, back in a new series on Peacock. It's a prequel that's set in 1993 with Ted and his bestie John taking on high school where they get themselves into all kinds of trouble. Take a look. Now, as far as anyone knows, we're two ad executives on a business trip from Hartford looking for some local talent. Right. Hey, uh, keep these milkshakes coming, huh? Sure thing. You know, um, we're celebrating. Just landed a big account. Bounty. It's a very famous paper towel. <laughs> yep, I use them every day. Oh, it's terrific. Well, you know, originally the slogan was supposed to be the quicker picker-upper, but we added the word thicker quicker picker-upper. Bought a summer house with that one adjective. Oh, Seth MacFarlane, good to have you back. <laughs> good for you for finding a clip that's, that's able to Well, I'm glad you brought it up. That's yeah. literally yeah. the only clip we could play yeah. on morning television. It's like trying to find a clip from The Sopranos. What's going to work <laughs> on the Today Show? Yeah, no, it's a, I, I was just <laughs> telling you, I caught the first two episodes last night. It's funny. 
Oh, thank you. It's legit fun. I was a little yeah. skeptical because I love Ted and I love the sequel. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna mess this. yeah. you didn't mess it up. So thank well you. Done. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I find it interesting that this was b before your success with The Family Guy or the show I used to love, The Cleveland Show, all these other shows that you yeah. had, Ted was in your mind. Yes. How, how did this idea come to be, Ted, Ted the Bear? You know, it was originally an animated series um, that I developed when I was at working at Cartoon Network. Okay. And I didn't do anything with it. It just kind of sat there. And then when it came time for me to make my first movie, I went back to it. I said, you know what? There might be, this thing might have some legs. Yeah. And uh, redeveloped it, and it became Ted the Feature. And the technology that you guys used this time around for this film, mm -hmm. this was not technology that existed when the, when the original film came out years ago. No, no. How'd you do it this time? We, you know, we developed a program called ViewScreen um, through our company Fuzzy Door that we actually developed for the Orville, uh, and then it kind of came to fruition on TED that, um, that allows the camera operator to see the bear in real time through their viewfinder. And I don't even really have to wear any of the GAC anymore. Yeah. Just, you know, the, the sensors that I used to wear. That's all kind of out the window. And why was that so advantageous for, for you and the rest of the folks who are working on the series? Because, you know, when I'm directing, if I'm walking, if, I, if you have to unplug me every time I, you know, got to go talk to an actor, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. So it, it was very freeing. And it's set in the 90s this time as yes, well. Yes, why, yes. Why, why, why the 90s instead of the 2000s like the films? Well, you know, um, I, I spoke to Wahlberg initially and I said, listen, obviously, you know, if, if, you, want, if, you, if you want to do this, yeah. you, you know, you're, you know, I figured there's no way he's going to have time to do a television series with his schedule, which is true. So logically, it followed that uh, a prequel was the most reasonable way to go. And, and it turned out being kind of a fresh injection for the, the franchise. It's like the 90s are very in right now. Yeah, people kind of loves a little nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You you wear so many hats. You produce, you direct, you sing, you act, you voice, you do all of the... I don't have to sit here and take this. <laughs> no. Do you do you have a favorite? Is there, <laughs> is there a part of your repertoire that you enjoy more than more than the others? Uh, you know, whatever I'm not doing that moment. Yeah. I want to be doing the other thing. It's a real healthy mindset. Of the voices that, that <laughs> of the characters that you voice, is there is there a favorite? Uh, you know, not not really. Brian is certainly the easiest. That's the easiest work day for me. Yeah. Um, Quagmire is probably the most difficult. Uh, but uh, no, they're, they're all they're all. You know, what it's it just gets to be more and more and more. So it's it, you know the older I get, yeah. getting through it is the challenge because there's Family Guy, there's American Dad. So you're doing like an hour of bellowing into a microphone. Yeah. Do you no. ever get sick of people coming up to you on the street and people are like, hey, hey, give me a little Brian. Yeah. Give me, give me a little. You know, I don't. Because really? I don't because as soon as it stops, that's when it's all over. That's a bad sign. <laughs> so yeah. I'm okay with it. That's a bad sign. Well, yeah. again, the, the series, it's, it's quite funny. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate congratulations, it. Congratulations. And we hope to see you back here soon. Next time you come, you'll sing. Or I'm sure you'll sing. What are, what's it. next? Yeah. What's the next? Whatever project? you want me to do. Okay. Whatever you want me to do. I'm Seth gonna... McFarland. Thank you. Seth's coming back in our third hour as well with fellow TED star Max Burkholder. And folks, you can catch all seven episodes of that new show streaming right now on Peacock. Actually, the streaming starts on January 11th. Can you can you give us just a little, Brian? All seven. Can, all seven. Ah, there you go, Brian, right there. That was all that. seven episodes. Aren't we generous? <laughs> <laughs> Savannah, over to you. Does Seth want to say and do birthday? <laughs> Maybe a cooking segment? Coming up next, guys, Allie Love is in the house. She's going to show us the rainbow from our wardrobe to our makeup, how different colors affect our mood, including why drinking from a green water bottle may be the better way to go. How interesting. Mm -hmm. That's coming up next, but first, this is Today on NBC.
series love your mornings we look at colors each and every day every hue tells a story so our friend and today contributor Ali Love is here to show us the incredible power of colors they can shape our style our mood really even how we perceive the world Ali good morning good morning I'm wearing my favorite color for you I love you Do in we all consider black. black a color it's kind of a shade but okay you know what it is we're not going to talk about black because you're sporting it so well <laughs> and we know that black is a safe color but we want to explore kind of the other colors of that rainbow we have yes. the whole wheel and we want to start yes. with a winter white. Tell yes. me about what this color does for us. So when we think of colors, sometimes we are sending signals. We're having conversations with ourselves as well as other people in the way that we dress and accessorize. And so that's what we're going to bring out today. And so we talk about white. Most people are like, I don't want to wear white. Also, it's sensitive to other things and getting dirty like I know I do. But white is a new beginning. You'll see it in wedding ceremonies. You'll see them in life ceremonies. So when we think of embarking on a new year, new journey, new fitness journey, white is signaling to yourself and to others that you're embarking on a new story, a new journey, and it's important for new beginnings. I like it, and you can wear it after Labor Day. Of course. They okay. break all the rules, honey. Now, red, is, like, to me, that's the power color. It is the power color. So fun fact about red, which is important, is actually it elevates your heart rate, it boosts your metabolism, mm. it gives you that passion, that boldness. People don't like to wear red because it is the color that if you wear, you stand out the most. But this is a color that you wanna wear, I'd say on like that fourth date, when you're like gonna lock it down, you're like, I want this person <laughs> to know that I'm into you, and it wow. exudes energy. So if you have a meeting where you're nervous about and you need that confidence, be bold and wear red. Oh. Red is your friend. Okay, I know, I love a red. Now, moving on from beyond clothes, we go to the next color, but it's also our surroundings, the things yes. we look at. Color is very emotionally important. Absolutely. And we have your favorite color, which yellow is yellow. Yellow is my actual favorite color, yeah. So yellow actually is a color that helps with creative thinking. It unblocks. So anytime you have kind of the writer's block, yellow is there for you. Mm. It also awakens the left side of your brain. Mm. So it's that rational thinking that you need to exude. So let's say you have to have a conversation and you want to be rational. Instead of being emotional, you would wear yellow or have yellow accessories. And I love this because anytime I'm feeling a little bit underwhelmed or overwhelmed with work, I'll go in and have my yellow notebook. It's yeah. a, again, it's that kind of subconscious conversation you're having with yourself and with people around it's you. It's fun. Now, orange, we know today yes. show orange. I we love orange around okay. here. Orange is my favorite color. It is? It's a Yeah, it's a combination of like being bold with red and look at that. I mean, I'm I know I'm you're rocking right those. Now. You are. Mm -hmm. But it's a combination of being bold with red and creative and bright with yellow. And what it does is it allows folks to know, people around you and yourself as well, that you are being yourself. You're authentic. You're you're being creative, you're being bold, and you're having fun. That fun shows through orange. So when you want to have fun, put on orange. A pop of orange, sunglasses, maybe like yes. a, a, a cardigan that's orange just really does brighten It's very up the friendly day. and approachable, it I think. It is. Now, blues we kind of think of as like a cool, right, calming. Yes, it is everybody's color. Blue yeah. is everyone's color. It actually slows your metabolism. It keeps it slows your heart rate. Mm -hmm. It makes you calm. It makes the folks around you feel calm. Obviously, you see I calmed my voice as soon as we started talking about blue. Blue looks great on every skin tone. So that's also important. Anytime you have to go on camera or in front of people, blue is your friend. It mm -hmm. makes you look good. It makes the people around you feel good. It's inviting. So if you have to have, again, we talk about tough conversations or presenting, the message you want to get across when you wear blue is that you're here and everyone is invited to the table. Okay. Now, green, we always have of environmental. Yes. Now, why does the green water bottle matter? Let's it's pay off the tease. Health here. is wealth. It reminds you of being grounded. It reminds you of the earth. And so, you know, I always talk about hydration station. Green is great to have in those things, those habits that you want to form. We want you to stay hydrated. So a great habit is a water bottle. It's a reminder of that earthiness, that groundedness, that health that we're all embarking on in 2024 and beyond. Okay. Right? Now let's go to makeup. Yes. Because I mean, colors obviously come in in all walks of life. We have a beautiful model here. Okay. We're all, we're both in black, but she's got some purple <laughs> on her like eyes, which is fun. <laughs> this is Nicole. Nicole has purple eyeshadow. Look at me, I'm just gonna mess it up. <laughs> Don't mind me, Nicole. <laughs> now I'm a makeup artist, all yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. purple was a color back in the day that was really expensive because it's hard to make. It's a hard color to create. Uh, it's royalty. It's Don't they the think color, of royalty? Yes. yes. It's the color of royalty. And so with this, purple is something when you 
you have a big event, a black carpet, instead of wearing all black sometimes, maybe you wear purple. Mm. And then on top of that, we have our last color, pink. Pink was 2023's year. Yeah. I mean, this was it with Barbie, but it shows femininity. So you don't have to. You can be anyone to show femininity. It could be in a lip color, again, accessorize. But use your colors to have a conversation with those around you to get the message you want across because colors, including black, they're your friends. So fun, Allie. Thank you so much, Nicole. You too. Allie's coming back in our next hour, actually, to answer questions. You've sent them in when it comes to fitness in the new year. First, though, speaking of fitness, Jacob Soboroff should do some laps after this one because here he's at the bagel shop, getting his hands in the dough, checking out the hottest store on the L.A. bagel scene. But first, this is today on NBC. Drop down and give me 20, Jacob. Let's go. Thank you. And best bagels, not two things you would normally hear in the same breath. But one shop there in L.A. is looking to change that. NBC's Jacob Soveroff decided to check it out. Jacob, you found a good bagel in L.A. Is it true? I insisted on checking it out, Carson. Mm -hmm. Good morning, you guys. Courage Bagels is exactly what it sounds like. An audacious attempt at creating the perfect bagel across the country from the streets and the famous water of New York City. And if long lines and viral videos and happy customers mean anything, the married couple behind this L.A. bagel shop are sure on the right track. It's a tiny shop to change the L.A. bagel scene one crunchy bite at a time. Did you hear that crunch? I literally just landed in LA and I came straight to Courage Bagels. Courage Bagels has been described as one of the best bagels in America. So we wanted to find out what made them so delicious. I'm the Bob Woodward of bagels and I'm on the case. And discovered the success of Courage Bagels has surprised even owners Chris and Ariel Moss. It's crazy. Ariel's super competitive. We aim high. We aim high always. What do you say to people who say there's no way you could beat a New York bagel? We're definitely not trying to beat New York bagels. We just wanted to try to make our own thing that we love. We want to make our dream bagel. And by all accounts, the dream of making incredible bagels with the freshest ingredients has become a reality. Is this what you intended to create? We dreamt that that we would create something like this. I think it's better than our dreams. Courage Bagels is number one. I'm from New York. I thought New York bagels were the best ever. They've come a long way since making bagels as a hobby at home in 2016, then selling them on the street from a bicycle cart. I started just exploring bread and baking. It was so simple, but also so complex and lovely. And one day I woke up and it was just like, I'm going to make bagels today. And then we never stopped. It was an impressive hustle. Like she would ride around. It was courageous. It was a kind of an amazing thing to watch her go out on the street and pull up at a light next to someone in their cars. Bagels, you know, I was like, Is that why it's called courage? Yes. Because it took a lot of courage for you to do this. Yeah. yeah. Also, I needed to find my courage, build my courage. Yeah. That commitment has paid off. Long lines of people from around the corner and many from around the world often wait more than an hour to get their fix, including most weekends when I'm home, me and our kids. Someone Israel just came from Australia and she was like, I came yeah. to come here. And we're like, pressure. Just to come to the get a bagel? <laughs> yes. 
That, that must feel like a lot of pressure. Right? Some of our favorite customers are definitely the locals and also people who, who just kind of wandered in. But when you see the line stretched down almost to the next block, what does that line mean to you? More often than not, we hear stories that people are meeting people in line. They're having fun. It's part of the experience. An experience that comes at a price. This is a $13 half bagel. This one is nine. And this entire bagel costs 90. Well, real food is very expensive to produce. We try to always keep things on the menu that are accessible to everyone. You know, something that's $5, $4, $7. Uh, you can get a pretty solid meal. You can see through the window, you're boiling the bagels and you're baking the bagels. But is it fair to say that there's a little bit of a secret recipe going on here? Oh yeah. 100%. Well, what is it? <laughs> yeah. well, it While they remain tight-lipped about recipes, Chris, and Ariel invited me to join their hardworking team in the kitchen. They're letting me do what nobody else gets to do. I'm going behind the scenes and making a bagel myself. Don't crush it, Gentle. don't crush it. Gentle. From boiling the dough. Well, I don't know about that one, but I think it's okay. Then adding the secret season topping on the signature burnt everything bagel. Rain shower. To witnessing a masterpiece come straight out of the oven. Oh yeah. Great. Bravo, bravo. Yes. Look at this bagel you made. You made this. It's just absolutely oh, glowing. Smells delicious. I'm gonna keep it simple. It's insanely delicious. I'm probably gonna go there as soon as we're off the air. Next time you guys are in LA, come on out, please. All right, darling. Yeah. Yeah. Get us like the hookup. Here. We'll have to eat that. They look delicious. They yeah, really can't did. wait. So good. Thank you. We're back. We got Bye, a guys. third and fourth hours just ahead, including one hot superfood hacks. From okay. Joy Bauer. Yeah. One pot, y'all. Two pot, not two pots. That's all you need. One. But first, your local news. Have a great weekend. Nice black. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on Today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. <laughs> Back in town, the miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. This morning on the third hour of today, here it comes. A major winter storm barreling across the country, setting to make a messy weekend. Tens of millions bracing for rain, snow, and wind. Are you going to need a shovel or just an umbrella? We're going to track it all for you. Plus, a cup craze. I got a Stanley! We're going inside Stanley hysteria. Why these water bottles have folks camping out all night to buy one. Then later, Allie Love is going to help us stick to those New Year's resolutions, her simple hacks to get more done and feel better. And TED Talk. No, I would not have fun. Oh, we're going to have fun when Seth MacFarlane and Max Burkholder are live talking about the return of everybody's favorite foul mouth teddy bear today, Friday, January 5th, 2024. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Well, good morning, and welcome to the third hour of today on this Friday, Friday. Friday morning. I'm Chanel, here with Al, Craig, and Dylan. The gang's all here for yep. you on this Friday. Thank you for wrapping up your week with us. Before we get into it, I, yes. we should call attention to two things. Mr. Roker, who's always <laughs> dapper. Go Cats! He's, I mean, just, it took it next level a, today. An extra he pop of color. He leaned into purple. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going my full joker. All I need is a green <laughs> shirt. And in addition, yeah. uh, you know, Dylan always looks nice, but she's going with a, a new lipstick today that's just beautiful. I, I went for a pop of color. It's, I didn't wear bright purple today, just, so I needed to find it somewhere. You are so I mean, you guys, You guys really just... Uh, we can't all dress in beige. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's me. We dress, we dress like who we are. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Craig, for your observations <laughs> on this Friday morning. All right, so we're glued. A lot of people are glued to the forecast this weekend. We don't get to do this very often, but would you guys like to see my neck of the woods? I would. Yes. This is my hometown, Wichita, oh, Kansas, where it is snowing right now. Too bad we can't get a phone or from 
Grandma. Um, <laughs> let's give you another snowy scene. This is in Fayetteville, Arkansas. A storm system is certainly on the move, and I'm going to oh. stop there because I am not a meteorologist. <laughs> Al has the forecast. But, but first, let's head to... Wasn't Maggie just here? She was, yeah, Maggie she was right there. And That's I right. said, oh, my gosh, it's so nice to not have you in a storm. But guess what? <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> I know. <laughs> Chelsea, I know. Massachusetts. <laughs> Outside of Boston. I guess they're getting ready for one. I like the wind, better. Maggie. That looks good. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice, guys. And we were just talking to the control room. Literally. It was so nice in the studio. It was so warm. I didn't have to wear gloves. Like, what is my hair doing? But you know what? You've got the J-Lo uh, Beyonce the fan, mind? nature's fan right there. Thank you. But in reverse. Like, it's going forward. Uh, really quickly, I want to show you guys. We have this, like, line of semi-trucks uh, getting loaded up with salt behind us. We're just outside of Boston. Basically, this is a weather winter weather savvy city right like they know what they're doing and they are prepping hardcore for this storm case in point salt mountain we don't have that in the studio either right that right. is massive trucks will be lining up here over the next several days getting ready for this potential eight inches of snowfall here up to a foot along the east coast ple uh, officials pleading with people even though they haven't seen snow recently to remember this storm for the first time in a while could pack quite the punch this morning, after hitting the snooze button on snow for months, Mother Nature's brutal winter wake-up call is barreling toward the East Coast. Kind of excited because we haven't gotten any snow yet. From North Carolina to Maine, at least 33 million Americans under winter storm watches this weekend. The system started along the Pacific Coast and is now racing across the country. It's set to pummel parts of the Northeast with heavy rain, strong winds, and in some cases, up to a foot of snow. The first major snowfall for some communities in two years. We're totally geared up. I know a lot of people haven't seen snow in a long time. And while cities like New York and Philly could mostly see rain, New York's governor directing state agencies to prepare for an emergency response. While officials in Massachusetts could initiate a full call out, meaning up to 3,000 pieces of equipment could be utilized. Right now, we're expecting this to be a really pretty sizable statewide event. As crews across the region prepare for the onslaught of snow, hardware stores are seeing an uptick in business. This is the best thing I've ever seen yes. in my life. With anticipation mounting, I want to buy a sled to see if a major snowless streak finally ends. Oh, it hasn't snowed in, uh, in a couple years, so, you know, we're definitely looking forward to it. And the guy's right, it hasn't snowed in a couple of years. Let's bring that graphic back up and show you guys those snowless streaks up and down the East Coast. New York, uh, oh, almost 700 days. Philly and D.C., well over 700 days. Guys, I don't have to tell you, New York having its longest snowless streak mm. ever. So now we're all waiting to see if this system could break that streak. I will be out here waiting in the elements, <laughs> oh, no. as we have discussed, and I will send it back to you guys. There's a beautiful <laughs> hotel about a mile down the... No, I'm just kidding. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm well aware. I'm well aware. But if, if we send you to Wichita, <laughs> Maggie, Chanel's you know got Listen, you hooked up. Yeah. There you My go. family Deal. will take you in. It. Stop it. Stop <laughs> saying <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Maggie. All right, so let's look at these maps, because it's, it's really kind of interesting. So 33 million people from the West Coast to the East Coast. We've got winter storm watches, advisories, winter storm warnings, especially down in the Appalachians. Here's what we're expecting. There's the storm system now. Snow already in Kansas, making its way into uh, Arkansas, parts of Missouri. It, today, it races along the Gulf, intensifies, brings heavy rain, strong storms, Texas to Florida. Then tonight, it pushes into the mid-Atlantic, sleet and freezing rain for the central Appalachian. Snow back through Indiana, Ohio, and the, the Dakotas. We're also looking Washington, D.C. Here's the timing. 7 a.m. to noon, snow and sleet, then rain to, uh, into Sunday from noon to 8 p.m. Philly, tomorrow, snow and sleet. Will it make an inch? I don't I don't know. Rain 4 to 1 a.m. And then New York City tomorrow and Sunday, more rain than snow from noon to 7, then heavy rain overnight. Boston's the big winner where Maggie is. Tomorrow and Sunday, light snow to start, but ends with heavy snow on into Sunday. Here's the rainfall totals down through the south. We're talking anywhere from one to maybe an inch and a half of rain. But you get into the northeast along the I-95 corridor. You don't really get into the heavy snow until you get into western Massachusetts, all the way up into New England. But locally, could be 12 inches back through Albany, Kingston, Utica, New York, Harrisburg. PA could see about four inches of snow. So, but here's the interesting thing. There's more coming. Next week, we got three storms lined up. Oh, boy. So we'll see what happens then. Big storms from Japan 
uh, all the way Japan. to the West Coast. That's right. This is okay. like a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Excited. <laughs> Thank you, Al. <laughs> uh, from the cold winter weather to the hottest holiday gift, apparently. We're talking about a cup. Not just any cup. Those colorful, reusable Stanley Cups that have become a viral sensation on social media. NBC News Now anchor Savannah Sellers is here with a, a sort of the history behind this hysteria. People are going crazy they for are. these cups. They really are. And my favorite fact is this company has been around for 110 years. <laughs> but now, teens to adults, everyone wants a Stanley Cup. Some people literally camping out, starting at 2 in the morning in front of Targets to try to snag one of these. And I found out how this cup craze all began. It's the hot gift drawing screams and sobs of joy. Uh, she wanted a Stanley Cup. And all this hysteria over a cup. I got a Stanley! The Stanley Quencher Cup, that is. Sold in over 100 different colors, the $45 reusable bottles are flying off shelves. The hashtag Stanley Cup racking up 6.7 billion views on TikTok with videos of fans collecting them, decorating them, naming them, even camping out for them. So it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. People lining up overnight at Starbucks and Target stores to snag a limited edition version. I got mine in blue! Aaliyah and Sarai Dives Cups runneth over after unwrapping theirs on Christmas morning. Why are you so obsessed with these cups? So... Everyone in school basically has them. Usually I don't drink a lot of water, but like when I have this cup, I drink like more water. Believe it or not, the Stanley brand has been around for more than a century. These cups used to be favored among construction workers, but in 2017, after a popular mommy blog posted about them, the company introduced new pastel colors and sales skyrocketed from 73 million in 2019 to 750 million last year. Stanley's CEO spoke to CNBC's Make It. So it was a slow build over many months. And then you could see that the waiting lists began to grow. Adding to the hype, viral videos of the cup's apparent indestructibility, like this one that survived a car fire. Stanley even buying the owner a new car. Experts say it's all part of the reusable bottle craze, where functional designs and chic shades have made them fashion accessories for moms on the go. Stanley. Oh my God. Some men mocking their wives' massive bottles on oh. social media. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> the online fervor leading to a whole new kind of lightning in a bottle. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> So if you've tried to get one of these cups, I have one right here. Yes. No, they are hard to find. <laughs> Some online resale sites are now offering up them up for $350 oh they're reselling for. You Can know why? Because everybody was trying to get them in time for the holiday. Right. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. I remember my dad, he was a mechanic, and he had like the old Stanley. It was all beat up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like a stainless steel. Like it's what he used every day. I know. It was this. totally uh, construction workers. They, they said that. That's part and part of their old yeah. ads. They love them. I tried to get my mom one. Actually, I don't really think my mom realize this doesn't actually have a Stanley because I asked the Target employees where are the Stanleys like <laughs> well, not here and so she got like the off-brand one that's also really popular called Awala because this everybody yes. wants one of these yeah they carry them around but yeah. I don't, for, forgive my ignorance here and I don't know if you know the answer we do that yeah. every day that's uh, <laughs> It's just a little drive-by there. But this does match Mind your outfit. Own business. In fact, right, this matches your That's outfit. right. It's, it's, it's beige. 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 Oh, you need an ordinary well, what beige. Beige. What's point? your question? What? I, I, I'm trying here. My God. What is it about the cup itself? Okay. It keeps hot. Things hot, hot, cold. Things cold. 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 If you put ice in this and, like, use it as your ice cup before bed, ice oh. is still in there in the morning. Yeah. That is you true. Put, you know, it's like the... It, How do it, it know? Is, How, How do it know? I knew that was coming. I asked the question just to set it Savannah, thank you. you I apologize oh. for my friends and colleagues. You know who else wants a Stanley right Cup? The Rangers. Oh. <laughs>
you love your morning. Since we just rang in 2024, we're talking all about resolutions. So listen to this. Nearly half of Americans make one, but only 9% actually keep their resolutions. So who better than today, contributor Allie Love, to answer your resolution questions? Such Good a morning resolution to you. Dance. That's my resolution. <laughs> yeah. Shoulder shimmy? I love it. I love it. Okay, so I love this. Today we have um, viewer questions. So our first one is from Brittany in Tucson, Arizona. Listen. Hi, Allie. I'm doing dry January, and I was hoping that you'd have some great mocktail recipes and then tips to stay the course. Thank you. Oh, this is a good question. Oh, I love Brittany. Brittany's actually a, a head of our like Love Squad Peloton group. Oh, and I love that she's doing dry January. Although, Craig, you don't love dry January. I'm more of a damp January kind. Of. Okay, he's I moist. Yeah, yeah I'm moist. moist. This one. Oh boy, it's better than monsoon December though. <laughs> But Al, you're into dry January. I am. So We're doing dry January. I would say in terms of Ask Allie, my advice to you is to ease into dry January with some alcohol supplements. Okay. So instead of just going straight to mocktails, which some of these are, mm -hmm. it's some Pretty things good. where you can take something that makes sense as a non-alcoholic wine, non-alcoholic, you know, vodka, okay. and have an opportunity oh. to taste it. That's good, right? That's yeah, fantastic. This is a jalapeno mix. Jalapeno? This, jalapeno? Oh boy. Jalapeno business. This, this is a play on an uh, espresso martini. Ooh. So you can take your favorite cocktails, remove the alcohol. Either you're yeah, adding fruit one. juice, nice. you're adding nice. sodas, oh, or like I said, you want to ease into it. And another thing that I love, this is my tip. Okay. I don't love when people ask me if I'm drinking alcohol or not. So at a party, Ooh. if I'm not and everyone's cheersing, I'll put either tonic water or club soda or even like a ginger ale into a champagne glass, and I'll use you that. Know people ask you that, right? Why? Because I'm all, why? Well, because you know you're Allie Love, the Peloton oh, instructor. That is true. Just well, whatever you do, they're gonna do. Right. What? Um, what's that pink one? So this is like a shandy. Oh. A shandy. A shandy? A non-alcoholic right. shandy. Have you ever okay. had a shandy? I don't know what a shandy, shandy is. Well, What's a shandy? I'll try. What is a okay. shandy? I just like looked at you. Hey, so I don't even know. We got another question now. This is our viewer. <laughs> she didn't like, like that, that one. one. Not everything's for everyone, so in dry January, Brittany, you figure out which one it works for you, but again, yeah. ease into the non-alcoholic area, and then you go into your mocktails and get creative. Uh, <laughs> let's go to, let's go to okay. a question now from... I'm Susie. Not a moment too soon. <laughs> I didn't make that one. Hi, Allie. My question is, how do I help my spouse keep his resolutions for help? Oh, okay. oh, spouse, I love that you're going to do resolutions together. So mm -hmm. the answer is behind you. One of the things that I love is not only are you doing it together, but in terms of your resolution for health and fitness, matching outfits. Right? Oh. <laughs> Craig, is, oh, Craig laughs at everything. Everyone, what? you should know that. Anything I tell him, he laughs at. But matching like outfits it. do encourage yeah. each other to work out together. You and, and Lindsay would look great in this. I think so. She would. You both would this look great. This is pretty much you. Yes, and this is Lindsay. Look right. at that. Well, that is Lindsay. And there you go. This is... This is you. Um, but, the, but what I will say um, if for this... Allie, be, just a question. Do these yeah. come in beige? <laughs> just for Craig, they come in beige. Okay. Actually. Allie's like, I didn't sign up for this. I love this. I, I love y'all so I could be much. teaching a Peloton class right now. But, but before, Susie, we go yes. to our next question, what I do want to say, matching outfits for you and them work out very well. Oh, yes, also, cute. identify a color this month that is your workout color. Oh. Maybe it's a red. Maybe it's green because it's calming and it's easing into it. Identify between you and your partner what's that workout color. So when you look at wardrobes, it's triggering for you to work out. And it's fun that, there you go. A triggering in a good way. In a good way. Yes. In a great way to remind you. too. It yes. kind of makes you I go back to that. that. Okay. That actually is really soft, I will say that. It's yeah, a it's great set. Good point. Yeah. Um, you so, look great uh, in it. Thank, thank you, Alan. Move this so here's our here. next one from Ciara. This is... Okay, there's Ciara. I'm trying to finish writing my first book, but I also want to make more time for intentional, fun movement. It would be great to hear your own tips, since I know you're a busy boss. Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh, thanks, Ciara. I love that you're writing a book. First off, congratulations. I've started, and it's really hard and nerve-wracking. Um, but one of the things in terms of, you all have a very healthy schedule of things to do. One of the things that I encourage folks to do right away, find your favorite workout, mm -hmm. buy a 10 class, nothing more, 10 class pack, of that and then plug it in sign up for those classes right away put oh. them in your calendar mm -hmm. because guess what it's an incentive for you to do them or you'll waste your money That's money is the incentive especially when you're trying to create time another thing to do is i have bracelets on i will move my bracelet to one hand i do this with non-alcoholic drinks oh. or alcoholic beverages but also my workout so okay. this day, if it's on the left hand, that means I did my workout today, and that's a signal to myself that that's I achieved great. something. Oh, that's I a great that. idea. Really? Yeah. What's the cookies? Oh, the cookies also reward yourself with a treat. At any point, oh. you're doing something what really. What a great idea. Yes, that's for you. Look at that. You're doing something great. That is really nice. Mm. Okay, last Allie. but not least. No, we're out of time. Are we out of time? Allie. No, we're out of time. Aww. I was enjoying this. Okay. I love y'all. Thank you, Aww. Allie.
years since we first met Ted, the foul-mouthed teddy bear voiced by Emmy winner Seth MacFarlane. Well, the original movie and its sequel are among the most successful already comedies of all time. And now Ted is back in a new prequel series on Peacock. It's pretty doggone good, too. Seth MacFarlane stars alongside Max Burkholder. Max, of course, known for his role on NBC's hit show Parenthood. So Max plays the younger version of John, Mark Wahlberg's character from those two films. So now the series follows Ted and John's teenage antics, from school bullies to first uh, crushes, and of course, a little mischief. Let the festivities begin. How many we got? Well, let's see, we got 20 cottons, 12 eggs in each. It's gotta be like 20 dozen eggs, right? Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? Oh, come on, Johnny, we're doing a public service here. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. We're Samaritans. You remember last year? Oh, check it out. There's one. Hey, nice costume. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a lot of bleeping for us to yeah. try to, yeah, we're try to use any one thing. Just in time. Just yeah. in time. You got the egg joke, though. That's, yeah. that's really good. That's, that's yeah. most important. So, 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 Seth, this time around, it's this preschool, prequel. It's high school. Preschool Is there, would be a whole different thing. Prequel, thing. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so it was one of the things about doing this is that you've got a series now, so you can explore a little bit more of these, these two guys. Finally, I have a series. <laughs> Finally, finally, you finally Hold one of them. But a, a chance to at least, you know, you don't have to pack everything into yeah. one right. 90 minute movie. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I love the most about TV. I love film, but as a writer, TV is is really where it's at for exactly that reason, that if you screw up once, there's always <laughs> next week. But yeah, you don't have to tell a story that encompasses everything. You can kind of dig into one particular topic or one particular idea and 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 just have fun with that for that week. Max, we, we hear that you and Seth actually worked together before. When did your, your paths initially cross? Yeah, I probably started doing voices at Family Guy when I was about uh, five or six. Really? Way too young to be hearing or saying <laughs> any of the things that I was hearing or saying. And because I was like a kid who was around the Family Guy offices, That's funny. at the first table read of the first Ted movie, I was playing the creepy little kid character. <laughs> Uh, so it's kinda, oh my God, that's right. That? No, no, you didn't just, even no. Remember. Yeah. This is this is what's and this is gonna be. This is not gonna be good. <laughs> I I I didn't remember when Max came to do Orville yep. that he had done uh, Family Guy, yeah. and then when he came to do Ted, I saw the audition. I was like, this guy is great. You didn't remember so that. Like, I I'm the yeah. I'm the real life version of like Simpson, eh? <laughs> 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 that young whippersnapper. Like I just and but it's a testament to Max. Like over and over, he's like, "Hey, this guy I've I've never heard of." So he so keeps proving himself. Great. This is Max. Yeah, yeah. Max hi Max. Hi, Max. Oh, oh, it's great to, to meet you. Maybe yeah. remember him yeah. now. I like yeah. He's got a real future. <laughs> it's a vote of That's confidence. Hilarious. Yeah. So I have a question. As a director, how do you get them to? I don't know because it feels like you know you're, you're clearly bonded with this animated character. But how do you seriously? How do you do that? Is there an exercise that they practice? With the bear, yeah, is there or something there? the technology this time. Like, how do you even yeah. do that? Well, you guys, had, you, they had bears. Like, you guys spent three months with the. <laughs> yeah, stuff. they Wait, sent what? us the bears uh, beforehand. They sent everybody in the cast a life-size bear, oh. so we could get used to. Oh yeah, there oh. he is. Yeah, so oh. they told real? us bring him around out? with you. Yeah, I brought him out to the bars. He had a few drinks. <laughs> Was that a little creepy? In a um, bar? <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's a photo somewhere of my friend making him smoke a cigarette, which oh, I think is pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. And what was the thinking here, Seth? I just, you know, it's like, what's the easiest way to get their asses kicked? <laughs> Bring the bear into the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the teddy bear. <laughs> no, no, it's mainly for eyeline because, like, if you're an actor and you're like, and you're, yeah, you know, you, you can't have anything there on on set. It has mm -hmm. to be empty space because it's other. If you have the stuffy there, you got to paint out the edges, and that's the usually stuffy. expensive. Oh. The stuffy. It's stuff. adorable. Um, so you know, the actors all we wanted them really familiar about like where is where to where look. That yeah. So when they're actually doing it, they're looking at just nothing. nothing? No way. Nothing. I thought you would have like some kind of a and then. Edit it out. Nothing. Nope. Mm. Nothing. That's how good they are. That's okay. Pretty so, it, yeah. I mean, it was 12 years ago when the first Ted movie came out. We talk all the time about how comedy has changed over the last however many years. But this stays true to the Ted we know and love. Do you just say, like, I don't care that comedy's changed? I'm keeping it the way it is? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a healthy attitude in this day and age, isn't it? Yeah, no, you know, NBC and, and Peacock, which, I mean, first of all, you're Platform's already called Peacock. You can probably get away with whatever you want. Um, 
<laughs> you know, it was pretty clear that they wanted Ted to be Ted. They wanted, yeah. wanted this to be like, like it's not the watered movies. down. Yeah, 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 it's not watered down, and it's and it's and it helps that these characters are not um, they're not malicious. They're just morons. <laughs> so, <laughs> your characters have been so successful over the years because I feel like there's a piece of Seth MacFarlane in all of his characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I suppose some of them. Some of them. <laughs> Others are people that I grew up with or people from ah, my, you yeah. know. We've got a connection. A, oh, you know. this is great. Seth, Max, thanks so much. I know. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, you can watch all episodes of TED next Thursday, January 11th, only on Peacock, part of our parent company, NBC Universe. Yeah, thanks, it's, guys. Really, seriously, it's well really done. Good. Yeah. Just blowing smoke. Coming up. You guys. Uh, brain coach Jim Quick is here. He's going to help us think fast to work out for your mind. Now he's just showing improve, off. <laughs> to improve your focus. We're going to see... We're going to see how we do, although, spoiler alert, probably not well. <laughs> Third hour of today, right back after this. A lot of people resolve to improve their physical health, but we don't want to forget about the mind. So this morning, we brought in a brain coach. A brain coach is here to share some life lessons and some exercises to improve focus. Jim Quick has worked with celebrities like Jim Carrey, Alex Rodriguez. He is also the author of Limitless and the recent expanded edition of Limitless as well, Jim Quick. So good to have hey, good you. Morning. Good, so morning. good to Hi, have you. So good to be here. So Thanks before we get to these exercises, let's, let's talk just a little bit more about, about focus. Is focus something that the average person can actually really train, even improve on? So focus, we've discovered, is more like a muscle. Hmm. It's use it or lose it. The more you use it, the better it gets. So we want to make sure we exercise it daily. Okay. All right, so let's learn some simple exercises yeah. that you say we can do on a daily braces, basis to sharpen our brain. So this first one is called cross crawl. Yes, right? this is What does great. that mean? How does it work? And I encourage all the viewers to do this also okay. as well. Mm -hmm. um, we could, can we stand up? Sure. sure. Work? Okay. All right, so cross crawls, we're taking our, our hand or our elbow and touching the opposite. And oh, we're is, like moving. Yeah, okay. we're moving. This is, as your body moves, your brain grooves. Okay, oh, okay. I like that. So how your is this moves, helping your brain our brain? Grooves. So what this does, it is encourages left and right brain connections, mm -hmm. uh, and so it helps you to be able to focus. So before a meeting, we'll do this for like a minute. Really? Uh, it helps us to get centered. <laughs> Like, and uh, this and maximize our brain. Yeah. Yeah. might help Absolutely. us out a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> That's doable. Okay. Yeah, Another one you doable. say involves the hands. It, it does. Mm -hmm. Let's everybody just pull in some energy, like a little uh, Qi Gong here. Mm -hmm. Oh. And what I want to do is I want you to I want to challenge you. Uh -huh. I want you to try to take one hand and go the opposite direction. So. Oh, so opposite. One hand goes one yeah, way, the one other way goes, goes the other. Out, the oh, other I'm way bad comes at that. In. I can't even do it. So hey, Jim, how, see this. When, when it comes to it? focus, how how much is are, are, how much are our phones getting in the way? You know, devices. that's one of the big things, is the, the digital distraction. How do you maintain your concentration in a world full of rings and pings there and dings Got it. and app notifications and social media alerts? Mm -hmm. So these physical exercises, there's a mind-body connection, but there's right. also a body-mind connection mm -hmm. that using your body in certain ways helps to stimulate your brain. What about arm circles? You mentioned that. 
Yeah. Yes, these, these, these arm circles is a good way of doing it. There's other things you could do also as well. Okay. Like um, we're on the computers a lot. Right. So just kind of move your hands back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I want to challenge everybody just to put some mindfulness and then try to make one go twice as fast as the other. So it looked like something like this. So go. Boom, boom, boom. So it's getting your mind into your body. Mm -hmm. And you can reverse it also as well. So wait, one is going faster than the One's other? One's going twice as fast. So you're just kind of like, there's so many different things you could do, like ballroom dancing is mm -hmm. wonderful for the brain. I saw you juggling. Table tennis, yes, juggling. I'll show everybody this. Check out your uh, your dominant hand. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Do this at home. This is the key, one of the keys to focus. Make a fist, put it to your chin. Now everybody, where's your chin? Oh my gosh, I was just, <laughs> oh, oh shoot. So the art of memory, the art of our memory is the art of attention. Mm. The art of, like, even if we forget people's names, mm -hmm. yes. a lot of times it's not a retention issue, it's more of an attention issue. Oh. Like, I take, never grasped it in the first place. Right. If you, even if you think about the word listen, and you did this little brain teaser, you scramble the letters, it also spells another word perfect. It spells the word silent. Oh. Right? Oh. Only so because a lot I've listened aren't... to you on Instagram. Uh, you're so good. So, but wait. We all did it wrong. Like we literally all touched. I was cheek. copying you. Yeah, yeah. doing what that was, you did. And then also with this, like I can't do it. So is that something it's where practice. we practice? So it? practice makes progress. Oh. And even learning how to juggle. Mm -hmm. There was a study done at Oxford University saying jugglers actually have bigger brains. Mm -hmm. So you know you don't have to be a juggling master. You can go on YouTube. I'm not a master at all. But you know, but don't, isn't this is like good. a metaphor for life? It yeah. forces your mm -hmm. focus. Yes, it forces your focus. And your peripheral vision because you can't look at all three at exactly. once. Exactly. So that one of the things we teach is uh, speed reading in the book. And one of the things is just softening your gaze so you could take in more words. Mm. So your brain is your most incredible asset, but there's no such thing as a good or bad brain. There's just a trained brain and there's an untrained brain. That's really fascinating. Really right. interesting. I'm take that book. Limitless. Yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Figured I'd grab it first. Limitless. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Jim. So good. All right. When we come back, listen up. Podcasting superstar Ashley Flowers is here to talk about what we should be listening to from her expertise, true crime, to comedy, and more. Then later, Superfood Friday. If you're tired of the same old oats, well, guess what? Joy Bauer's got something for us. Third hour today. I'll be right back. So this week, we've told you about all the great new books and movies out this month. Well, now we are highlighting the best new podcasts to listen to. And there are so many. It can certainly be tough to find one that you really like. So here to help us is Ashley Flowers, host of the Chart Topping, to say the least, Crime Junkie podcast. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Ashley. So I said Chart Topping. I want to give people some perspective. Um, your own hit podcast, Crime Junkie, is huge. Or I was looking at this. You have a huge audience, over 1 billion. That's billion with a B, downloads to date. You've been the number one show on Apple Podcasts the last two years in a row. So it's a huge platform. I've talked to you before, and I know you're very into giving back, um, and especially some of the victims' families whose stories you've covered. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't an isolated thing. Have you had time to even 
reach out to some of those families? Well, I actually got to connect with um, last year. Well, last year was a couple minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I connected with um, a, a couple who actually wasn't a family member, but they heard one of our episodes and they actually helped get a man exonerated because wow. of the episode. And we got to actually just meet them within the last like two months. Oh, so wow. we have gotten to connect with people who are doing some good stuff. So let's get to some recommendations for some other shows. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to a long form interview, yeah. what do you recommend? So what I recommend is Wiser Than Me with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Mm. That's a good one. You know her, you love her. The really show good. is amazing. I would follow her to the ends of the earth, and mm. this show does not disappoint. So when she was going to make a podcast, she kind of looked around and she said, you know, we're, I'm not hearing from older women. Mm. No one is talking to them. No one's really listening to them. And so it's an interview podcast where she interviews women wiser than she is. Oh, wow. It is absolutely beautiful. So many amazing women on that show. It's the first thing that's made me want to be older since I was like eight years old. Wow. <laughs> that's great. That's really interesting. All right. No, so there's a whole genre, I didn't realize this, a, a podcast that talk about the creation and production of music. Mm -hmm. so who do you recommend there? So what I recommend is Song Exploder. Um, the host of this show, Rashi Kesh, here, here say, he is wonderful. It's it's kind. It's wild because he he meets with artists who break down how songs are made from the lyrics to actual composition. But it's interesting because the format he kind of takes himself out of it, and so you hear him at the beginning, but then you just hear from your favorite artists throughout, and from literally beat by beat, instrument by instrument lyric by lyric, how the song came together, and you get snippets of the song throughout and then at the end. And it is so beautiful. You hear, and from your favorite artists, from Foo Fighters mm. to Billie Eilish to Fleetwood Mac. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you highly like, recommend. It's, it's a process podcast. I can't mm. wait to hear It's that. a process podcast. Yeah. It's Very actually cool. really fun. But it takes a while to get used to the format, I will say that. You think so? Uh, yeah, well. I fell in love with it immediately. Yeah. No, I, once you get used to it, you're like, oh my mm -hmm. God, why has no one done this? Yeah. Genius. So huh. true crime is is where you reign supreme. I'm, oh, I also enjoy the true crime podcast. What are you listening to now? So it's not what I'm listening to now. It's what's coming. Oh. So you guys, no one knows about this yet. You're the first in the know. Yay. It is a podcast called Media Pressure. And the host is Julie Murray. So this podcast, the trailer just released yesterday. It is a long form story about the missing case of Maura Murray. In February, she will have been missing 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most infamous missing person cases in the true crime community. One of the wildest, twistiest cases. But the story has kind of taken on a life of its own. It's gotten kind of owned by the internet. And there's been so much information and misinformation that Maura herself and her family have kind of gotten lost in it. Mm -hmm. And so, it's actually more a sister, Julie Murray, that's hosting it. And it's what I love. It's what Crime Junkie is all about, is giving voices back to the victims and their family. And so for the first time in 20 years, Julie gets to take her story back and mm -hmm. correct misinformation and also reveal, I followed the story for a decade, and she's giving information I had never heard before. Mm -hmm. And that comes out on February 5th, but you can go and follow and listen to the trailer right now. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Great. All right, so what if you want to get motivated? This is my neck of the woods. Uh, maybe an inspirational boost, what would you say? An inspirational boost. Well, I love the Diary of a CEO with Stephen Bartlett. Mm. So as a business owner myself, his podcast has been incredible. He interviews some of the most influential people, biggest business leaders. He is an incredible interviewer. But what I love most is the there's no joke in the name. It is a true diary. You get interviews that you would never get anywhere else. Some really personal, intimate, deep moments with these people, not just about their professional career, but about their personal career. Mm -hmm. um, he did an episode recently with Esther Pearl, who is this renowned psychotherapist. And I have sent it to I said, six months of couple therapy in two hours. Wow. <laughs> so interesting. Highly recommend. I didn't even realize it was a podcast. I follow him on Instagram, and I can't tell you how many times I send even the clips yes. to my friends. Yes. I didn't even realize it was a podcast. He's one of the best interviewers I've Good. ever heard. All right. I'm in. That's great. Ashley, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank so, you. Really good. Thank back. you, Ashley. And also, by the way, Ashley's number one New York Times best-selling debut novel, All Good People Here, is now available on paperback. Dear God, woman, how do you have the time? <laughs> wow. My gosh. Well, now that we, we've covered what to listen to, we're going to show you what to eat. Joy Bauer is going to make a superfood dessert. Sweetest part, sweetest part is you only need oh, three oh, ingredients I and a special Clara. helper, Ms. Clara. Claire's here today. Oh, Clara OJ. That's right. And she's going to get a Stanley Cup.
If your New Year's resolution is to cook more and eat better, well then this Superfood Friday is for you. We've got recipes for every meal of the day that come together in no time and you only need one pan to make them. So today nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here to show us. I've been trying to pick away at this first one without actually making Ooh, it look like I've been good. eating already. <laughs> okay, so. So, so this first one is my banana blueberry oatmeal bake. And I'm Ooh. telling you, it feels like you're genu genuinely eating dessert for breakfast, yet mm. it's made with nourishing ingredients you can feel really good about. It's like each bite is a hug in your belly. What's in it? I call it the Ted Lasso of breakfast meals. Oh, so let me oh, show wow. you how to make it. So oh, I take two gross. ripe bananas and I mash them in the pan. Then I add a little bit of yogurt, oh. any milk, vanilla extract, mm. and then two eggs. Now what you want to do, that was a little maple syrup or mm -hmm. honey. The mm -hmm. eggs, you beat them on the side and then incorporate all the wet ingredients. Holy For the cow. dry ingredients, it's oats, it's ground cinnamon, it's a little baking powder, and all of those blueberries, it goes in the oven. And then you could personalize your square. So we have a little squirt of this is the whipped cream. Isn't it so great? Good. Wow. It feels like it's something indulgent it and decadent yeah. yet. And you can make it ahead mm -hmm. and it will last in the refrigerator for three to four days. Or what I like to do is I will wrap the individual squares, mm -hmm. put them in the freezer, oh. and it goes from the freezer into oh, the microwave. Oh, just like that. Yeah, so it's a great make ahead. Healthy pasta, Joy? Yeah, so before I reveal this one, I want you all to take Taste it and try to guess what the superfood ingredient is that makes the cream sauce. Mine's almost gone because Claire has been eating it. Yeah. Carrots. No I mean, carrots. I mean peppers. No peppers. There's yeah. peppers in it, but I didn't use it to make the sauce. Yogurt. No. no. I don't know. So I'm calling this my penne a la hummus. Oh, hummus. So this is really interesting. It is creamy, dreamy, quick, and easy. And it brings all that. those comfort yeah. feels. So here's Top how you make berry. it. You put a little bit of olive oil with mm -hmm. cherry tomatoes and oh, seasonings man. in a pan. Mm -hmm. In the middle, a, oh. create a well. You put any type of hummus that you like, bake it in the oven, get mm. those cherry tomatoes nice and puckered, mm. then you mash it with the back of a fork and you mix all the creamy sauce together and mm. then you put in your pasta. Mm. It almost feels like- Is the like, pasta already cooked? Yes, the, okay. the pasta's already cooked. Mm -hmm. I used a whole grain pasta and then you could garnish it. This is a little bit of basil and it's dairy free, but if you want to add a little Parmesan or yeah. goat cheese or feta, delicious. it sort of makes it next it's level. It's so rich tasting. Yeah. It does. It? Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. Got a big hit and of chocolate And it's filled here. with the good mm. stuff. Delicious. Okay. Mm. 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 Finally, yeah. dessert. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the absolute easiest recipe Thank for you. chocolate truffles you will ever, chocolate ever truffle. make. Okay. There's only three ingredients in this. Oh, wow. And the way that I do it is I melt my chocolate and then I add in a can of pumpkin puree. Ooh. You stir it until it's velvety smooth. There's no streaks of pumpkin left. Mm -hmm. Then you definitely put the parchment paper down on the pan, put your batter down, smooth it out with a spatula, a little bit of sea salt yeah. over the top because it gives it that pop, next level, and then in the refrigerator for one hour. And then all you do Wait, it's is just melted chocolate and pumpkin. That's it. Wow. That's it. That's wow. great. And even though it looks like a brownie, mm -hmm. do you agree the consistency it like melts like in your punch. mouth? It's a little bit more like almost mm -hmm. a truffle, right? Yeah. No. Do you wow. taste the pumpkin? No. no, not at all. It's really. And I love the salt on top. You don't taste the pumpkin. First bite. You don't taste the chickpeas, the hummus. Well, this I mean, is well yeah. done, Joy. Well done. Well done. Well done. First Thanks, Super Food Friday of the year. Well, well, happy New Year. year. All right. Thank you, Joy, for these recipes. Mm. Head to today.com slash food. And we'll be right back. The sea salt at the end. That's the taste test. That's okay.
All right, time for a post-holiday shout-out for our start today. Walkers who bundle up and get their walks done during the holidays and in the colder weather. Okay. First off, we got Connie in Maryland. Does her walk a run with an ocean view? Hey. Hey. We got Julie's today hat keeping her warm. Julie. Julie. Julie! Wanda's spreading her holiday cheer and getting in her steps. Good job, Wanda. Wanda. And Toyita bundled up in her walk for North Carolina. Toyita! And finally, Jill and Kristen, who enjoy each other's company on their walks together. Jill and Kristen! And thank you to all of our fabulous walkers. Keep those layers on and get out there for those walks. And if you'd like to be a fun part of it, just scan the QR code and sign up for our newsletter. Or just head to today.com slash start today. Guys, Monday on the third hour of today, four-time Super Bowl champ Rob Gronkowski is live in Studio oh, One. Oh, he's always a good That's guy. when they yeah. used to be a football team. He's, oh, wow. Man. <laughs> I can't argue. No, you can't. Coming up, hold on, Jenna. They're going to catch up with actor Dan Levitt. Should be a good time there as well. We'll see you back here next week. Have a great weekend, Have a great weekend, Earth Odyssey and Wild Child. Bye-bye. 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 We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. 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 Today, the stars of Good Grief, Dan Levy, Ruth Nega, and Himesh Patel. Plus, how to live the life you want from the Harvard professor who wrote the book on it with Oprah, Arthur C. Brooks. And Wicked co-star Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande sealing their friendship with matching tattoos. And we're talking about it. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome. It is Friday. Your first week in January is wrapping up. Can you believe it? We've made it to the first Friday in January. Here we are. 2024 is going to be good. I feel it. Do you feel it? Yes. I do too. I'm calling it 24 karat. I don't know why. Because that's on 24 carat in the... Uh, wait, wait, how does that go? 24, 24 carat. Oh, that's, um, is that, is that Bruno, Bruno Mars? Mars? But that's our theme song, because it's going to be fun yeah. and good. You know what? I'm all about Outlook. You know, this is my whole thing, because I keep thinking there are people who are... Uh, I just decided 2024 is going to be the yes. sunny side of the street. Well, that's, what, that's it, right? Walk on Golden. It. Let's enjoy it. Someone played this game with me. They said... Close your eyes for a second and think of whatever your biggest worry is. And some people might say, oh, I have an aging parent or whatever. Your parent is going to live to 99 years old. They'll just say that that statement. Or you're going to be able to pay every single bill on time all year long. Mm -hmm. Feel how your body feels. Your children are going to be safe and get accepted to college. Mm -hmm. Feel how your body relaxes. I mean, you know what's changed is really nothing. And to your world. It's how you're, yeah, how you're thinking about yeah. it. So I was starting to relax my body. I was like, this is going to be good. Like if you're, and, and when you go through life that way, because yes. you don't know what's like going to happen. Yeah. and worried yeah. about everything. It has nothing to do with anything. Let's move on. I enjoyed it. Okay, okay. so Wicked. That's one of the things everybody's looking Everybody. forward to in 2024. It doesn't come out till November, however. We have a little bit of time. But it stars two of our favorite people. Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. We had Cynthia Erivo on with us we recently. We fell in love with her. Madly in love with her. And she loves Ariana Grande. And they have a friendship that's real. Some people are work friends. Yeah. And some people are friends friends. Yes. These guys are real friends. And the reason that we know it is because they got matching tattoos. They got the same oh! tattoos. Oh my gosh. And they didn't just get one tat. They got two. First, they got a poppy flower. <gasps> Which, oh, oh, and they got the phrase for, for good. good. Oh, I was once told you can't get tattoos on your hand. Because I tried to. And why did they say that? And no? they said I look like I'm in prison. It was in France. Oh, because prisoners? No, because it comes off. Get it on your... Because it comes off. Because <laughs> you wash it. Yeah. Somebody, they, I, I'm not, you, I know y'all know me, but that's what somebody told me <laughs> but, in but, France. Wait, did, why didn't you Google it? 
Because I was embarrassed, <laughs> and I, they are the professional tattoo artist. I'm just me. So they said, don't put it on your hands. We you were going to get. It. Um, it will wear off. I was going to get it underneath my rings, Ring. which shows you I probably shouldn't have got it yeah. anyway if I'm going to hide it. Right, right, and right. And we were going to do Choose Joy with all my high school besties for our 30th. And the guy was like, no. Choose Joy. That was nice. I know. No? I wouldn't have been tired of that. He said, no. Okay. What if we got matching tattoos? Wait, are you what serious if we really about it? Yeah. Would you do it? Would you do it? I've never had a tattoo. Well, me neither. You've never had one? No, look at me. I don't know. I didn't know. I mean, I've tried to get some. You've attempted yes. on some evenings. But I have never gone through it. But you've never gone with through it. with it. What would would we, you if get we, one? If we hypothetically did it, what would we get? You're, now you're just teasing me. No, 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 me. I'm not teasing. Yes, you are. No. Where would we get? Let's talk about the where. I think somewhere in this region. Oh, the hand? I like the hand. I liked Ariana Grande and Cynthia. If good love enough for, for Cynthia. Good. For good, for good. A good one. Um, what would ours say? Would ours be words or a symbol? Well, we could do the wave. Rolling. We could do the wave, but the I would wave. like the wave. You know what I would like? What? If our kids could draw the wave. Is that cheesy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We'd spend our rest of our lives going, what is that? I know, it's a wave. Our kids I feel like you have to, like, I like that they had a poppy. I would like it to have Something somehow have meaning. our kids part of it. What, what, what about, what are your kids' initials? Do you know my kids' <laughs> names? M -M -P -H. M P H. Okay, and I've got H H. Yeah. But that's not the that's same. Miles per hour. <laughs> and H, and okay. H squared. Well, we got to think about it. Right, what were you doing in 2014? How many years ago was that? Ten. Because it's 2024. <laughs> Mila, I'll just tell you this. She was one years she old. One. She couldn't even speak. Wow. I was, I think I must have been dreaming about kids, but not even close to having them. So let's talk about it. Mashable.com put together a fun <laughs> list of viral internet moments which turned 10 this year. Okay, you're not going to believe it. Ten Guess years what's 10 ago. years old. Yep. The ice bucket challenge. Wow. Oh. Holy moly, that was. You look was. the exact same as 10 years ago. Oh, girl. Why did we both spit? It's kind because of gross. it was like coming down on us. We did not like it. All right, so that raised money for ALS. Yeah. It a, it's a beautiful challenge. And it, it raised, raised $220 million. All right. Now, let's see. This was 10 years ago. Ellen DeGeneres' Oscar selfie. selfie. Wow. That, that feels was, like it that, was just that yesterday. That was iconic. Remember we tried to oh, do yeah. it with Harry Styles? We love it. Yeah, we did we love it too. Harry Styles. Okay, in 2014, Kim K broke the internet. Remember, she did that sh shot. Oh yeah, Paper Magazine. Yep. I think she's broken it since then. So that feels like it could have been yesterday. You I know? can't believe that was 10 years ago. Love with Dan Levy when he played David Rose on one of the most hilarious shows of all time, Shits. We can say it once, right? Yeah. Shit. Well, you just well, said it just twice. But three you know times. Shits <laughs> Creek. All right. So now Dan has written and directed his first feature film, which he also stars in. It's called Good Grief. Mm. We're so happy you're here. We want to talk all about I'm it. So happy to but be I, here. I kind of want to hear what your holidays were like, what your New Year's is like, how you celebrate. I was in bed at approximately 12.03 a.m. Oh, but you made it to midnight? I Wait, made it so, to midnight. Wait, but you did have time to take pictures with these two pups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put some, I put some New Year's <laughs> things on a dog and <laughs> took the picture and went straight to bed. You were, no, it was good. I was upstate. It was cozy. It was just, warm. We, it was one of those things where it was like 11.15 and we were thinking, do we just call it? Yeah, totally. We have 45 minutes to midnight. Let's just stay up right until the clock I know. Well, 12. if it makes you feel better, we uh, went to we sleep went, at 
Ten. Ten, yeah. Well, well we ten. don't live together. Smart. No, but we, uh, we're we not. Did. But we on New Year's Eve. You have a sleepover, and it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. You know, okay, so you're not into New Year's resolutions. No. No. Why, why so? Because I've never kept one. Yeah. <laughs> what? And I just feel like, why am I starting the year yeah. feeling bad about myself? Right. I know it's what not going to happen. What ones that you made? Oh, gosh. It was like exercise. Yeah. <laughs> do you no. like exercise? No. No. You don't? No? At all. No, nothing about it appeals do to me. Do you do like, <laughs> intent? We, do you do intentions? Like, do you do something that isn't so much yeah. as like a check a box? Here's what we did. There was a fire. We wrote down a page of things we wanted to Ooh. let go of. Ooh, I like in it. 2023 and burned it in a what fire. What was on your list? Really deeply personal yeah, things. Yeah, I was going to say. I'll share right now. Um, <laughs> I'm like, that's the type of you thing. You never know. It gets burned, yeah, yeah. but he may but, not want to share with us. things that, m that my therapist and everyone in America will now know. Um, no, I think it's, you know, it's like I'm my harshest critic. Yeah. I think that was that's the biggest one, is like releasing yeah, stop. being so hard on myself. Well, and now you have taken on this whole new role. Mm -hmm. You're a director of a feature film. Yeah, it's that wild. You're is that, in. yeah, like when, and that you also star, you directed yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you direct yourself? That's a great question. You hire a wonderful team of people yeah. to surround yourself with. Yeah. And you work really hard and you prepare so that by the time that you actually have to go in front of the camera, you kind of know what the scene looks like, how you want it to feel. You've done the you've done the homework. This is so. a little bit of uncharted territory for you. So you've worked with a ton of directors, obviously. So what was your style, or who mm. did you emulate to try to get where you wanted to be? At the end of the day, I think as, as an actor who is naturally quite nervous, feeling comfortable yeah. on set is the most important yeah. thing. If you're nervous, I don't think you give the performances yeah. that you want to give, at least in my case, like a lot of anxiety inhibits mm -hmm. the freedom of performance. Mm -hmm. So on Schitt's Creek, we had a wonderfully open set. Mm. It was, yeah. people could experiment, people could try things. That's what I wanted to bring onto this as well because it's a very different story. It's dramatic and it's about loss and there is some humor in it. But more than anything else, I wanted our cast mm -hmm. to feel free to or, uh, try things mm -hmm. and yeah. to come to set excited and not nervous in any way. So that was kind of the biggest thing, was just setting the a very calm yeah. and creatively collaborative environment and hoping that that had a ripple effect on everything. That afterwards. feels like great nice. advice yeah. for all bosses and yeah. maybe parents out yeah. there too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and one of the things that I was thinking about as we were sitting down to interview you is you had this role, like, I now said it four times, so sorry, <laughs> mm -hmm. NBC, but Shit's Creek was such <laughs> I'm just a, getting lawsuit after lawsuit, it's fine. Yeah, absolutely it was fine. such a pivotal mm -hmm. show yeah. in our culture. It was part of the fabric mm -hmm. of our culture. It got people through hard times. Mm -hmm. I know. It was moving on from it tricky for you? I think at the end of the day, when you've done something like that, it was 80 episodes of a television show. Wow. You kind of have the impulse, in, in my case, to do something totally, totally. different. Totally, yeah. And explore something like in t uncharted territory. That's the, that's the exciting part of being an actor and a writer, is just saying, okay, I've done that. Now I want to go in a completely different direction. You know, do I feel like Netflix might have been expecting a comedy? <laughs> Maybe. But they, they greenlit a drama for me, and I think that's a huge thing to support, st like, you now, know, creative. Did you, you know, you have your dad who's a great resource. Did yeah. you seek him out when it came to this? Or I, did n I did not. I kept him so far away. He knew nothing about the movie until he came to the premiere and watched it. And? That's it. And he was, he's been lovely. My parents were very moved by the movie Aww. and were <laughs> they're crying a lot. Aww. And it was a wonderful thing. You know, I think we had collaborated for so long. Yeah. This felt like something I really needed to do on my own. Yeah. And I wanted it to kind of be a surprise to them. I think partially because it's such a risky thing to yeah. go and do something totally. so unexpected. Well, don't go. You've got your co-stars with you. Good. Oh, We've wait. got Ruth Nega and Himesh Patel. They're going to come join us on set right after this. The loveliest people in the planet. And we can't wait.
We are back with writer and director Dan Levy, and we're joined now by his co-stars in his new movie called Good Grief. We've got Ruth Nega and Himesh Patel. Okay, they star as best friends who support Dan's character after his husband passes away. Take a look. I wanted to thank you both for this year. So, I would like to take us to Paris for the weekend on Oliver, spend his money recklessly. That's what he would be doing if he were there right now. And I can't think of a more appropriate way to mark the one year anniversary. Yeah. Mm. We all deserve some joy. Uh, yes. I think this is a beautiful thing. I think this is a beautiful, soulful thing you are offering us. Yes. Thank you. Where are we staying? <laughs> Where are we staying? Where are we staying? By the way, Very first of all, I know you chose these wonderful actors to mm. work alongside you. Great, great, great selections. Why did oh. you pick these two wonderful people? Because you saw... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, so, casting is a really yes. tricky process, yes. and you just hope at the end of the day that people walk in embodying the <laughs> essence of these characters. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> you have, well, in some cases there's some work to be done in the, in the acting department, but no, they just, they just... It was just a breath of fresh air, yeah. and we had such wonderful chemistry from the beginning. And you could tell, yeah. Well, and you were, and you sort of worked on the chemistry, which mm -hmm. I love. You all took oh, yeah. a road, a road trip, or how, a trip to the English countryside. How was that? How was that, Ruth? How was the road trip? Oh well, it wasn't a road. It wasn't. Well, we we got there individually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and then it was good because we did various. Bonding, bonding exercise. Right, we went clay yes. pigeon shooting. <laughs> we heard I'm you were very excellent. good at this. How? So, <laughs> yes, Luke was bragging about being an excellent clay pigeon shooter, and then Ruth came in, no offense, Himesh, but Ruth oh, came in and really... <laughs> Good shot. Yeah, it was a great shot. And you'd yeah. never done that before. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a five second delay here. Oh, well, I was on a TV show called Preacher. We shot oh, yeah. a lot of guns, so I have four. Oh, okay. Right, so okay. this is your first foray into kind of a, co a comedic role, is that right, Ruth? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, and and was was Dan? I mean, we've talked about how, what his legacy mm. and comedy has been with Schitt's Creek. And yeah, I said it five times. Yeah, um, was he a big draw to be part of? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, I loved I love Schitt's Creek. I think like a lot of people like that like helped me through the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm ever grateful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, but I just I love the script because it wasn't sort of like a, and it didn't feel like a, like a, a raucous comedy. Yeah. It just felt like a very authentic um, uh, experience of friendship and what mm -hmm. that means and how like so sometimes grief can help us get closer to the mm -hmm. people we love and mm -hmm. also to our authentic selves and I think we're quite frightened of grief in a way yeah and this is just a sort of a, a sort of a tender peon to it in a way that's nice Hamesh what was it like having Dan as your uh, director <laughs> scourge um, yourself scourge yourself oh yeah I'm not sure I should no. yeah let's air, let's air the laundry here um, on television yeah why, why not? not no it was wonderful it was yeah. great he is so generous. We were just talking about this last night, weren't we, about how generous Dan is mm. as a person and therefore yeah. as a director, as a writer, as a co-star. And he set a wonderful tone mm -hmm. for us all to work in and we just had the best time. Yeah. We hear there's a karaoke scene yeah. where you, you, you let it go. Yeah, well, look, here's the thing. I, I got really ill in the week leading up to the karaoke scene. Oh. And so I genuinely couldn't sing when we got to, the, to doing it. Yeah. Which was helpful. <laughs> the other thing that people don't ever talk about with, like, karaoke scenes in movies is that you can't actually have the music. No. Oh, I know. Oh, yes. right. So right. You're, so like why, why is that? Well, because it'll interfere with the recording yeah. of the actual voice. Oh. So it's so a cappella? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Dead silence. Oh, no. Screaming into silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right for someone who can sing. If you can't sing, like, it was a nightmare. Really? So yeah, but know. I couldn't because my voice was completely uh, gone. Well, your uh, singing listen. is better than most <laughs> of ours, badly. Okay, can we talk about the food Yeah, we set? have to talk about we it. We heard mm. it was top drawer. We want to know why what? and what it was. I'm sorry, yeah. but the fact that y'all both mentioned the food yeah. means something. Well, usually, like, the onset food isn't 
anything to write home about, is mm -hmm. it? And this time it was. <laughs> At the end of the day, food is the key to people's enthusiasm. It's the key to yeah. their hearts. It's the key to feeling taken care of. Yeah. You have to feed people well. Yeah. That's an important thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And pe being in Paris, f you know, it was t f tables, four mile long tables of every possible food you could oh, imagine. Oh my God. To the point where I actually think we worked harder in the mornings just to break to get for to lunch. lunch. <laughs> just to get to lunch. Oh, yeah. You guys, we, we adore you. We're so happy you guys oh, Thank came. you for coming. Thank you for having congratulations us. Thank thank you all this. Congratulations to all this. And congratulations to you so much for having us. It's, uh, it's, I love a movie that celebrates grief yes. in, a, in a funny, yeah. beautiful yeah. way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And Good Grief is streaming now on Netflix. Coming up next, the happiness expert who co-wrote his latest bestseller with Oprah. We've got Arthur C. Brooks with us coming up right after this. Oh, wow. Thank you. Look what would have had your back. I have, I have my been looking forward to this not even all week long all month long uh, Arthur C Brooks is an expert on happiness he's a Harvard professor a columnist for the Atlantic and the author of 13 books including the number one bestseller which I just finished reading from strength to strength it is amazing thank you okay Arthur's newest book is also a number one bestseller he co-authored <laughs> it with somebody you may know her name is Oprah and it's called build the life you want the art and science of getting happier. Hi, Arthur. Hi, nice this to see you. you. By the way, this is such a thrill. This is the first time I'm meeting you. Yeah. I've been reading your books and I'm just inspired. And I love what you say about happiness and how a lot of people say, if I'm happy, I'll feel good. Just right. get me to happy. Yeah. Yeah, right. But that's not it at all. It's a terrible goal because we can't get to happy. It's not yeah. a destination, it's a direction. Yeah. We, we can all get happier if we actually understand a little bit of the science and change our habits. But if we say, look, I gotta be happy, then we're yeah. setting ourselves up for failure and frustration. We won't be able to manage ourselves appropriately. That's yeah. a really important thing for us to remember. Oprah calls it, not happiness, happy yearness. Happy yearness. That's the goal. I She's like so that. great with words, right? So we write a book together and I'm doing all the science. She says, we need a word. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happierness. It's uh -huh. happierness. And I love that you say, you write about the fact that we don't have to be happy all the time. I mean, yeah. first of all, that's completely unrealistic. Yeah, it's also dangerous. You yeah. know, we have negative and positive emotions. And the biggest mistake that we make is saying, I don't want bad feelings. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You need negative emotions. Yeah. You'd be dead without negative emotions. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they, they exist because they're information about the outside world. The point is you need to learn from them, grow from them, and manage them. And that's a lot about that, what Oprah and I write about. That's, that's the work, is learning to manage your emotions so they don't manage you. And when you do that, when you really crack the code, you're alive. You're having mm -hmm. the good and the bad feelings and it's all part of the life experience mm -hmm. and they're not running your life and making you miserable. I like how you guys say emotions are just kind of a tap on the shoulder. Yeah. They're yeah. not the thing. It's like reminding you you're angry but there's something that's going on that you need to address. Exactly right. You're not your emotions. Yeah. You're a person with emotions. Yeah. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. So we talk about this technique called metacognition. Big fancy word. Yeah, we academics that? talk that way. It's basically <laughs> thinking about thinking. It's understanding yourself. You gotta have a PhD in you. 
uh -huh. right? I mean, it's, it's, it's HODA studies is really what, uh -huh. what your PhD is in. And once you understand yourself, you can get a little bit of distance between yourself and your emotions. Yeah. And then you can actually manage your emotions. You do this through prayer, through meditation, through journaling. There's so many ways to do it. And once you get a little bit of space, your life can really change. I, we talked about this. I got to hang with you earlier yeah. when this book was published. It's like, I also think this is so important to read and then help you redefine how you parent. Right. Because our kids need to know it's okay to be sad and scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so what's advice when it comes to that? Well, one of the biggest mistakes that parents make today, and you know, I'm, I have young adult children yeah. and, and I'm a grandfather now. And so I've been thinking about this an awful lot. And I teach students who are on average 25 to 30 years old. Right. I teach MBA students mm -hmm. that are studying the science of happiness as one of their electives. <laughs> and one of the things that I see is that parents are too freaked out about their parent, about their kids being unhappy. Oh, about the, and they're freaked out about it. Yeah. A lot of helicopter parenting is because they're thinking about their kids' feelings all the time, and they're trying yeah. to wipe out the bad feelings, and that's a mistake. Yeah. Your kid needs to be alive. Your kid needs to learn. Yeah. Your kid needs to grow. You want your child to have a full life of happy mm -hmm. not trying to get them into the zone mm -hmm. of you know unreality, which is happiness itself. And yeah. when you do that, you protect them too much from the experiences, and then they wind up becoming adults and, and not Don't knowing know how, how to, to suffer. handle it. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you draw a distinction between pleasure Pleasure. pleasure is what you get when you bite into the chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. Pleasure is what you get when you take the drink. Or pleasure right. is what you get. It's like an instant thing that happens to you, and that. And then there's another kind of satisfaction that comes with sort of a collective feeling. Yeah, this is a really important thing. So happiness is defined as a combination of enjoyment and satisfaction and meaning. Mm -hmm. Those are the meaning, three things that we yeah. need. Now, I didn't say pleasure. Pleasure is related to enjoyment. A lot of people are seeking pleasure, but that's just a brain phenomenon. Yeah. You know, back in the 60s, they used to say, if it feels good, do it. Yeah. That's a <laughs> great way to ruin your life. <laughs> because <laughs> all you're doing is you're hitting the lever again and again and yeah. again. It's a little center of your brain. It's called the ventral striatum. It's your pleasure center inside your brain. Yeah. And when you do things for just for pleasure, you hit it again and again and again. You get addicted. Yeah. Right. That's a great way to wreck your life. Yeah. What you need is to take the sources of pleasure and add two things, people and memory. And that takes the experience of the pleasure and it turns into a really human full thing called enjoyment. So, and here's the way to think about it. If something gives you pleasure and it can be addictive, drinking, yeah. Drugs. You know, yeah. drugs, scrolling, scrolling yeah. shopping, e eating, yeah. you know, your junky food, gambling, whatever it happens to be. If you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. Mm, this is the key so, way to so remember good. it, right? Interesting. If it's addictive and it gives you pleasure, don't do it alone. You got to add people and memory. Then it becomes a source of enjoyment, and that will give you greater happiness. Um, but we we don't we have not enough time with you. But I, first, wait, quickly, it can't be there are four areas we can push it. There are no. four we'll areas, right? four yeah. areas that are scientifically yeah. yes. proven right. to help. Science. Happier, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Happier. yeah, for investments, kind of the, what are the happiness 401k plan. Mm. Where should you invest your, mm -hmm. your time? Your faith, mm -hmm. your family, your friendships, and serving other people with your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the big four. Like people spend a lot of time on things that are kind of extraneous and little things and, you know, self-improvement things that are just kind of at the margins. The big four are your transcendent life, you know, your faith or your spirituality, your philosophy of life. Not necessarily my faith. I'm a Christian. It's really yeah. important to me. But, but what you need is something bigger than you that lets you zoom out on life. Mm -hmm. That's super important. You need to get small mm -hmm. because when you're too big, you're going to be obsessed. It's like watching the most boring sitcom over and over and over again <laughs> every single day yeah, by force. Yeah. Family life. People define it in different ways, but we know that these are mystical relationships mm -hmm. of love. We didn't choose them. God yeah. knows in lots of cases we wouldn't have chosen them, but they drive us crazy because they're so important. Mm -hmm. The third is friendships. Mm -hmm. Now, today, a lot of people have a lot of friends, but they're not real friends. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're deal friends. Deal friends. We know the difference between real and deal. Yeah. Or virtual friends. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It doesn't count. In person, in real life, eye contact and touch. Yeah. yeah. There's touch. a lot of neuroscience about why that matters, but we all kind of get it. Uh -huh. And last but not least, our, our, our work has to serve other people. We have to create value with our lives. Mm -hmm. And if we do those four every day, checklist, at the end of the day, examine kind of your, your day and say, did I do something for my faith? Did I do something for my family? Mm -hmm. Did I call my mom? Yeah. Did I do something with her, did, keeping in touch with my real friends, not just my deal friends? Yeah. And do I believe I serve people today? And if it's check, 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 you're going to go to bed happier or just happier. get up happier. Got to ask one more thing. Is there a, there's a <laughs> science to falling in love? Yeah. This, 
there's a yeah. science. Yeah, I want to hear sure. what this is. Yeah, yeah. So this is what my students are, you know, 28 yeah. years old. This is what they really is. Like, and Professor Brooks, forget all the other stuff. Let's just talk about the, how, to fall, how to fall in love and stay in love, which is really important. So the brain goes through a series of very discreet steps when you're starting to fall in love. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a lot of, you know, there's, there's there, you know, there's sex hormones and then there's, there's neurotransmitters mm -hmm. that are starting to fire and all kinds of complicated chemistry that's going on. But ultimately, the science of falling in love says this. There's a lot of, you know, passion at the very beginning, mm -hmm. a lot of infatuation at the very beginning, but the goal of falling in love is friendship. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really what it is. And so what I tell my students is the goal of your partnership, it shouldn't be being passionate forever. That's Disney movies, yeah. like happily ever after and, yeah. you know, looking into each other's eyes and being deeply in love. Like I've been married 33 years mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> she's watching. <laughs> Careful. Hey, she's a fan. You know? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> and, but the whole point is that your relationship should be tending toward best friendship. That's mm. the science because that uses a, there's a, there's actually a neuropeptide. It's a hormone that functions in the brain called oxytocin. Mm. That's the that's the hormone of human bonding, and mm. ultimately that's what links you to your intimates, to your children, to your closest friends, and to your spouse. And this kind of companionate love can be plenty passionate, still yeah. will be, but that's really the goal. The science of falling in love and staying in love is getting to deep friendship at the end of the day. That's mm. why marriages are satisfi satisfying and they really last. Okay. okay. I, well, by the way, you're doing this really cool thing with the Atlantic, yeah. where every day one key to getting <laughs> Yeah. Happier. Uh, what does Oprah say again? Oh, happier ness. Happier ness. Happy happy yeah, this is, this Defining is, uh, happier. 31 days to happier ness. Yeah. Okay. So we can check it out. We'll yeah. put it on our website. We'll put it on our website. Yeah, yeah. Thank super you so fun. much, Arthur. Arthur, nice thank to see you. you. What a thrill. Great Come to be back. with you. Why I need more. Why I is it over? To. Wait, why is it we over? We need more. <laughs> check out buildthelifeyouwantedtoday.comslash books. Yeah. Coming up next, your Golden Globes weekend watch list to look at the movies and stars that could win big after this. Why is that so good? It should have been too. Golden Globe Awards are this Sunday, so you've got a little more than 48 hours to pick it, pack in all the movies and TV shows. We have a lot to watch. We that have we a haven't lot. Seen. <laughs> yeah, here with your Golden Globes weekend watch list is Rotten Tomatoes, Naz Paris. Hi, Naz. Naz. Oh, okay, this, is, this is pretty cool. I cannot believe the Golden Globes are already almost here. So what are we going to expect from this show? Oh, my God. Well, the 81st Golden Globes yeah. are obviously airing this Sunday. It's my favorite season, award mm. season. Mm. Comedian Joe Coy is going to be hosting it. Oh, oh we love him. Ever hosting an award show. I'm so excited for him. He has really relatable humor. Big story going into the night is Barbie is the most nominated film with nine nominations. It's mm -hmm. actually tied with Cabaret for being the second most nominated film oh. in Golden Globes history. It's wow. nominated for Best Picture Comedy. Greta Gerwig's nominated for Directing. Of course, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are nominated in the acting categories. <laughs> and what makes the Globes different this year is that now there are six nominees as opposed to five in each category. That scene's so We funny. love that scene on Barbie. It's so good. So but what is going to win Best Picture? What do you think? Best Picture 
drama, I think, for sure is going to go to Oppenheimer. Right? Yeah, this that's is what Oppenheimer's saying. lose. By the way, all movies in this category are certified fresh on the tomato meter, but I just want to give a shout out to the movie Past Lives. Jenna, we were just yeah. talking about this. Mm-hmm. Henry yeah. watched it on the airplane home and loved it. And yeah. actually, Gavin recommended it to me, so therefore, yeah. I recommended it to Henry. I love this movie, and the Globes did too. It got Love's five nominations. So basically, this movie is about two childhood friends who are reunited 20 years after being separated when one of them mm. immigrates to America from South Korea. But do you know why I love it? Mm. You have, have you ever been in a relationship with someone and you thought it was going to work out, but then the universe had different plans? Yeah. You just think to yourself, maybe in a past life it would have yeah. worked out. If you've ever yeah. felt that sentiment, that movie is for you, and you guys can rent Henry, it. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. Henry Hager's platform. review. It's quiet, but very lovely. Oh, <laughs> I, I like it. that. It is I very like lovely. That. Okay. Yeah, so what about past lives? best actress in a drama? Who yeah. do you think is going to take it? Best actress in a drama. I mean, this category is stacked. I mean, you have Annette Benning playing real life winner Diana Nyad, but I think this is going to go to Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower yeah, Moon. Yeah. Yes. And obviously, you know, stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, directed by Martin Scorsese, but she really is the emotional center of this film, which is about the Osage Nation murders in 1920s Oklahoma uh, when oil was found on their tribal land. This is a true story. It was mm. actually one of the first major investigations of the It's FBI. an incredible book, too, if anybody wants to it read is. it first. And she's a mesmerizing presence, critics have said. Um, she's actually the first indigenous person to be nominated in Amazing. this category. If she wins, it'll give her momentum going into the Oscars. And if she wins that, she'd be the first Native American woman to win Best Actor. Love it. That's Oscars. incredible. Who's up for Best Actor in a drama? Best Actor. I love this category. Also really stacked. I think the two front runners here are J. Robert Oppenheimer, uh, mm-hmm. played by Killian Murphy. Yeah. And then Bradley Cooper, who yes. plays the composer, uh-huh. conductor, music legend, Leonard Bernstein. I just want to give a quick shout out to Barry Keoghan, though, for his delicious performance in Saltburn. It's one of my favorites. I personally, Jenna and Hoda, want Bradley Bradley Cooper to take this. He's yeah. always surprising us. He directed Stars and Maestro, 79% certified fresh on the tomato meter. Mm-hmm. It's a story about the complicated life and marriage between him and his wife, Felicia. Mm-hmm. There is a six minute scene in this film where he's conducting an orchestra in yeah. a cathedral. He does it in one take, worked with two leading conductors to pull it off. Oh my god! It's gosh. so impressive. You guys have to watch it. It's streaming now wow. on Netflix. So okay. Sh- okay, you watch it on Netflix. It's good to know. Okay, yeah. what about Best Actress in a Comedy or yeah. Musical? Yeah. Oh Margo? You think I, it's Margo? Okay, so no, actually. But this category is insane. You have Fantasia Brino for The oh, Color yeah. Purple. Oh, Margo, Fantasia. who's perfect in Barbie. The front runner, Jenna, is actually Emma Stone in Poor Things. She is unstoppable. This wow. is a career best performance her. It's actually her highest rated film on the tomato meter. This is a story, if you guys haven't seen this movie, about a woman who's brought back to life by a scientist. Think female Frankenstein, but like with a twist. She brings. Is it funny? Is it, it's, it is funny. She. It's based on a book, Jenna. I know you love reading. Uh, she, there's so much physicality. <laughs> no, she loves there it. you go. There's so much physicality in this role. It really shows Emma Stone's range. She's also nominated at the Globes for her TV role in The Curse, worlds apart from wow. what she plays in this. This film is 93% certified fresh. It is so good. I think it'll beat Barbie in Best Picture Comedy, and you guys can watch it Whoa, in theater. Wow, wow. that's I think a it's bold on prediction. Watch it before Sunday. Let's do Best sure. Actor in a Musical or Comedy. Oh, okay, so I think this is going to be between Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers yeah. and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Personally, I'd love to see Jeffrey Wright take this. American fiction is so good. I've heard it's amazing. No. How can we watch it? You would love it. Um, You guys can watch it in theaters now. Jeffrey Wright plays a really frustrated author who's tired of the business profiting off novels that rely on racial stereotypes. Mm. So he has this idea to prove a point where he writes this outlandish, stereotypical story about black people under an alias. And much to his dismay, it becomes a huge hit. Uh. But the stars in this movie, you guys would love. Tracy Ellis Ross, who the three of us love. Issa Rae, Sterling K. Brown in one of my favorite roles that he's ever been in. Um, it is so, so good. Also about the complicated uh, life between him and his family. But you guys can watch it in theaters. Ooh, By the way, I see fiction. that. You know when someone loves what they're doing? Yes. You love what you're doing. <laughs> I oh, no. love what you're doing. I really that do. was I really love good. Thanks, Thank Naz. You. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. We appreciate it. Okay, coming up next, what's in store for 2024? We've got your astrological forecast coming up right after this. Good job, Naz. That was great. I know.
It's a new year, so we thought it'd be fun to find out what's written in the stars for us, for all of us, yeah. in 2024. We called our friend and astrologer and transformational coach, Jennifer Rassiope, to share her forecast for this year. She's the author of Cosmic Health. We love when you come yes, here. Yes, we do. So can we do some big picture here? How would you say 2024 is going to shape up overall? Yeah, 2024 is a really exciting year. It's full of hairpin turns, innovation, and lots of opportunities to explore new potentials. We kick the year off with almost no retrograde activity. Mercury, the planet of communication. Just it has been in retrograde, right? Yes. yes. I can tell. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of craziness happening. It has been, but it's coming out. Yeah, so Mercury just stationed direct on January 1st, and by the end of the month, we don't have any retrograde activity again until early spring. So right out of the gates, the year kicks off with a lot of positive momentum. Okay. But it's really April that we'll see like the marquee events for astrology this year. We have a total solar eclipse that we'll mm -hmm. see across the U.S. And then we have this other really important astrological configuration known as the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Jupiter is growth. Uranus is change. They come together. And so we can expect electrifying energy, big shifts, ahas. And the year is really fast. So um, we want to get our ducks in a row now, clean up lingering messes. Uh, let go of what we can, get uh -huh. free where we can. Awesome. Okay. okay, let's hear about Hoda and hear what her year is going to be Leos like. For all the Leos out there. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, well, specific to you, and then we'll go okay. into the fire signs. Okay. Hoda, you have a, a dynamic year. You're coming in on the end of your Saturn return right now. Saturn's opposing your moon. So it's you got to go slow. you got to really do the work of embodying where you're at, tending yeah. to the difficult, the, uh, you know, the, the parts of life that are challenging. But come spring, you have gangbuster energy in your oh, chart. Oh, yes! Mm. So your your motto this year is go slow to go fast. Especially... Go fast. Es we kind of said that. Yeah. Not exactly that But way. I like it that way. Go slow, go go fast. Slow, okay. go Especially fast. right now. You want to consolidate lessons. Just go really slow. Be really mindful. But as you get into... April, May, we're talking like once in a lifetime energy where things that you really want start to come to fruition and or, you know, what you don't even expect. It's expecting the unexpected in a positive way. So just put your heart, your prayers in your heart, surrender to the divine and get ready because it's going to be really nice. Get ready. Oh, I can't wait Buckle till then. Okay, let's talk about Jenna. <laughs> so Jenna, you two are going through a lot of Saturn stuff. You have Saturn squaring your sun. You're just wrapping that up. But this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happens really right on um, a very pivotal point in your chart that sets off your grand trine in earth. So it's a manifesting energy. You have a grand trine in earth. You're a great manifester. You have a wonderful sense of humor. This all gets really activated this spring. So again, expect the unexpected, but you're going to have tons of epiphanies, revelations, and just deep changes within your soul around mm. how you're doing things, how you're showing up. It's also a time of release, letting go of old expectations, stepping into a new version of yourself. Mm. Okay. All right. Should we go through the signs? Because people want to know. All right. Let's start with the fire signs, people who are Aries, Leos, and Sagittarius. Yeah. So fire signs, you want to be really mindful about acting reactively. You mm. know, being reactive isn't going to get you closer to your destiny or your desired outcome. Comes, you want to slow down, be patient, show up proactively and productively to nuances and see how that changes things. Um, make changes by channeling into your creativity without doing any damage to relationships. Mm, interesting. Okay. okay, let's move on to Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Okay, so our Earth signs are going through tremendous transformation. Pluto is leaving Capricorn, and you've changed, really, from the inside out. The old chapter's ending, a new bridge is about to appear to where you're going next. You want to trust your gut, mm. tune into your inner wisdom, and channel your higher self to the best of your ability. All right, let's talk about the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Gangbuster activity this year. So wow. Pluto's moving into Aquarius. And with this is like changing from the inside out. There's a heavy dose of grit coming your way. You can really, really expect beneficial connections with positive people. Jupiter's moving into Gemini later this year. So you have to trust yourself. Let go of the old and outworn. Really, um, yeah, just go with what mm -hmm. you know to be mm -hmm. true. Okay, finally, we have water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Mm -hmm. So. Don't let yesterday's pain overshadow, t overshadow today's potential. It's over. You've survived. Now start to look about look towards what's happening next. Saturn, the planet of discipline and structures in Pisces. So you have to pay attention to your daily commitments. Um, show up to tasks. It's through daily dedication that success becomes inevitable. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. What a great year we it's have ahead. It's going to be really fun. I'm you excited. You need to mark your calendar I am, I am. for April. I got it. Trust me. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, Jennifer. My pleasure. And to check out Jennifer's book, Cosmic Health, go today.com slash book. And we'll be back right after this.
Wow. Thank you. Wow, so April is when it's happening. And that's going to do it for us. Next week, Kevin Hart's going to be here. Plus, we're going to catch up with Mel B. And from the new Mean Girls movie, we've got actress Busy Phillips. I can't wait to see that Mean Girls that's movie. Good week. Okay, y'all, enjoy your weekend. Bye. This morning and today, food, we got this pasta dish. It is simple, yet so sophisticated. Your, your family is going to be amazed. Alfred Portali is a James Beard award-winning chef, restaurateur, and cookbook author. Also the culinary director of Sartiano's, a modern Italian restaurant right here in New York City, and the executive chef of Portale. Chef, good to see you. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love yes. you. This is about as simple as it gets, but I, I've been so looking forward to tasting this. Yeah, it's a very, very simple dish, but very versatile. Okay. Um, uh, but we start with emulsifying a little bit of butter. I've got a bit of heavy cream in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Cream and butter so far, yeah. check. And we want to whisk, mm -hmm. whisk this in. Is there a temperature that's too high for you know, cream? The, the, it should be medium high heat. Okay. Um, you want to just keep keep it moving. Uh, once you emulsify the butter, mm -hmm. then we add. This is a mixture of lemon juice mm. and. Lemon zest. That doesn't make it curdle or no, anything? No, 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 no. Hmm. Lemon juice so, and lemon really zest. Really quite simple. So okay. okay. Once that's working, mm -hmm. we drop the pasta. I'm using fresh pasta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that cooks faster than the, 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 the dried box? Yeah, about 90 seconds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have some salted, boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. We cook that. Okay. Um, I have some over here that looks about done. Okay. So this is, it's a very simple dish. I think mm -hmm. a simple but Rather but yummy. Yeah. elegant, simple, yeah. and easy and versatile. Yeah. Um, at Sartiano's, we we serve this dish with a cetra caviar. Oh, so, okay. So shake it up so a little bit. So you could do like seafood with that, like shrimp or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I like to do it with mm. smoked fish. It's great. Uh -huh. salmon, could you like shrimp, sprinkle bacon lobster, on top? Mm -hmm. or, or even vegetables. Or, or like they'll some bacon. Some bacon in there. Mm. Bacon. All right. Then we're, <laughs> we're talking. Guanchi, my language, you want my language. So now you're just adding a little uh, parmesan, parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. chives. I'm trying it. And if it gets too thick, do we, would you add a little pasta mm. water to that? Or exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh! Look at that. That's it. Oh. You and know that's what? It. That's literally that's a five-minute dinner. You guys have to try this. That fresh pasta, first like. of all, priceless. Wait, I missed this. You, what did we put in there? Uh, chives. Oh, chives. Oh my gosh! All right. Are you and kidding there me? There we have it. All right, now I have to try. And it's so simple. Wow. Oh, really flavor. bright flavors. Oh my gosh. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Oh. Yummy. Is there a secret? Why is this so yummy? <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. That is Thank delicious. So delicious. Chef Thank Alfred Portelli. And the best dinner you. I think Thank we've you. ever I know. Made. I want people to try it so they can see why we're like. Go to today.com oh slash food. Get this oh recipe. Oh Make gosh. this tonight. Yeah. Third hour of today. We'll be right back. And you're good to go. Yum. People will kiss you full on the lips for this. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Look who's in our kitchen this morning, home chef and cookbook author, Patel Patala. Pat 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 Pat
Hold on. Hold on. Palak Patel. Palak Patel. You got it. Yeah, Palak is whipping Thank up you. a delicious recipe from her debut cookbook, The Chutney Life, 100 easy-to-make Indian-inspired recipes. Palak, welcome. Thank you. Thank We're you so for having me. We're so happy that you're I'm here. I'm so excited and to be we're here. We're very we, excited we to try this We feel like this out. is a great weeknight kit. Yeah. Such a great weeknight meal, and it's really fall forward. Okay. You know, spaghetti squash is super great for fall, so I'm excited. Okay. Okay, I'll talk so to tell us. us what we should do. All right, so we've got our spaghetti squash here. I've mm -hmm. already sliced this in half, and we're just going to drizzle this with a little bit of oil okay. and salt and pepper, and then... This gets roasted. So you just scraped it out, no, yeah. no big deal, that was it. Okay. All the seeds and mm -hmm. all the kind okay. of middle flesh, so super quick. And then salt and olive oil. Okay. Salt really well, mm -hmm. because that's gonna add a lot of that flavor in there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our pepper. Mm -hmm. And you can be as generous as you like with this. Cool. And then we're gonna roast this cut side down. That's gonna help ah, the inside of this flesh cut cook. Side down. Okay. Plus you're gonna get these golden caramel edges and that's okay. where you get a lot of flavor. How, How long? long do you so work that goes for? In the oven, 375 for about 45 to 50 minutes okay. until it's really nice and golden. Okay. okay. Now. While that cooks, we're gonna make our sauce. So I've got some oil here, and mm -hmm. this is where we add a lot of great flavor. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we've got cumin seeds. These are gonna start to kind of sizzle mm -hmm. and crackle in the hot oil. And then adding your spices to the oil is just a great way to add that what depth and that? flavor. These are mustard seeds. Oh, oh mustard it's very, seeds. It's just, they're, they're crunchy. They mm -hmm. have this kind of little bit of zing to them. And so we're gonna cook these, okay. and they're gonna get really nice mm -hmm. and toasty. How long, you cook them for about 10 minutes? I'd say about 10 minutes, and you wanna kinda of hear them crackle and pop, and that's okay. when you know, all right, it's gonna, okay. it's ready. ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our aromatics. So we've mm. got garlic, ginger, green chilies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't like spice, you could always leave these out. And we've got some diced red onion. So all of this, okay. we can, you in there. You yeah, that? you okay. can do that, and um, do this. I will, okay. yeah. So I'll if you're making this. it for kids, you leave out the green chilies, you probably? Can leave out the green chilies, but the garlic and ginger is not going to add kick. It's just no. going to add flavor. Yeah. So I make this for my kids all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll add a little extra butter and cheese for my yeah. children. So, and then you can add whatever veggies you like as well. So this is really versatile. Okay. If you want to add meat, you could add mm. meat. Smell that, we smell add that these already. spices. Yes. That already. And the, so I've got tandoori masala, garam masala, and cumin. So it's just mm -hmm. really warm and mm. yummy. And spices, some tomato paste. Tomato paste. This is going to add a beautiful color along with just like a really great buttery tomato mm -hmm. sauce. We're gonna cook this down until it's really nice and so it looks golden. Like what we have Which down is over there. here. So then we get here and the flavors are gonna develop. Those spices have a mm -hmm. chance to kind of blend together. To this we're gonna add some butter. Yeah. Um, because that's just gonna add that richness mm -hmm. and creaminess to the sauce. And then we have a little bit of chicken broth. This is gonna help thin the sauce out a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And then to that, a little bit of good old cream. Cool. Um, and again, cozy, mm -hmm. really great fall meal. This is the fun part right here. So this is your yes. cooked squash. Cooked yes. squash. So and this now is what you're it looks gonna... like. It's gonna be golden. You scoop it out, you've got strands, and this is what you end up with with the sauce. And you don't even need to do anything just Super scoop easy. it out. You, you just scoop it up, and it's going to turn into these kind of like spaghetti strands, yeah. as you see. Oh, it's They're really super easy. It's, you know, nature, Mother Nature's version of and it's kind of a, a way to get <laughs> veggies, but it's like a noodle. Yeah, oh my gosh! It's like a noodle, and so you don't miss the pasta. Is that so yummy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, it's that a great is meal for super, fall. super mm -hmm. yummy. Thank you. I'm glad thank you enjoyed you it. Thank you so much, Pollock. Thank that you. That is delicious. All right. Thank you. Well, those recipes and more go to today.com/food. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yummy.
Let's make ahead Monday, and we're always trying to find ways to just switch things up a little bit. So this morning, we have a meatless twist on two classics. Joining us to help our healthy lifestyle influencers and hosts of the Facebook show, Keeping Up with Coco and Lala. And it is Coco and Lala with us this right. morning. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> so before we get started, I just have to ask, how'd you decide to make vegan and vegetarian meals together? Well, I'm vegan and I'm vegetarian. And so we just came together and created a dynamic duo. Makes well, pro tell me this is good. So we're going to do this. Let's jump in. You're starting with a cauliflower bolognese sauce. Lala, why is cauliflower a good substitute for meat with this? Because it, it honestly, it tastes just like meat when you have it with the, the spaghetti sauce or and the taco seasoning, and the taco seasoning mm. which we thought of this for you guys because we know you guys are busy moms. Al's doing this healthy eating type mm -hmm. thing. So this is a great substitute and the kids love it. Coco has five kids. Her kids love this. Okay. And it's simple. So let's get, yeah. let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. What do we? You start okay. off, and you mentioned taco seasoning, which I'm a big fan of the taco seasoning. <laughs> yes, good. So you want to start by ricing some cauliflower, and you can always buy this pre-riced as well. So once it's riced, all you need to do is get your saucepan, add in some garlic and some fresh onion, and sauté this for about uh, five minutes. You add in your cauliflower, and you let that simmer and sauté for about. 10 minutes and that's it um once that's done you add in your taco seasoning i'm gonna try this this is so amazing you guys we literally call this uh, best ever because yes. my daughter malia who was seven at the time well i kind of tested this recipe on my family mm -hmm. without telling them mm -hmm. and she tasted it and she's like this is the best food ever <laughs> <laughs> so now we call this best, best ever ever so after your taco seasoning is in, then you add in your pasta sauce. Okay. Just your and favorite just pasta like sauce? That, yes, your favorite pasta sauce. How do you not make it just too like soggy? That, Sometimes with the cauliflower rice, it gets mushy. Look at you knowing. Well, that, because I like cauliflower rice. But it, <laughs> so you want to make sure that your pan is hot and you have a little bit of oil and you oh, yeah. definitely oh. want it. Okay. So that it's not too mushy. That's yeah. why you only want to leave it on for about 10 minutes, you guys, because yeah, yeah you're right. You don't want it mushy. No, we yeah. don't want it mushy. Okay. And then and you just put this like over that, it's done. any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. And if you really want to help it up, you can use um, zucchini noodles oh, or oh. Uh, zucchini noodles. Okay. Yep. And, and then so you would take it out the fridge the next day, you have some extra. Huh? And then what you want to do is add your vegan barbecue sauce <laughs> to your cauliflower. Already have it pre seasoned from yesterday. And you want to heat it up. You're going to add it to a, a bun. A toasted bun. You can yes. add a little bun. bit of green peppers if you like. Mm. And on top, we're going to, now I don't know how to say this right, so I think it's Gardenera, <laughs> but I say Italian relish. Sure. Ooh, a little bit give of it a little Italian kick. Relish. And yes, a nice kick. give it a little kick. Yeah. And TV magic. It's done. Oh, Very good. Oh. Or a little vegan cheese. And there's on no there? meat in anything. And you can have vegan cheese too if you want. Yep, absolutely. Wow. That's really No terrific. meat. Well, no meat. It's quick. It's easy. Anybody can do it. Everybody probably has taco seasoning in there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. ah. You know, there you go. We'll keep you posted. I'm going to try it. All right, we're going to try That's that. Fantastic. Yeah. Coco and Lala, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. If you're looking for a way to get everybody together this weekend for dinner, tell them you're making the ultimate Italian family meal. Of course, we're talking about spaghetti uh, meatballs. And you can't get any more classic than that. Our friend Scott Conan is going to show us how to fix it ahead so you don't have to spend your Sunday in the kitchen. His recipe is straight out of his new cookbook. We love this title. Peace, Peace love, love, and pasta. pasta. By the way, brilliant title, Scott. How are you? I'm great. It's nice to see you. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, everybody loves a good old-fashioned plate of spaghetti and meatballs, but I know you have your Scott twist on it. You know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't just do a little something to it. I, uh, I started with this beautiful Neapolitan tomato sauce. So mm -hmm. I, took, I took a bunch of beef and onions and celery and crushed red pepper and garlic, and I 
cooked it all up together and got it nice and caramelized and brown. I added a bunch of tomatoes to it, fresh tomatoes, canned tomatoes, about 50-50. And then I just cooked it for a while. Mm. Uh, I made a large batch, so this went for about three and a half hours until this meat, which I later pulled out, was just falling apart and beautiful. Mm. And I love those little flecks of meat every once in a while that you get in the tomato sauce itself. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is take that tomato sauce and make these little polpettine. We call them polpettine because we charge by the vowel in Italian restaurants, <laughs> right? So, you know, it just goes. <laughs> so I have here um, this beautiful, uh, can you see that? So yeah. it's ground beef, ricotta, mm. Parmesan cheese, wow. garlic, oregano, just a really simple, straightforward recipe. The, the key to it is this panade. And I just mix it up like that and make these meatballs. Mm -hmm. I like the meatballs really tiny. Oh, look so I line them up adorable. like little soldiers. Those, yeah, and I just take them and roll them out really small. It's painstaking, gives you a lot to think about, a lot of time to think. <laughs> and I just line them up on the little tray just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this cast iron pan here and I'll fry them up. Oh, fry the balls. Butter, a little bit of olive oil, and a little bit of and you see how nice and golden yeah. they get? They're just really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, and I toss them in that sauce, just like this. Look at that. I add a little bit, and I'll just let that cook like that together for about five minutes or so, just for a little bit of flavor in part. But there's so much incredible concentrated flavor inside this tomato sauce with those meatballs now. I take this pasta, this macaroni. This is a store-bought one. You could easily do the one that I have in the book as well. It's a beautiful macaroni and toss it together. And I add a little bit of this pasta cooking liquid as well. Did I lose you there? Yes. I, think I lost you. No, oh, no, there no, we go. Right Perfect. Here. We're, just, we're just taking notes right there with you. Okay. <laughs> so toss it all together, add a little bit of butter, a little bit of torn basil inside of it. Mm. And this is special stuff. You know, you could freeze the sauce ahead. You could yes. freeze the meatballs as well. I mean, those are really important things to do. And then it's just really easy assembly for you. I mean, that, by the way, uh, Scott, we want that. It looks so good. You said you you throw some butter cubes in the yes. finished product. So I put a little bit of butter inside there. Ah. It, you know what it does? It rounds out the edges of the acidity of the yeah. tomato sauce. Okay. You know, so I feel like it just kind of softens it on the top. Oh. and I both like to eat yeah. our our spaghetti with our kids, Lady in the Tramp yeah. style. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. And we're going to try it with your recipe this weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. To get Thank, it, you. Thank you, Scott. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. And for Scott's mm. cookbook, we love this. It's called Peace, Love, and Pasta. Head to today.com slash shop.
are back. It is 8.49 with today's food. And this morning, our dear friend Valerie Bertinelli is back. She's with She's us. She's up. By the way, we just lost her shot two seconds ago, and she came back because we just trust and believe. Right. The power anyway, of Valerie. We are so happy that Valerie's here. She's got recipes that are full of light and full of flavor. Hey, Valerie, I know you're just resetting your shot. We're so hey, happy Val. that yes, you're I here. Do. I don't know. Oh, I got to fix the um. That's all right. Sound. Take your oh, time. No, you're good. Take your time. Don't worry. You got Can time. You hear Don't us? worry. It's the perfect. It's good. We see your glasses and your ceiling. You look it's adorable. Fine. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear us. Oh, she can, oh, she can <laughs> hear us. There you go. The perfect spring dish, Valerie. Why are my earpods not coming on? I don't uh, know. Right. You know what? Um, you're listening and to you know Wolfie's what? You music. don't have to be a earth magician to be able to make this. Oh, wow. 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 We're never going to hear the end of this. Go, Valerie. I love how long people are watching the show. Go, Valerie. Valerie, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Oh, you hear me? All right. Girl, we're yes, so okay. glad we're so glad to see you. Other than your <laughs> shot just going down, how have you been doing? I've been doing very well. How about you guys? I well, cannot wait to get my butt to New York to see you guys in person. Yeah. I'm right. Oh, we we want on. you to be one of the first chefs who walks through the door. So what are you whipping up for us today? Oh, I am whipping up. Oh, let me get everything on. <laughs> I'm so worried about actually getting on. Um, so I've got a little bit of olive oil. This is a nice lemony, herby um, with uh, uh, pasta with some nice fresh beans. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a pan going with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just, I'm all for clamped now. Okay, so <laughs> let me get the heat up and get this all melted. And then into that, you're going to throw some shallots, one shallot. And that's mm -hmm. all nice and chopped easily. Mm -hmm. Shallots are really easy that way. Get that stirred up. While the shallots cook, you're going to slice up some garlic. Now, usually I like to grate garlic into any mm. meal that I'm making. Yeah. But I want to see the slices of garlic in here. Mm. And they get really beautiful and soft and creamy. And they just melt right into the pasta. Mm. So I've got the pasta already going. Just plain old spaghetti. The good stuff. Mm. Good old-fashioned spaghetti that I grew up on. Yeah. So while this sautés a little bit, plus we're going to get a little bit of chili pepper, red pepper in here. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going to soften up in the butter and the olive oil. So as that softens up, the pasta is really ready to go because I put it in when we first met you guys at the very, very beginning, like 45 minutes ago. Not that long ago. <laughs> anyway, you're going to use the nice hot pasta water and throw in your snot peas. And you're going to give them a really quick blanch in there. And so while those guys blanch and this guy fries up, you're going to throw in a little bit of heavy cream. Oh, and this uh -huh. is going to give you a really a beautiful, mm. creamy sauce. Mm, it's will. just a couple tablespoons. It's not much. I love that I'm hearing all these mmms and mmms. Mm. Mm. One of these days, we're going to be together and you'll be yes. able to actually taste it. Yes. So while that cooks down, I'm going to throw this heat down really low because I don't want to boil off all the cream. Then you're just going to grab some pasta water out of your pot right here mm -hmm. where your beans is, are blanching. Throw that in there and you're going to loosen it up. And while you're at it, just grab all of your spaghetti and your beans. It's not peas. What am I calling them beans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're going to throw them right into right in what you just created. Yeah. That beautiful I like that sauce. thing just drains the water Ooh, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't that great? Yeah. Then you're going to throw on some lemon juice and some lemon zest. Mm, Get a nice lemony flavor because mm. that's the way I roll. Get that all mixed up. And while you're mixing that, throw in some Parmesan. Mm, of course. And then you're going to throw in some fresh herbs. Oh, that's parsley. Oh, that's, 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 that's a live that's shot. That's a that is beautiful. Ooh. There you go. Hey, Val, now, could you serve that, that cold? You sure. absolutely could. Look, I made some last night. It came right out of the fridge, mm. and I'm going to have this for breakfast when I'm done with you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Isn't that Costa beautiful? For breakfast too. Yeah. That's great. Who's Val oh, hell yeah. Down? Hey, Valerie, how's Wolfie doing? He's doing great. His album drops on June 11th. I hope he comes back to see you guys. Yeah. That'd be great. I love Lucky that song, uh, Free. That track, Free, I think just came out recently. So many good songs. Isn't that, that okay. amazing? Yeah. I mean, it's so hard for me, even though I know him, that he plays every single instrument on that. It's crazy. That. It's crazy. Mm. 
He's brilliant, but I'm his mom. What do I know? <laughs> and Carson, when his first, when that single came out, what kind of reception Distance. did it get? Yeah. Oh, immediately. I, yeah. you know, as I spoke to Wolf, he was worried about what you know Van Halen fans would think, but he's he's carved his own way yeah. with this record. And as Val said, it's and I'll say it, I mean, it's ridiculous that he is that talented to do every part on that record, <laughs> and it's so good. I love you, Carson. No, it's true. <laughs> I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Yeah, it's great. You don't have to pay anybody else. I'm so proud else. of him. Yeah. Yeah. I told you. That's right. <laughs> He'd have to split that yes. check five other ways. <laughs> <laughs> good to see Thanks, you, Val. Wow, we good miss you. We miss so you. Good to see you guys. I can't wait to see you. Enjoy that pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to get your hands on Valerie's recipes, you can go to Dave. Got. It's been a long 24 hours. Today. Yeah. Today.com <laughs> slash food. <laughs> and don't forget to catch episodes of Valerie's Home Cooking on the Food <laughs> Network. Bye, Val. We love Bye, you. Bye, Val. This morning's guest is known affectionately around the world as Pepper Thai <laughs> for her fun videos, her love of spicy food, and Chrissy Teigen knows her quite well. She calls her mom. I love it. For years, Pepper has been showing off her culinary skills on YouTube in Pepper's Corner, a series featured on Chrissy's channel. And now you can cook along with her because the Pepper Thai cookbook is out today. That's right. We're so excited that she's here with us to tell us that and so much more to share one of her favorite family recipes. Good morning, Pepper. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, New York. I love Thai I food. So. Pepper, I just, before we get to your recipe, I, I guess Pepper is not your given name. You weren't born with that name. How did you get that nickname? Uh, <clears throat> when I first came to America in 1983, uh, her father and I bought a tavern up in Seattle, Washington, and uh, and we run the tavern for a while. And uh, I've been cooking there, and uh, and I always make my own food, and I eat so spicy, mm. so hot. That, uh, <laughs> and then pepper. my name, my Thai name is kind of hard to pronounce, so I, uh, so they give me the papers. We'll uh, take it. As, uh, we'll take my it. My name sent. Yes. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about what you're cooking here. Stir fried spaghetti. Yes, yeah, spaghetti and like a sweet chili jam mm. um, with uh, sun dried tomatoes. Mm. Uh, the, I think it's a very easy, pretty much kind of like a pad thai, a little bit. It, I think it's a lot easier too. <laughs> this way. Wow. Oh, uh, Wow. Every, oh, Good morning. Uh, hi, John. Hi, Chris. They are waiting. I'm so excited for mom. We can't hear anything. Oh, okay. Well, it's not rehearsal. I saw a person. I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. John is dressed. Chrissy is not. We miss New York. I know. It was oh, so fun to be fun. all together like that. Pepper, so how do you make this? Give us your, your, your recipe here. So I just fried garlic, uh, chicken. Uh, slide up and then uh, chili jams. I add in a sun dried tomatoes and I will tell the chicken is cooked. Mm -hmm. This is the chili jam. I had it in my book. Uh, you can make your own or you can buy it uh, at the supermarket. And you can make it spicy uh, it, uh, or sweet, right? Or maybe if your kids don't like right. spicy. Yes, right. Yes. 
I mean, even this uh, chili jam is come with uh, no spice, medium and high. And for me, I add more. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Pepper, Pepper, you use a lot of fish sauce uh, throughout the yes. cookbook. Uh, what is fish sauce mm -hmm. for folks who aren't familiar with that? Uh, fish sauce is like a fermented fish. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I cannot live without it. Um, I, you know, uh, we use a lot, uh, try to get people to learn how to use it. Uh, even a household is like a regular thing at the house. People are really uh, tend to uh, using, using it uh, now more than 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, our house is like every day. Uh, you know, more than the soy sauce. Right. Oh, wow. So, Pepper, Thai food, I think anybody would say, is one of the most delicious cuisines on earth. Mm -hmm. The flavor is just so yes. elevated. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But people are probably a little intimidated to try and recreate a Thai dish in their own homes. Mm -hmm. Why should they not be nervous to do that? Uh, people always order Thai food, but I know they're intimidated. I mean, even... Chrissy, she have me now. She's rather have me doing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, it's so easy. Uh, <laughs> we have to do our own hair today. <laughs> Does she always do that uh, when you're yes. cooking? Come in and do Such your hair? Such a stage mom. You look she beautiful. She, wow. she loves to teasing me and yeah. playing around with me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I would cook every day if Chrissy it, Teigen came in and did my hair. And tussled yeah, your exactly. hair. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, I yes, I did that. Yes. Pepper, thank you so much. Congratulations on the cookbook. Thank you so much. Thanks, we miss Pepper. New York. Love your guy. I watch your guy every day. Oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you. It's called the Pepper uh, Thai and, uh, Cookbook. You can find it at today.com. Yes. <laughs> Slash mm. food. Love Thai food, food right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, got to do it tonight. Thank now you. that's a good Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, Chrissy. Bye, Chrissy. I wish Bye, John was in a towel. Bye, Thank you. <laughs> the family affair today. Oh, I that's love awesome. her. Jocelyn Delk Adams, she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. I know. Hey it's now. been so long, guys. Oh, it's it's good been to see so you. long. Thank you. What are we making? Meal you're making? Lemony chicken mm, rice casserole. With chicken thighs. Oh, yes. With chicken thighs, because you know it makes a difference. Yes, it does. it does. Right? Makes them nice and juicy. So we're going to start by dredging our chicken thighs. We've got some flour here. I'm going to add in some Parmesan. Oh. Mm, yeah. I've got wow, onion look. and garlic powder. You're like, oh. And then, of course, some lemon. Zest. You know okay. how to, you know how to zest. Okay, let me see. Now. Let me see these. Let me see these skills. Hey, this right is a woodworker here. right here. <laughs> yes. right. How much do you, how much do you want? All right, just, oh, you like, how much do I want? You're like, I'll be open come all day, right? Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty sure? good. All right, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. We need to work here. We're going to whisk that up, mm -hmm. and then we're going to dredge these, okay? Yeah. We're just going to add this right in. And why and is it so important to dredge? Well, we want to get that nice coating. It's going to give us, like, that nice, crisp coating. We want to get it in that flour. Does it help thicken up the... Sauce well, it's pour also it going to thicken up the sauce too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then could we're going to add almond this. flour if you want. Of course, okay. you could. Oh, come on, you know, <laughs> you know. And we're going to put this right into our oil. You can definitely play around. You can even mm -hmm. use, you know, any type of gluten-free flour okay. if and that's you like, like the a, starch skin side. Yeah, down? I do too. I do. I like to crisp get it up that a nice crisp. crisp. It up. Yeah, we're going to get that crispy, and then we're going to work on our casserole dish. Do you have we to cook it through in the pan. Well, you don't because we're also going to throw it in the oven too. So we just want to get it browned, and then we can get in the oven. So we've got some. Cream of chicken, you want to whisk okay, this sure. up for me? Okay. And then I've got some cream of chicken soup. There you go. Yeah. Because you know nothing's more comforting than yeah. some yeah. Cream I chicken yeah. soup, yeah. right? So. Got and would you add just back some there? Broth, yep. And then I've got our rice that oh. we're gonna go right okay. in here. And then awesome. I've got some garlic too. I'm gonna Ooh. pop that okay. in. Well. Yeah, because we love garlic. And then down here, of course, you can see that our our um, our chicken thighs are mm, ready. ready. And then this oh is when gosh. we're just gonna add this right into our dish. Oh, Those are right in. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You already this tasted is, it, oh, didn't Greg you? started it. This you is already worth did it. I know you did. This is That's, worth oh making tonight. Yeah, look, you're going to do it, aren't mm -hmm. you? Oh, my goodness. Chicken goes in. So you just put it in there. 
Yep. So it's just a one dish. Pop this oh, in. That is. Pop this in. And then how long in. are you going to put that in the oven for? We're going to put this in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then oh usually oh we gosh. cover it mm -hmm. with foil because we want to make sure all that rice gets really tender. Oh, oh, Y'all over there are killing my dish, right? Wow. Y'all know how oh, I do. Wow. All right. Oh, wow. And then the lemon goes on top because oh, it's so beautiful. So you cook it with the lemon there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. to get a little oh, bit more of that How long do you bake it? She told you you know about your ear. I'm sorry. eating. She already said she didn't eat it. What's going, on? What's going on? I can't remember. Oh my God. So yeah, oh this goes in. You put the foil over the top, mm -hmm. bake it for about 40 to 50, then take it off if you want to brown it oh a little gosh. more for about 10 minutes, and then you're ready to serve. Oh, oh, you got an air fryer salmon. I sure do. Four Wait, this ingredients. Is an air fryer? Yes, four ingredients. Because no. we were talking about the air fryer, how it's like the perfect okay. appliance. If you want to add another appliance. Yeah. I've never made salmon you know. in the air fryer. So easy. How easy is it? So easy. What are these? Like, so easy. And it's done really quickly, oh, that's too. Great. Four ingredients. Okay, what is that? So I've got some oh soy God. sauce mm -hmm. in there. I got some honey. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see. What else do I have in there? I can't that's even remember. Out. Yeah. Oh, that's a garnish. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop it in the air mm -hmm. fryer for about like ten minutes. But sometimes mm -hmm. it depends on your air fryer. Sometimes it cooks really quickly. Mm -hmm. But I love the air fryer because it gets that nice crisp skin at the top. Oh this my is God. delicious. Come on. Great. Oh, just a little done. All right. I like to make salmon great. skin bacon. Oh. Yeah. Wait, oh, I like that. What do you do? You just just put it on. This just take some of the skin off the. In fact, I go to the. I go to my fishmonger. And, yeah. You know, he gives me extra. He goes, and, and don't like so he goes to his I fish love this right? It's so good. He goes to his fish mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am one, two for two on this. You guys love him? As one. As one. Uh, so I like good. a fish mom. It's been a little while, but it's time once again for Cooking with Cal. And this time we are making my mom's famous casserole. Like, Super famous within our family. Okay. It's a, a super easy weeknight dinner, and my boys literally eat bowls and bowls of this. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Casserole. Casserole. So there are so many different types of casseroles, but this is what my mom made when I was growing up, and she just called it a casserole. Whatever mac and cheese you like to use, we're going to use gluten free, right? We use some veggies, some ground beef, and we're going to throw it all into a pot, and that's your casserole. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to cook the pasta. So, I use the zucchini and the carrots, because I hide them in the casserole, and you guys don't even know they're there. Because, but we like them. You do. Well, you finished that one already? Yep. Are you a speed peeler? No. You're just really good at it? Yeah. Yeah? That's like record time. What should I do next? The zucchini or the onion? Zucchini. Uh, but what do I do? Well, uh, I'm just standing here. That's true. You are just standing here. Want me to give you something to do? Yeah. Let's see. I could do the zucchini. This knife is really very sharp. So, I'm going to give you these strips. Cut them in like to little pieces. It's so hard to open and shut. Perfect. Okay. It was good. <laughs> Ready, listen. Glug, glug, glug. It's glug, glug, glug. It's good. <laughs> so much glugs. So many glugs. That's how I measure things in gloves. Okay, when that starts sizzling a little bit, we're gonna add the meat. Can I mix it? Sure. So while this continues to brown up, let's yeah. finish up the mac and cheese. So after 50 minutes, it should all the flavors should come together. It'll be a little crispy on the top, and we'll be good to go. Oh, it's so hot. Mmm. Mm. Love it. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food.
This is delicious. Thank Yummy. you. It's just like a good yeah. family style meal. Now, if you want to go super crazy, okay, okay and make this even more retro, if you take slices of American cheese mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and You're put it on top, 1984. Throw it in the microwave for a second before yeah. you eat it. It is so oh. delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yummy. So good. Yeah. My Here's kids that. would love this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank well, you, thanks, Cal. Guys, we'll be right back. There you go. go. It's like comfort Enjoy. food. <laughs> Today, food, we are bringing you a dish straight from the south of France. It is called Provençal Vegetable Casserole. Brings back some childhood memories for our guest chef. Chef Daniel Bell. Hello. He owns several award-winning restaurants around the world, and he's joined us this morning to show us how to make this beautiful dish. Chef, it's always a pleasure to have you. So let's let's start with this special place that it has in, in, in your heart. What's the story there? Thank you. Well, this is the kind of dish I cook every summer in my parents' home in Lyon oh. because all those vegetables come from the garden. Oh. They are in full bloom and uh, we always make this. And sometimes I cook it in huge pans mm. for at least 30 people around the table. Wow. And you can also cook it for just so a it's small scalable. gathering. Okay. It's scalable, totally. And normally it's called a bayaldi mm -hmm. or a tian of vegetable. So here you have some red paper and some onion. So there's always a base here. Oh, don't be careful. I never oh. used that knife here before. <laughs> so, you know, NBC knife is good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I am slicing the vegetable and you don't have to be too fancy. I'm, I'm putting paper, I'm putting onion that has been sliced. And this is the base with some garlic. Some, a little bit of, um, you can put uh, paper flakes, you can put the jalapeno. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you also, use the red pepper, I assume you can use a little green bit of salt. Or whatever peppers you have. Yes, absolutely. You put a little bit of rosemary and how inside. Long will you cook this down? You yeah. put a little bit of thyme. <coughs> Ooh, the paper is hot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you let it sweat until it's tender and not color a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. <coughs> now do you're you, going to do a little. Do you keep the herbs in there? And then you, you slice me some herbs? vegetable. What about the basil here? Do we not, we not use uh, it? You can put some basil as well. Yeah, why don't you put some couple of leaves of basil? Yes, sure. So this is the base onion, paper, basil, herbs, mm -hmm. garlic, and then all the vegetables. So normally, you could take your time and make this dish very fancy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I a think ratatouille? They may have a picture to show like uh, of, a, of a tian of vegetable where it's layered uh, color by color, vegetable mm -hmm. by vegetable. Okay. The difference of this with the ratatouille is that this, we don't roast the vegetable. We mm -hmm. bake them over the onion that has been sweated like this. So we use some eggplant. Voila. So I am putting olive oil. Mm -hmm. I have eggplant, I have yellow squash, I have tomato, I have zucchini. And whatever you have in your salt, garden. Salt, pepper, work. of course, this. And then we can put a little bit more basil leaf inside. Mm -hmm. And actually, I just toss it like this. Okay. That's the quick version. If you have time and you want to play with the family and all that, then you can you just make dump it. That right on top. Voila. You put it all on top like this. And then you bake it in the oven at right 350, the oven. 375 it. until it really baked down and it evaporates and voila. 
That's all. This is wow. the casserole of Provençal vegetable. And this is the perfect side dish oh to use yeah. up all those vegetables. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is totally vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And you can use it with a, a roasted leg of lamb. You can wow. use it with mm. a roast chicken. You can use it with eggs on brunch. And, oh, wow. This is... And it's a quick version. I don't know. You, they told me, Danielle, you will not be able to spend an hour making all these vegetables <laughs> beautifully laid down. <laughs> So, do you have any quick version? And I said, yes, I'll make one. <laughs> and that's just toss your vegetable. That's your version on TV there, by the way. Oh, oh voila. That's that's your version. Yeah, that's the cooked one. And there's mm -hmm. the other one, which is the, the raw one, before I put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is, like, beautiful. It's, it, in a way, it's very artistic. It's very soulful. Mm -hmm. It's very Provence. And it's very it summer. how long cook for? Because the vegetables have still a, a bite to them and, and a lot of flavor. Um, you could cook that for about an hour, I would say, 45 oh. minutes to an hour. If mm -hmm. you like your vegetable a little firmer, mm -hmm. you cook it for 45, 40, 40 to 45 minutes. But an hour, an hour and a half, and what's delicious yeah. is you don't eat everything. The next day you reheat it, That's and it has a an different flavor yeah, in an go. omelet or something. Chef, thank you. Merci, thank, you so thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, by the way, for this Happy recipe, summer. it's today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and today nutritionist Joy Bauer is turning two family favorites into casseroles. Good morning to you, Joy. Hey, Joy. Hey guys, we are casseroling right into the weekend with two scrumptious recipes. And the first is a veggie-packed, cheesy pizza casserole. Let's Can I just it. tell you how much I love my job? <laughs> I love my job. Okay, so what we're starting with is a cauliflower crust. Oh. So here I have four heaping cups of cauliflower florets that I microwaved, and then you're just going to want to mush them with a fork and take out all of the water. Then putting in some eggs, some mozzarella cheese, whoops, got a little bit stuck here, a little bit of Parmesan. And because I wanna bring all those pizza pie flavors to the okay. table, this is Italian seasoning and a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper. So this is gonna all get stirred up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like because I push it into the bottom of a casserole dish. Mm. And let me show you how it cooks. It's a crust. Okay. This is a real crust. And at the same time that this crust. is cooking, we are going to have an antioxidant love fest oh, because that. I roasted all these vegetables. Again, at the very same time, Incoming. we're going to layer it. Look at this. And you could do any vegetables that you want. And honestly, you could also open up your fridge and you could throw in whatever oh, you have left over from the night before. This is really good, Joy. And I think with all these veggies, it's like you wouldn't even know. It feels naughty, but it's yummy. No, I feel like it's I'm like an, getting ripped right now just eating this, Joy. <laughs> oh, you are. It's an <laughs> antioxidant <are>. love fest, <laughs> I tell you. It's good. So here it's I delicious. have um, tomato sauce goes over the mm. top. Whatever marinara sauce is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to layer on some more ooey gooey mozzarella cheese, or you could oh, blanket yeah. it with uh, slices of mozzarella, and then you get those puddles mm. of cheesy bliss. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more Italian seasoning, That's and good. then I like to fake out pepperoni slices. So look what I've done here. I just sliced tomatoes. some tomatoes. You put That's them good. right in the oven, and it just, just until the cheese melts. So I would really say good. that this is probably about mm, 15 minutes. I'm going to show you That's what this looks like. And, Joy, I, I want to also get to the taco. We're know, already we're picking out on our casserole. Uh, really tell us about, oh, there <laughs> it's it is. really good. We're going to eat that yeah. while you tell us about the taco. Okay, so this is a Tex-Mex dream. I'm going to grab mm. over here on the skillet. I have some sautéed lean ground turkey meat. Okay. I'm going to bring over all my fixings. And all you're going to do after the turkey meat is cooked, I put in a rinsed can of black beans, okay. of some corn. I have two cups of jarred salsa. You know what I say, you are the sauce of your, you are the boss of your sauce. Boss so it can be mild or spicy. And a taco seasoning packet. Oh my gosh, we can do this. You do stir this up and you're going to then, let me show you how easy this is. You can do this tonight. I'll I have a casserole. Tonight. I layered some whole grain tortillas oh, right yeah. on the bottom. I'm sampling you one. You put your meat on top. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to add some cheese. I'm going to get to the finished one. You add some cheese. You put another layer on top of the tortillas. And then anything you want. 
I'm going to show you this idea. taco bar. And you can set up a taco bar. Look what I have here. Shredded lettuce. I have um, tomatoes, Yum. scallions, jalapenos, guac, sour cream. This is a no-brainer. And everybody, right, you could make your own personalized really taco. Good. Really quickly, Joy, how long do you, you bake it for? I mean, maybe 10, 15 minutes because all you want to do, the, the meat is already cooked. Right. So all you want to do is melt the cheese and you want to slightly get those tortillas a little okay. bit browned. It is sensational. So good. Home run, Joy. Thanks, Thank Joy. you for Happy recipes. weekend, everyone. You too. You too. Head to today.com slash food. This morning, Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre order as we speak. Sure is. And <laughs> Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish. The casserole. And you're going to help me. I am going I am going to help this morning. <laughs> so tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Because I know you can be, <laughs> I know he can be cooking challenge. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell peppers, okay. right? You're going to get these strips, just kind of get them together really easily, and then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather them up. And that's all you Even I do. can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See, you're okay. winning already. So we're going to start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. Going to add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle. And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you can even turkey, ground chicken. Even ground chicken. Okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm going to add in our bell pepper here. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're going to brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in, all right? Oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like, we're going to add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday that. tonight, of course, yes. you might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's going to oh. give us ample flavor like here. chunky one, Josh? Yeah, yeah. you can grab the chunky one. for yeah, yeah, that chunky. texture. You take so your salsa good. seriously. Out there. I do. <laughs> can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in this salsa, and then we're gonna add in some really taco good. seasoning. So just store bought taco store seasoning. Store bought. Wow. Get it in the little Easy. packet and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. really good. So yummy, Crunchy right? Yummy. Oh my gosh! So you're gonna cook this together. This is our swap. So Hello, the magic of TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're gonna let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're gonna start adding in our additional texture. 
texture. We've got. Is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know it it's makes the it so creamy. For everything. Oh, you I throw love it into that. everything. We even throw it into soup? everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Cream, cream of mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you it, like it so much? What the, so um. it's so creamy. It adds so much richness along with like the sour cream in this. It mm. really makes that texture so great. Yeah, and I love anything with mushroom too. We're gonna add in some black beans too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. Yeah, and then we're gonna like add in some cheese. cheese blend. Yep, get that in there. All right. And we're gonna stir that together. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, and nice. then this <laughs> is when you get the kids involved, or you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have you like, <laughs> and I'll just go for oh, it. And yeah. Then, you know, you oh, get that get out. The kids. Get get the, I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, that so this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start building it. And this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're going to just layer it up. Oh. Mm. oh the bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. your corn chip is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you can, can use do the Frito cheesy ones. Fritos. Mm. Fritos. Fritos. Oh, yeah, Fritos. Like Fritos. whatever Fritos. your faves are. Oh, yeah. The flaming Hot. Mm -hmm. You know, get oh, some spice like in there. Like whatever you love. Like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever it's you really like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it is. And then, like you bake it off and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so that How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the, the foil. foil. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So do it, My take the foil off, this. and this then great. just add the cheese and then let it get all the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm going to taste it. Yeah. Tell oh us about gosh. this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. Oh my gosh, it's called Everyday Grand, yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like, great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like, you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific. Ooh, Thank you. Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to awesome. him. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. I Your four year old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. <laughs>friend chef ryan scott uh, from I, ryan scott to go all right. all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take chicken apple sausage you want me to cut it yes okay look like at this? oh my goodness she can actually i chop. have been gone for two years and i come back and <laughs> you've been gone for two years well, i mean it was COVID. i haven't been oh. in the studio you haven't been in the studio in no, two years no. Hi. Why does it feel like this we, is your first time in know, two years? Because right? you know what, you were on Zoom, and then we just yeah. love you so like much. We know you. All right, so All we right. chopped that so up. So chicken apple sausage. You yeah. can do pork sausage. You can even do the vegetarian sausage if yeah. you wanted to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really. Yeah. Okay. So this caramelizes and it gets super delicious. Okay. So once that goes in there, get it nice and crunchy because you want those little pieces in there. Crunchy. Then we're gonna take some onions and some sage. These are already caramelized. These are Look at that. already cooked. Mm -hmm. And then what we do, Hody, take these out. I like how it calls me Hody. Hody, yeah. this is out for okay. me. Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, wait. Yeah. yeah. I watched you a couple days ago. Yeah. Light bright in my house. Yeah. yeah. Still I, now? I have the old one from the 80s, and I have the, the new, new one. one. Wait, yes. is the new one hold up? No, I can't stand it. I like oh, the old one. one.
You know why? Because it's just it has Light like two best. two extra like things. No, yeah, we, we don't, don't want extra. That. I want the car to Simple. start without a button. I just want to turn the yes. key. Yes. Like, give me old, old school. school. Thank you. See? Okay. Uh, All right. Uh -huh. Now right. We, what is that? Watch apple. apples, <gasps> not onion rings. Look. So, so here's, you leave the onion juice. Yes. And you put the yes. apples on and the top. And you put it in away from you. And look at this. So now we have that sweet and we have that savory okay. that goes all together. Now we're going to go into our pantry, kind of like a little quick oh, fix. Here. I'll take this away from Okay, you. thank you. A nice little mm. quick fix. So what we're going to do is make the wet batter, and this is pancake batter in your pantry. So easy. Plain so easy. old pancake batter. Everybody battle. has it. All right, Jenna. Okay. You go over here and take four eggs. Okay, is this cream? cream. Yep. Oh, good. Because we're cream. super Since you haven't home. seen her in a while, she's no longer lactose intolerant. Oh, my God. Oh, something happened. Here, it's a here, miracle. Here, here. Just drink straight from this. There you go. <laughs> Oh, wait, now, you, do we add the cheese? For 11 years, I know. Dishes I'm not to... kidding. I don't know what no, happened. No, she's fine now. It's it. weird. <laughs> like, literally, you woke up and you're like, yeah. I can have dairy. By the way, we'll it's... tell you what she did later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so chives and yeah. a little bit of salt comes Yeah, down, this is like giving it. me, like, I like that vibe. Okay. Yeah, it's now giving me, what? like, baked potato vibe. Yeah, yes. Yes. So, okay. And what's this? So now we, this is pancake batter. Yeah. A little bit of, so we have sage and onions in there. Here is dried sage. Should I join this? No, no, not, not oh. yet. Watch, watch. And a little bit of water until this comes together. Could you use milk? Yes. Um, should you? Should you, should you use well, milk? Well, since now you're not lactose, Dump we'll it. go ahead and just go. So yeah. it's what I would do is go like this. So you have your egg batter. You have your apples caramelized. So, Jenna, let's do the layers. Come over here. Go. Okay, okay. So here's my favorite part. Wow. Okay. So everything is, is mixed. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sausage and our onions and our sage, dump it on top of the caramelized apples. Oh, oh I love that. Right. Doesn't this look fun? And it looks you kind of spread it. Spread it, it out. Okay, okay. then the what? The next thing you do, watch this. <gasps> wait, ready, wait, wait, ready, wait. Ready, camera guy? Oh, Ooh. yes. Wait, what are you doing? He was ready. Oh, he, was ready. Yes, he was ready. He was ready. Look at Ryan Turn the bowl right way. So there that becomes kind of like a giant pan okay, pancake. Okay, watch that now. Do you, do you start cooking that? Oh, watch, Mama. Well, you're Here just still go. adding? Go. We're going to put the egg on top. Is that what Wait, makes it a Dutch baby? Real? The Dutch baby is more the pancake aspect of it all. And then the eggs you usually uh, would so be inside it with a little leavening, and then you have to bake it real Okay, so, so what's watch. happening? This guy goes in the oven. Oh, in the oven. Okay. 15 minutes, about 400 degrees. Oh, look at and that. And then you cover it for 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, and then you uncover it, and then it comes oh. out. And then what's cool about Wait, this look is at that. this can go Big, in the fridge like the night before. Pie. Get over here. The Get night on before it. this can Get go in the fridge, it. and, and you then put, you pop it out. And oh, you put on. a little syrup? Hold on. A oh, little I need syrup. syrup. And because you're no longer lactose, yeah. what this else has butter and maple syrup in it. Do it. Do it. Bring it. And you know what else she could do? What else can I do? Because she's no longer. What? You could add a little whipped cream. Or, oh, girl, or, or, you are crazy. Or tequila. Oh, my God. Right? Hold well, that, no, that, that doesn't little have little lactose in it. Just, that doesn't have lactose. Off. It's a. Oh, my okay. God. Okay. You can tell me. What do you think? Mm. She's waiting for you to Wait, eat, wait, so. wait. Mm. The mm. sausage, mm. the apple, the egg. Hold on, let me try. The maple. Oh, my gosh. Let you did it. It's sweet and savory. This morning, best selling cookbook author and chef, <laughs> our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Okay, and wow. so Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up. 
and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do you, did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale, I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're gonna bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing and to that, I'm gonna add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic. And that is going into some lentils also called dal, which we'll make in a minute. But I just wanna get that going. Um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that, I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful yeah. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella? Chickpeas. Chickpeas. Uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, mm. the mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to yeah. school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes the salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. I What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, also you love the, don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that I yum. Love with that. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. hey, like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. basically But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love that's it. There you go. Thank you, Pod. Uh, we gotta gotta run. Yummy. We gotta run, but all of these dishes are gonna be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. with today food and one of our very favorite guests our pal Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's hey, an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216 and we at can't least. forget about his hit show 
Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight where two chefs go head to head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby, Bobby. thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are, yeah, we what are we cooking, honey? So we're making, uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's gonna be rigatoni. It's gonna be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rob, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm gonna start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're going to add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of the one of the most classic Italian American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a cake sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do we'll to it? What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce, so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. And I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just gonna we're gonna cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm gonna add some fontina cheese to it. Yum! And this is all gonna go into a casserole dish. And mm. I love cooking things. I, you know, I call it oven to table, where you where you you know you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven proof dish like mm. this one. So Bobby, you did, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's gonna be cooking longer in the oven? Yes, that's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, how do you cooking? keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there, it's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, and that's actually a good thing. It's like you know, like when you have the lasagna and the and and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. around the side. What do you always want that part of it? You get you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for I don't know about 15 to 20 minutes. Because don't forget the pasta is already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to oh. broil. Mm -hmm. yourself and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your your pasta, and you can see this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh, I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Over here. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Man, make it make about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done, uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, Jeez. which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know. Does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> You guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Oh, oh. actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christina, Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So if you get the sausage out of here, she's all good.
There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there as well. <laughs> well, he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. Okay. Then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, yeah. so she's yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. All right. Bye. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. back with today food and this morning we're going to put a healthier twist on a classic comfort dish that's right the one and only Gianna De Laurentiis joining us this morning ahead of the premiere of her new food network show simply Gianna she's going to cook up some of her favorite light and flavorful flavorful recipes on the show she's going to do it for us this morning as well always good to see you Gianna good morning hey, get out. Hi guys. good morning <laughs> let's really quickly though how are you and Jade doing we noticed on Instagram that, that you two were social distancing. All, all is okay now? We were, yes, yes, all is okay now. Jane had COVID and I was trying to avoid COVID. Listen, but, you know, yeah. Good plan. A lot of people can relate to that. I feel like I should have just let it go. Yeah. But yes, yeah. we're all set. We're all better now. Good. Well, we're glad we're doing well. We know, listen, nothing can stop you from, from cooking. Uh, and with so many of us at home, Never. we need your help. What are your thoughts on, let's do tonight's dinner. What's on the menu? <sighs> So chicken mayonnaise is um, uh, for dinner tonight. So I think most people know what chicken mayonnaise is, but basically chicken cutlets, count it thin, or you can buy chicken cutlets at the store, and I'm lightening them up. The whole idea of Simply Jada that airs this Sunday is that I'm basically all the recipes are inspired by my cookbook that came out mm, about a year ago, I Eat Better, Feel Better. So it's about eating better and not skipping on flavor. So we're taking the chicken, we seasoned it with salt and pepper, we're putting it in um, brown rice flour, which makes this dish gluten-free and really lightens it up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So you dredge in a little bit of brown rice flour, then a little bit of beaten egg, and you season all of the ingredients, the mm -hmm. flour, the egg, with a little bit of salt, and panko breadcrumbs, but we're going to use gluten-free breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. They give it a nice, crispy sort of crust on the chicken, but they also make it gluten-free for everybody. So it's a little easier on your tummy. You so know? you're kind of double so dredging it's a great way to eat. I'm dredging it, yes, mm. in a little bit of the breadcrumb mixture. And then what we do is we come over here to the pan, and I've already got one now sort of cooking away. I put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and you can use avocado oil, safflower oil. Um, the olive oil just gives it a nice golden crust, as you can see. 
And we just cook this in here for about a couple of minutes. Yum. We get this nice golden crust. And then I love to serve it with a little bit of arugula on top and um, just some fresh lemon right over it. And that's basically dinner. And it Yum. makes it really satisfying without skipping on flavor, but really good and crazy. And I have to tell you, it's pretty simple. You know, sometimes we get these recipes where, you know, I want to do it, but there's a lot involved. This is something that everybody can do. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, you could even make it earlier in the day and pop it in the oven at about 250, 200, warm up the chicken. You can make a sandwich out of it, or you could just reheat it and eat it for dinner. I was so going to say, for leftovers, with leftovers, Jada, that thing looks like it would be a fantastic mm -hmm. on, a, on a hoagie or something like that with a little tomato sauce. <laughs> Yes, and I will be, for sure. I that'll kind of that lighten runs, it up. That runs counter. Wouldn't that lighten it up? I mean, that actually lighten it up, Al, but okay. Runs counter to what she's trying to do here. All right. Jenna, really quick, how long on each side did you cook that? Um, I cooked it about four minutes on each side, but it kind of depends on how thin your cutlet is. I pounded mm -hmm. my chicken breast because I couldn't find any cutlets yesterday. But um, if they're really, really thin, it only takes like two, three minutes on each side. So it's very, very, very fast dinner that is really quite scrumptious. Because who doesn't like fried chicken? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But a lightened up version. Hey, Jada, Jada, what would you serve with that the, mm. uh, out of the cookbook uh, that's a little lighter that you normally wouldn't uh, have lighter? You mean um, alongside it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you could do a quinoa or a brown rice um, on the side of it. You could use, you know, like a tomato sauce. You could add tomato sauce to the brown rice or to the quinoa to add more flavor. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. So it would almost be like a chicken farm, but not really, but right. sort of on the same flavor profile. Um, so I like to do that with gluten-free pasta. Jane really likes it with gluten-free pasta. Yeah. I mean, she really likes it with regular pasta, but yeah. when we're kind of lighting things up, we use gluten-free. Gianna, right. thank you. Thank you so much, as always. Happy New Year. Hey, to see you guys. We're here in the studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, which that chicken we're here in the studio as well. <laughs> you can find the recipe on today.com slash food, by the way, and be sure to check out Giada's new show on Food Network, All Simply right. Giada. You know the saying, chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just we didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. No, I, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this, look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right in the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're gonna make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly, really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size, is, that makes sense. All yes. the same size. 
A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And the addition to making the soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're going to take our celery, our carrots. We're going to just cut them on the bias like this very simply. And it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same, same size. Really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there. Mm -hmm. And just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice... Probably this is quarter inch. I'm just guessing quarter inch. But everything's going to be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. So, hey, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than an onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, turns wow. really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the – my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So mm -hmm. we it's have good. a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four pound chicken, just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there, all right? And then, another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh. Tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're gonna put those wait, in. Wait, and wait, then, okay, sorry, you we, had us until we, you said the word gelatin. for a second, what does that gelatin. mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh -huh. mom's cooking or your grandmother cooked. <laughs> And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to, just a little acid. Now, we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're going to put it on a rack, let it cool, and then we're going to take all the delicious yes, chicken off. Peel it off. So, you take the bones out? Or you, yeah. I right? take the bones out, everything. Okay. And then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Right. And magic. A couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We, the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup. Our beautiful veg, uh, vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Margaret, gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Good shot, Margaret. Oh, yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful whole wheat ramen. I just oh, put you can that in buy the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Uh, there's tons of it. Tons of it. Oh. You can use regular. But I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and then better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. that. Yum. Oh, ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now I choose to top. put the chicken on oh, the just like nice. this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the we. stock. Yeah. And, yeah. And what happens? It gets overcooked. And now the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a fuss. Dress it up. Yes. We're going to put some some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. Oh, oh, ginger. Jeffrey, this is thank you. We got to roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, thank Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. Okay, we are 10 days into the new year, and if you're already finding it hard to eat healthier or you haven't even started yet, guess what? Here's your Monday motivation. It is never too late. Always okay, start on Monday. We can always count on Today Nutritionist and our pal, Joy Bauer, to whip up something healthy and delicious. Joy, a lot of people, we didn't get a real reset, so we're resetting today. So what do you have for us today? I am so crazy excited to show you how to make this meal. I think it's going to be on repeat in both of your homes, and it's super 
kid friendly. Okay. So this is a turkey bolognese. Mm. It's obviously it's healthified. It's packed with protein, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. But I'm telling you the best part. It is a one pot wonder, and I think you're going to be amazed how easy this thing comes together. Okay. And you've decided so, to swap beef for turkey. Is that because it's a little leaner? Story. That's what you're supposed to do. That's right. Yeah. So here, what this is a pound of lean ground turkey, and when you shop for it at the store, look for turkey that is between 90 and 94% lean, because it's still going to be flavorful and juicy. If you get up to the 99% lean, it's too dry. So between 90 mm, and 94%. 94. After this was already cooked, what I've done is I threw in, you can see here all the vegetables. I have diced celery, red bell pepper, onion, and carrots. And I saute it with the meat. Uh -huh. But because I want to save a little bit of time, because I'm going to nail this thing before we close the spot. Okay. I pre-sauteed all of the yummy vegetables, and now we basically have a nutrition party in this pot. Okay. We now take, this is a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Oh, wow. One cup of broth, whatever you have in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take another easy way out, and instead of dealing with separate seasonings, I have here just five teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So this adds mm, oregano mm -hmm. and basil and thyme. Yeah. And then stir this whole thing up. I'm going to put it on the stove. Let it cook for about 25 minutes covered. Can I ask, uncover it. Can I ask one question, Joy, show. just to be clear? Yeah. So the turkey was already cooked. And you, add, if you were just starting from scratch, you'd put in the raw turkey and all the veggies at together the at the same time and saute. No, I, I, I'm so glad you asked that. No, so first what I do is I, in stages, I cook the ground turkey first, By and itself. it takes about six minutes, right? And I'm just sort of chopping it up. When the ground turkey is cooked and there's no more pink, then I throw in the veggies. Oh. We're building, and it's another six to eight minutes. Okay. And then you you throw oh, in everything else, that. and look at this. That looks like a sloppy and joe. <laughs> Mm. So, you know, okay. it's interesting that you say that, Hoda, because I actually like to put it on toasted English muffins Ooh. or in soft, like, Portuguese buns. Oh, my goodness. So now I'm going to take this pasta. Now, yes, what is you this can pasta? Eat whole, yeah. This is a whole grain pasta. Yeah. And for people that are sensitive to cutting back on carbs, you can use zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, or you can also do spaghetti squash. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, I have over here some parm because you guys know everything's better with a little oh, bit of yes. parm. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. By Is the way, this amazing? I've seen some chickpea, like some other kind of flour pasta. Are those better for you? That's what this is, actually. Oh. So I said it was a whole grain, but if you opened up my cabinet, I have true whole grain, which is just 100% whole wheat. But I also have so many different brands of, like, chickpea or bean or lentil pasta. I would suggest people experiment around. It has a little bit more protein and it has a little bit more fiber. It really depends mm. on what you prefer in terms of your taste. One other thing I'm going to do as soon as we um, shut down the segment, yeah. I'm going to try to make a bolognese burrito. I'll yes. let you know how it works out. I'm going to put it in a wrap. Yes, with a yes. lot of cheese on it. We love a bolognese then... burrito. Yes. Joy, yes. Joy, yes. we miss you. We miss you. Um, it's good to see you, though. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Mm -hmm. It is one of the longest running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching the up and coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you so you? much. Well, it's so good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my. Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Oh, man. I'll, I'll be back crazy. then. I'll okay. be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You have your oh, hands I'm in your cooking, pocket. You want to do this? Oh, I okay. Love it's okay. chicken parm. So chicken cutlets. Okay. This is yep. this is classic. So um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, so, and so you set up a dredging station. You season every single um, 
Oh, each one of part them. of it? Okay, yes, exactly, because otherwise it's bland. So you go, so the so the flour <laughs> to the egg. Is that bad? No, no, you're doing no, great. You, no, get in there, you right? can tell that Willie cooks. He's, he, in, he's there. in there. Look, he's yeah, in it. And now what? Okay, and then, and, then the, and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, and oh. then you let that sit there That's for a second, a and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so... Are people laughing at my cooking? I, don't I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing Get about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make yeah, sure just it's your hands. Well, so <laughs> so every every culture has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have um, <laughs> I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so then we, so every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them, crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you, you just? Oh, you crush them with the potato I, and masher? I, and first, you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and it. then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, why not? bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella. Mm, look at that. And I just put it right on look top. Look now, at that. now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it. You put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this oven Magic. right here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top, and then see, it's it's a, it's a much cleaner so version. Yeah, a little bit of nice. fresh basil cool. and a whole bunch of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Okay. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of just olive, olive oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Let's sneak in here, Bob. Get in there. Let me Get try. In there. Get oh, in there. Bob. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm. So good. Yeah, Bob. I mean, see, so here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get wow. obviously the acidity mm. and the sweetness of the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken. Mm. And of course, that fresh mozzarella is. is it feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and, and you and I sort of share that. That love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is a, to me, this is like a, this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, uh, what? Bobby Flay is in one Let, delicious Christmas. Let me tell you wait, something. Come on. So I understand. I, yes, the come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? Who do you play yourself? This is, I play, I play Tom Kingsley, who is, is a, a, a food critic. Yeah, just, uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said, don't do it, but they said, please do it, so here it is. Viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties all Everyone's over the place about for it. One Delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you really feel about a food critic, though? I love food life. critics. Okay. Great. Yes, we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs>
called Go To Dinner. And she's showing us how to make one of these fabulous recipes right now. The good thing about these recipes, Ina, is they're easy. You could do it quickly. And everything's in one and pot. Everything's very in one often. Pot. Yeah. All one right. thing about you, though, mm -hmm. you're you are precise. Yeah. Like you seem so chill. Yes. And you're not like that's why your books everybody loves them because you've easy. done the testing. Yes. Okay. But not only over and over and over again, but I've given the recipe to somebody on my staff and watched them make it. Okay. So I see what somebody's going to do with the recipe, and they're, they, they're like, should I cut it straight across or chop it? At Oh, so and that's I'm like, so oh, smart. So Let me add that. Details. You add that ah. detail to it okay, so okay. that I know. So okay. should I put so this large making, chicken in the pot? We're making chicken um, in a pot with orzo. Okay. So it's all in one pot. So the first thing I want to do is brown the chicken. So okay. in order to brown a chicken, you just want to make sure it's really dry. Oh, Otherwise dry it. it steams. Okay. Uh -huh. Exactly. So let's, Oh, it really needs a Yeah, see how when towel. it's wet, it well, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Okay. 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 And then we can put put it in the pot. Okay. And you want it nice and brown because that, that caramelization really makes a difference. Oh. Whoa! Sorry, did I burn you? No. I burned myself. I'm sorry. I did burn but you. You know what I love? The first thing you said was, did I burn you even though you were on fire? We're, we're okay. Okay. Everybody's no fire going. alarms. I burned a national treasure. <laughs> So uh, this is going to brown, and then I'll turn it over and later. Okay. But okay. Are, are these leeks? These are leeks, and the thing That's about leeks, leak. leeks it's, I know. Good. First thing with leeks, you don't want to take the green part off because they're they're kind of tough. So just like that. Okay. And then you want to make sure that they're really, really clean because they grow in dirt. Oh. So you don't want to let them get too. Um, you want to make sure they're really clean. Okay. So what you do is chop them up like this. Kind of fine. And then you know the, um, you do a lot and put them in water. And just let the sand come out of it. Oh, and then, that's what you're doing. And then yeah. you take them out. I like how you and clean you, everything. And you, yeah, you want to make you sure you have food, to, right? Food's all good. Do you and know the leeks are them. diuretic? They are amazing. Oh. That, yes, <laughs> good to know. No, anyone who's trying to lose weight always eats leek oh, soup. I had no Not idea. Kidding. Try it. Is that that's, is that that's that's still a thing or yes. is that a 70s so fat? Forget no. the chicken. Forget now. the carrots. Just eat leeks. Okay, make soup. Okay, okay. So leeks are delicious, though. We saute carrots and fennel and celery okay. and the leeks all in a pot like mm -hmm. this and then, then we're what? gonna take that the chicken that so we browned. So you just browned it, right? Just That's browned all. it. Okay. All I did was brown it. Didn't cook it. Just because it, it looks yeah. better and it's and yeah. it's going to taste better. Put that brown Play chicken beautiful. right back in. It already in. smells amazing. So and take then this. We, first we put in um, saffron. Saffron. Well, saffron. I didn't realize that's what saffron crocuses. looks like. Doesn't that, oh. that smell fabulous? That's mm. what it looks like. And it's expensive because it is the stamens of crocuses. What is a crocus? A crocus is a flower. Oh. A little flower. Did Chicken you know that? sock goes in. Did you stamen of a crocus? <laughs> I didn't you, want to you'd know, that. you'd know a crocus if you saw one. Okay. okay. So if you, you met pour, one, right? Pour so that you pour on. That's just right. chicken stock. And then we're going to put water on. That whole water pot? Uh, exactly. Okay. So this is it's going to cook in this pot. Yeah. And then we need salt and pepper. This is a great okay. kind of thick of salt. Day soup. Okay. You put it's, a lot well, it's in, actually right? going to end up being soup and orzo. So the orzo is going to absorb okay. all the all liquid. Of that. So this. Okay, now we have one other thing to What's flavor this? it. It's an herb bundle. So I've okay. got thyme, a parsley. Of herbs. And you tie it. And, and you could put it in, but then you'd have to fish it all out. So you tie so it. I tie it. Just I tie, tie it with a string. Oh, this so is it flavors so it, smart. and then you can take the whole thing out before you have serve you it. Have you ever made an herb bundle, Hoda? Is this <laughs> no, I'm herb? so excited. H Hoda's made an herb bundle well, now. Oh my gosh. Right? The whole so thing that in. whole thing goes right in. And that in. just kind of flavors That's it. it. Now this goes in the oven. Top, oh, top on it or okay. not? Um, it goes in the oven with a lid. With a lid, okay. For um, at 350 degrees. Okay. And it's going to And then this is for about an hour and 15 minutes. And then when this comes out, yeah, I put the orzo. Well, you in. Is the orzo take is the orzo, orzo like a rice, and right? Just, uh -huh. It's pasta actually, but oh. it looks like rice. Mm. And you just put the lid on. And do you cook it for again? twenty minutes? No, and it just sits. Wait, you don't put it back in the oven? Don't put it back in the oven. Don't need to cook it. Can I sneak mm -hmm. over here? Come over here. What you end up with? And you end up with mm. with soup and orzo, and it's it's not soup. It's dinner. And the oh chicken, my God. and you put the is chicken dinner. apart. Mm -hmm. Wait, does Jeffrey like this recipe? He loves it. <laughs> Anything that has to do with chicken soup, he loves. You know what else oh is in your book God. that we just what? have to mention? It's the biscuits. And my girl, biscuits mm -hmm. have Dip to go it. with it. Oh God. Right? The biscuits. Good idea. Cheddar biscuits. They're pretty good, aren't they? They are the oh best God. biscuit I've ever had. The best one. audience in the world. Oh my God. <laughs> we love you so much, you guys. And you can get this recipe at today.com/food. Oh my God. And check out Ina's new book. I bet a lot of people will go to dinners. It's a great holiday. They gift as well at today.com slash book.
Brooks. I know we love you. Time for one of our favorite Aussies, Chef Curtis Stone. The Michelin starred chef is taking a break from his two Los Angeles restaurants, Maude and Gwen, to whip us a California inspired dish. We miss you, Curtis. I, know, Curtis. I know. It's so good to be back you're, in the city. You're a very busy, busy man. You're How are the restaurants? So good. Back? We are back. And you know, like it's been a tumultuous couple of couple of years, as we all know. There's no point complaining about it. You just got to yeah. get on with it. We've totally. kept our team get together, which is important. Um, and, uh, and we're very happy and to the be back. Awesome. Good. Kids so good. good. Okay. So good. What are the ages of your kids now? Hudson's 11. Yes. And Emerson, my cheeky one, he's just turned eight. Eight. 11 and eight? Yeah. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. I remember when they were well, born. Well, turns 11 in a, in a week. Okay. 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 So I like chicken thighs. I'm glad that's what we're doing. Mm. Yes. That's so, another thing we could debate on. Oh, yeah. Mm. I like a, a leg. Mm. Yes. Uh, le the leg is amazing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, especially when it's um, on the bone. So leave the skin on. Okay. I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. Yeah. One important thing to do with chicken is sit it on a tray and just dry it out for a little bit. Don't cook it wet because mm -hmm. that's when it'll spit and hiss at you. Oh. And we don't like spitting don't and hissing. Okay. You so you let cook it, it with dry. the bone up in there. Oh yeah, leave the bone in because that gives you beautiful flavour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're doing with our thighs is just seasoning them both sides, a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to cook it in a medium heat. You can see it's not too mm -hmm. savage, and then you let it sort of come up to, to Look come up. Look how beautiful and, and crispy it looks. Right. And then what you do once you've got that golden brown is you add full. Well, I'll cut them in half, but don't you don't need to chop Are them down. Are those shallots? Shallots, exactly. So these the shallots. chicken's not cooked through, is it? It's just cooked on the top. Is it cooked? You, you cook right it both here? ways, and then what you do once you sort of get the shallots in there and get a little bit shallots. of color shallots. is you transfer it to ah, the to the pan, dish, okay. right? So you come over here and on this. Um, Beautiful big purple sheet tray that they found for you How guys. How cute is that? Yeah, today. it matches. We've got purple shallots working. <laughs> Do right? we, are they shallots or are they shallots? Well, it depends what part of the world you're oh, okay. from. So in Australia, they're shallots. We call them shallots, okay. but I'll say shallots. And you call these a grapes? They're grapes. <laughs> <laughs> so throw the grapes in two. And what you do, you, you cook them on the vine. So this is a very oh, simple this recipe. this is gorgeous. And throw the herbs over the top. I like this. I'll uh -huh. just stand back here, Jenna, and let you, you do all question. the work. Do you like apple picking? I love it. Oh. Yeah, okay. why? Thank you. Now, just, her, her, just her argument is dead. She does not like it. She's against it. <laughs> You're an anti-apple. How can you be against apple picking? I don't know. Exactly. Apple picking is fabulous. Okay. Uh, we go every year, actually, up near Palm well, Springs with my kids. Nice. They love it. Okay. Um, so, in here, I have some white wine. Okay. A little bit of thyme uh -huh. and a little bit of chicken stock, and you reduce it down. Right, okay. this is the sauce we're making now. Mm -hmm. So that's going to bubble and boil. What you do when you reduce something is you go from, let's say, a cup of liquid to a quarter cup of liquid, okay. but you keep a cup of flavour. So okay. you're intensifying the cool. flavour, and that's what's happened here. Oh, yeah. what's what about adding right? the most important ingredient? Exactly, butter. little yes. butter. <laughs> <laughs> so the butter's to thicken, but also to flavour. So you take it off the heat. So wait, what you is this you're it? making right now? This is, well, this it's is a sauce. sauce. It's basically an emulsion of wine, chicken stock and that mm -hmm. flavor of thyme. Mm -hmm. You whisk it, it's called Monte a Beurre. You're mm -hmm. thickening with butter under yes. in the French. Uh, mm -hmm. And while we let that melt. Mm -hmm. I just tasted a, a baked grape. They're Come kind on. of like a raisin. Uh, they are, they get yeah. a little more you intense try one? in flavor. I do. Get it, Hoda. Thank you. And so then the idea here is you've got your grapes, those little crispy Ooh. herbs. Um, You're right. You stick it all on the plate right? like this. They do taste like raisins. They're they a raisin. Do, little raisiny. I'm oh, sorry. I and didn't then of course that sauce okay. that we've whisked together okay. that just gets drizzled over the top. You okay. can finish it with okay. a little salt and pepper. Mm. Here I have it's burrata. Really beautiful. We love mm. burrata so much. Isn't it so mm. good? So it's mozzarella with a little mm. stretchy towel. Look at that. How I just beautiful snip it. Is that? Look at that. Right. Mm. So then it'll just start to ooze. Mm. All right. So this one's already started. Oh my God. And you put it with this beautiful. Beautiful French bread, which we love. Isn't that gorgeous? A little uh -huh. bit of baguette. Crunchy baguette. Don't and you? it's a very simple mm -hmm. dinner. It's a roast. It's a take on roast mm -hmm. chicken, but mm. very, very easy. By the way, very flavorful and delicious. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel like I'm going to make this. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis, so we nice love you, you for this recipe. <coughs> do you just say I won't? <laughs> <laughs> but you you're, want to. You do really no, want to. You're probably right. I probably won't. But it looks good. Okay, for this recipe, head to today.com slash food.
anytime a recipe gets passed down from generation to generation, you know it's got to be real good. And as we take aim to make your life easier this week, we are going to share that specific recipe with you. Okay, it is a roasted chicken and Come rice on. dish. It's been passed down from a mother to her son, and that son just happens to be <laughs> a Michelin starred chef. That chef is at his restaurant, Veranda, right here in New York City, Chef George Mendez. Hey, George. George. Hi. How Good are to see you? you again. We're so happy Live to see you. Live from Veranda. I love that. Oh my God, I know, sorry. Veranda's close to my neighborhood. I gotta come visit. Yeah, definitely. Get in here. Okay, Let, let's talk about let's talk about your mom's recipe, okay? Because a recipe oh. has to be this good to be passed down. What is it about this specific one? It's these are flavors that I grew up with in my childhood. My mother used to cook rice dishes for my sister and my dad a number of times a week. Sometimes it was chicken. Sometimes it was rabbit. Sometimes it was a tomato rice. So. That cooking has had an enormous impact in my career. So, you know, she spent time with the kitchen with me uh, at many of my restaurants here at, at Veranda. Um, and she's an enormous inspiration for everything that I cook with and create um, very, really rustic childhood home style flavors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think chicken and rice sounds like the mm -hmm. perfect dish for us mm -hmm. to cook tonight. So let's get started. Yeah. Tell us what yeah. we need to cook. So so I am on the uh, over medium heat, I have a cast iron skillet, oven proof, olive oil, onions, garlic, mm. right? A pinch of salt right away to get things started. Salt starts to release the moisture, starts to develop that base of flavor. Mm. And then I'm gonna get paprika going in there and some sweet peppers. Great from the farmer's market right now, this time of the year. Please visit your local farmer's market. More olive oil. I'm sure my mom right now is saying, add more olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You can also add like a pinch of chili flakes as well. No rules here. Mm -hmm. Hey, George, are you a, are you that a, nice are you aroma. A, are you, you a dark meat guy home. or are you a dark meat guy or a light meat guy? I like both. Yeah. I like the combination of both. Okay. When it comes to Thanksgiving, though, dark meat for sure. Okay. How about you guys? Uh, I like, well, we we differ on this. I like dark. Oh, likes dark. I like light. Yeah. Okay, so once Good. you do all that, do we add the chicken? What's the next step? Next step is we're going to add the rice. Oh. Here. So that's and it's uncooked. a bomba or a colostra rice. It's a very short grain rice. Really important because it absorbs a lot of the flavors of the chicken broth. Yum. Is that uncooked and the rice or is that cooked rice? You this in? this is uncooked. This is uncooked. Oh. And it doesn't need that long to cook. It's going to need about 20 minutes in the oven, but of course I have one ready for you to show you. Okay. okay. And then at this point, I'm going to add the chicken meat. So the chicken meat I have right here that's pretty done. This was cone feed and olive oil really slowly for about 40 minutes. It's skinless, bone in uh, thigh. Uh, and then we take the meat off of the bone and pull it. Just like if you're doing pulled pork, you're doing pulled chicken. And that's in here right now. If we buy, you know, if, if we maybe don't have as much time, do you just buy a rotisserie chicken and, yeah. and cut it shred out. it, shred it? Only, only if you don't have enough time. But okay. with some he organization and a little bit of patience, you can you can do this at home. I okay. promise you. Okay. okay. Promise you. Promise right. you. What's the next step? Chorizo. Mm-hmm. Those in there. All right. And then I'm gonna add. So it's about one cup of rice, and I'm adding about one and a half cups of broth. I'm using a roasted chicken broth. You can also use a vegetable stock. If you don't have that, you can use water. Okay. Just make sure it's nicely seasoned. Yeah, look And at that, that goes in carefully like so. Okay. So this is, this is a one-pot dish. It's That's almost a like a paella. Dish. Yeah. That's right. The only difference is this just goes in the oven. Paellas cook on the stove top for the most part and traditionally over a live fire. Okay. So do we pop but, that baby in the oven now? That's right. So at this point, I got a 400 degree oven mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go right off behind me. Good job okay. staying center. Nice. And there you go. How long does that cook? That's gonna cook about eight, plus or 20 minutes, I'm sorry. 20 minutes. Um, there are, we are have options there at the restaurant where we pre-cook it just for speed. Um, at home, you can do the same thing. You can have par cooked rice. Um, so that you can speed up the process as long as you have the chicken. The beauty behind this is it's a chicken confit. It's, it's a traditionally um, done with duck, 
cooked as well. Uh -huh. And you can hold this in your fridge up to a week. Wow. So this whole step with your your chicken thigh, you need to do ahead, right? You can you can preserve it in your fridge. George, will and then you if you really want to. Sorry, I didn't Go mean ahead. to interrupt you, but will you show us that final That's delicious okay. rice yeah. dish? How do you serve it up? What else do you, do you add anything else to it? Yeah, so I have sliced chicken breast that's also yeah. cooked very similar to the chicken thigh. That's poached in olive oil with thyme and bay leaf. Uh -huh. And then once the oven comes, the uh, oven is, the time is done, the rice comes out of the oven, I slice wow. the chicken breast over the top. All right. And here you go. That looks, looks delicious. Gorgeous. George, thank you thank so you, George. much for this recipe. Head you to today.com slash food. joined by one of our all-time favorite chefs, today a contributor, Elizabeth Haskell. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's got some good news to share. A new cookbook. It's called Come On Over, Southern Delicious. For every day and every occasion, it comes out in a few months. It's now available for pre-order. And this morning, Elizabeth is showing us how to make a couple of delicious recipes, really easy ones from her book. Girl, how does book launch day feel? How you feeling? Oh, my God, I'm so <laughs> I mean, I seriously might spontaneously combust right here on this set. You know, it's been it's been a hard year, and it's um, it's so good to have something to look forward to, something to get excited about. And we are going to inspire you with this book to celebrate every day. Um, I mean, like this chicken divan casserole and caramel brownies, that's from our weekdays chapter. Mm. So look, when those kids come down for breakfast, and they look at you with that face and they say, you know, what's for supper? You know, like <laughs> breakfast wasn't enough. Then you can say, oh, honey, chicken divan and caramel brownies. And I mean, the world's going to be happy. I mean, it, seriously, it's going to be Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, it's, it's, it's happening. Oh, my gosh, it's, it's finally my dreams are coming. Tuesday's really so, catching on. So what are we making for Tuesday absolutely. dinner? So, okay, so here we go. We have the chicken divan casserole. It is so easy. I have some um, cooked chicken and broccoli that's already in mm. here. We're gonna add a um, cream of mushroom soup. And that can be a, any can of cream of is gonna be just fine. Whether you've got cream of chicken, cream of celery, it doesn't really matter. We have a little bit of half and half. That was sour mm. cream. Wow. Cheddar cheese, people. Mm. Gotta have some cheese if we're making a good casserole. And now we have all of our spices. So we've got a um, little bit of seasoned salt, a little bit of onion powder, some pepper, Okay, and a little bit of garlic powder, and then we've got a little salt. And Mama was real funny. She loved to be exotic in the Mississippi Delta, so she would add curry powder to everything. I think curry it just powder. made her feel real fancy. <laughs> you, can add, you can add curry powder to this or not. It's completely up to you. We're going to mix this all up, and then we're going to pour it into our 9 by 13 casserole. Now, I serve this over um, my good friend Mike Wagner's Two Brooks Farm rice. And then look, we're mm. going to pull out our good china. It's Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if we don't start using these things that we love, yes. I mean, right. you're missing. There are so many more Tuesdays in a year than there are New Year's Eves. And honey, we're just going to pull it out and enjoy it. Exactly. I mean, what in the hell are we waiting on? <laughs> what are we waiting on? What you, how about the dessert, Seriously. Elizabeth? What, now, what are we... this, is, this is the best. So, 
a lot of times we're running short on time during the week. I'm going to give you the easiest, fastest recipe you've ever seen. Um, we're going to use a store-bought cake mix, oh. and we um, use German chocolate cake mix. I've already made that with um, evaporated milk, and what you do is mix the melted butter. Cook off half of it, okay? So just half. You're going to put that in the bottom, and then we're going to top it with chocolate chips. We add our caramel. Mm. And then once that's done, you smooth that out. And then you come back over with the rest of that topping that we had put in the fridge. And you just thin it out. It's almost like you're going to make a tapestry to cover the entire thing. This is going to go back in the oven on 350 degrees. And, honey, you have got a dessert that is Can going to Can I ask one make. question? Elizabeth, it looks yummy. Yeah, so do you Look actually... At that. Wait, Look do you, at that. Look at those It looks crazy. Do you mix the cake mix like you're making a cake the way that they tell you? No, you don't. So it's just the cake mix, just, the just melted butter oh. and evaporated milk. Oh. And then you mix that up. So that's where we're taking a shortcut. And I'm not embarrassed to say it because I want your kids to have dessert tonight. And um, and this is a way that you can do that. So this book has literally it has recipes mm -hmm. for celebrating everything. So whether it's a beach day, I've even got a chapter on diet days. Where are we going to make that fun? That's probably a <laughs> short chapter. Got a cheat day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got cheat days. We have beach days, party days, Delta days. Oh, um, so Love please it. go ahead. Do you have Fat Tuesday? <laughs> yes, Fat Tuesday. Absolutely. That's going to be in the next book. All right. But you know, with um, I've got three kids. Uh -huh. Two of them are in college, and I've got one going on the way. And they really like expensive shoes, and we got to sell this book. Elizabeth, it comes out May fourth. So look, Mama Melville. I know she wants a copy. <laughs> <laughs> this will be right before Mama's Day. So, Craig, get on that, get yeah, on that phone I, as soon as this yes, segment's over and let's get that He's on order. it. Yes, All right, you can pre-order that copy of Come On Over. Just go to edtoday.com slash shop. And to get your hands on those recipes, those two at least, check out today.com slash food. Elizabeth, we love you. Yeah, Good luck you. in the book. Well, honey, I, I cannot thank you all enough. Cheers. 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 Come, Come on. on over. <laughs> Today Show's newest fan. This is the Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? This morning in Today Food, we got this pasta dish. It is simple, yet so sophisticated, your, your family is going to be amazed. Alfred Portali is a James Beard award-winning chef, restaurateur, and cookbook author. Also the culinary director of Sartiano's, a modern Italian restaurant right here in New York City, and the executive chef of Portale. Chef, good to see you. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. I love yes. you. This is about as simple as it gets, but I, I've been so looking forward to tasting this. Yeah, it's a very, very simple dish, but very versatile. Okay. Um, uh, but we start with emulsifying a little bit of butter. I've got a bit of heavy cream in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Cream and butter so far, yeah. check. And we I wanna, know. We want to whisk, mm -hmm. whisk this in. Is there a temperature that's too high for you know, cream? The, the, it should be medium high heat. Okay. Um, you want to just keep keep it moving. Uh, once you emulsify the butter, mm -hmm. then we add. This is a mixture of lemon juice mm. and. Lemon zest. That doesn't make it curdle or no, anything? No, 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 no. Hmm. Lemon juice so and lemon really zest. Really quite simple. So okay. okay. Once that's working, mm -hmm. we drop the pasta. I'm using fresh pasta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that cooks faster than the, 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 the dried box? Yeah, about 90 seconds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have some salted, boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. We cook that. Okay. Um, I have some over here that looks about done. Okay. So this is, it's a very simple dish. I think mm -hmm. a simple but Rather but yummy. Yeah. elegant, simple, yeah. and easy and versatile. Yeah. Um, at Sartiano's, we we serve this dish with a cetra caviar. Oh, so, okay. So Let's shake it up so a little bit. So you could do like seafood with that, like shrimp or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I like to do it with mm. smoked fish. It's great. Uh -huh. salmon, you, like, shrimp, bacon lobster, on top? Mm -hmm. or, or even vegetables. Or like they'll into some bacon. Some bacon in there. Mm. Bacon. All right. Then we're, <laughs> we're talking. Guanchi, my language, my language. So now you're just adding a little uh, Parmesan, Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. chives, 
I'm trying it. And if it gets too thick, do we, would you add a little pasta mm. water to that? or Exactly, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's it. Oh. You and know that's what? It. That's literally that's a five-minute dinner. You guys have to try this. That fresh pasta, first like. of all, priceless. Wait, I missed this. You, what did we put in there? Uh, chives. Oh, chives. Oh, my gosh. All right. Are you and kidding there me? There we have it. All right, now I have to try it. And it's so simple. Wow. Oh, really bright flavor. Oh my flavors. Gosh. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Oh. Yummy. Is there a secret? Why is this so yummy? <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. That is Thank delicious. So delicious. Chef Thank Alfred Portelli. And the best Thank dinner you. I think Thank we've you. ever I know. Made. I want people to try it so they can see why we're like. Go to today.com oh slash food. Get this oh recipe. Oh Make gosh. this tonight. Yeah. Third hour of today. We'll be right back. And you're good to go. Yum. People will kiss you full on the lips for this. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Look who's in our kitchen this morning, home chef and cookbook author, Patel Patel. Pala. Pala. Hold on. Hold on. Palak Patel. Palak Patel. You got it. Yeah, Palak is whipping Thank up you. a delicious recipe from her debut cookbook, The Chutney Life, 100 easy-to-make Indian-inspired recipes. Palak, welcome. Thank you. Thank we're you so for having me. We're so happy that you're I'm here. I'm so excited and to be we're here. we're very excited we, to we try We feel like this, this is a great weeknight kit. Yeah. Such a great weeknight meal, and it's really fall forward. Okay. You know, spaghetti squash is super great for fall, so I'm excited. Okay. Okay, I'll talk so to tell us. us what we should do. All right, so we've got our spaghetti squash here. I've mm -hmm. already sliced this in half, and we're just going to drizzle this with a little bit of oil okay. and salt and pepper, and then this gets roasted. So you just scraped it out, no, yeah. no big deal, that was it. Okay. All the seeds and mm -hmm. all the kind okay. of middle flesh, so super quick. And then salt and olive oil. Okay. Salt really well, because mm -hmm. that's going to add a lot of that flavor in there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our pepper, mm -hmm. and you can be as generous as you like with this. Cool. And then we're going to roast this cut side down. That's going to help ah, the inside of this flesh cut cook. Side down. Okay. Plus, you're going to get these golden caramel edges, and that's okay. where you get a lot of flavor. How, How long? long do you so roast that, that for? for? In the oven, 375 for about 45 to 50 minutes okay. until it's really nice and golden. Okay. okay. Now. While that cooks, we're going to make our sauce. So I've got some oil here, and mm -hmm. this is where we add a lot of great flavor. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we've got cumin seeds. These are going to start to kind of sizzle mm -hmm. and crackle in the hot oil. And then adding your spices to the oil is just a great way to add that what depth and that? flavor. These are mustard seeds. Oh, oh mustard it's very, seeds. It's just they're, they're crunchy. They mm -hmm. have this kind of little bit of zing to them. And so we're going to cook these, okay. and they're going to get really nice mm -hmm. and toasty. How long you cook them for about 10 minutes? I'd say about 10 minutes, and you want to kind of hear them crackle and pop, and that's okay. when you know, all right, it's going to okay. it's ready. ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our aromatics. So we've mm. got garlic, ginger, green chilies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't like spice, you could always leave these out. And we've got some diced red onion. So all of this, okay. we can oh, in there. You yeah, that? you okay. can do that. And, um, I'll do this. I will, okay. yeah, so I'll if you're making it for kids, you leave out the green chilies probably? You can leave out the green chilies, but the garlic and ginger is not going to add kick. It's just no. going to add flavor. Yeah. So I make this for my kids all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll add a little extra butter and cheese for my yeah. children. So, and then you can add whatever veggies you like as well. So this is really versatile. Okay. If you want to add meat, you could add mm. meat. Smell that, we smell add that these already. spices? Yes. That already. And the, so I've got tandoori masala, garam masala, and cumin. So it's just mm -hmm. really warm and mm. yummy. Spices, and some tomato paste. Tomato paste. This is going to add a beautiful color along with just like a really great buttery tomato mm -hmm. sauce. We're going to cook this down until it's really nice so and it looks like golden. What we have Which yeah. is over here. So then we get here and the flavors are going to develop. Those spices have a mm -hmm. chance to kind of blend together. To this, we're going to add some butter yeah. um, because that's just going to add that richness mm -hmm. and creaminess to the sauce. And then we have a little bit of chicken broth. This is going to help thin the sauce out a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And then to that, a little bit of good old cream. Cool. Um, and again, cozy, mm -hmm. really great fall meal. This is the fun part right here. So this is your yes. cooked squash. Cooked yes. squash. So and this now is what you're it gonna... looks like. It's going to be golden. You scoop it out. You've got strands. And this is what you end up with with the sauce. And you don't even need to do anything just Super scoop easy. it out. You, you just scoop it up, and it's going to turn into these kind of like spaghetti strands, yeah. as you see. Oh, it's They're really super easy. It's, you know, nature, Mother Nature's version of and it's kind of a, a way to get mm. veggies, but it's like a noodle. Yeah, oh my gosh! It's like a noodle, and so you don't miss the pasta. Is that so yummy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, it's that a great is meal for super, fall. super mm -hmm. yummy. Thank you. I'm glad thank you enjoyed you it. Thank you so much, Pollock. That you. is delicious. All right. Thank you. Well, those recipes and more go to today.com/food. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yummy.
it's Make Ahead Monday, and we're always trying to find ways to just switch things up a little bit. So this morning, we have a meatless twist on two classics. Joining us to help our healthy lifestyle influencers and hosts of the Facebook show, Keeping Up with Coco and Lala. And it is Coco and Lala with us this right. morning. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> so before we get started, I just have to ask, how'd you decide to make vegan and vegetarian meals together? Well, I'm vegan and I'm vegetarian. And so we just came together and created a dynamic duo. Makes well, pro tell me this is good. So we're going to do this. Let's jump in. You're starting with a cauliflower bolognese sauce. Lala, why is cauliflower a good substitute for meat with this? Because it, it honestly, it tastes just like meat when you have it with the, the spaghetti sauce or and the taco seasoning, and the taco seasoning mm. which we thought of this for you guys because we know you guys are busy moms. Al's doing this healthy eating type mm -hmm. thing. So this is a great substitute and the kids love it. Coco has five kids. Her kids love this. Okay. And it's simple. So and let's get cooking. Yeah. Let's get cooking. Let's what do we? You start okay. off, and you mentioned taco seasoning, which I'm a big fan of the taco seasoning. <laughs> yes, good. So you want to start by ricing some cauliflower, and you can always buy this pre-riced as well. So once it's riced, all you need to do is get your saucepan, add in some garlic and some fresh onion, and sauté this for about uh, five minutes. You add in your cauliflower, and you let that simmer and sauté for about. 10 minutes and that's it um once that's done you add in your taco seasoning i'm gonna try this this is so amazing you guys we literally call this uh, best ever because yes. my daughter malia who was seven at the time well i kind of tested this recipe on my family mm -hmm. without telling them mm -hmm. and she tasted it and she's like this is the best food ever <laughs> <laughs> so now we call this best, best ever ever so after your taco season is in, then you add in your pasta sauce. Okay. Just your and favorite just pasta like sauce? That, yes, your favorite pasta sauce. How do you not make it just too like soggy? That, Sometimes with the cauliflower rice, it gets mushy. Look at you knowing. Well, that, because I like cauliflower rice. But it, <laughs> so you want to make sure that your pan is hot and you have a little bit of oil and you, you definitely oh. want it to be okay. so that it's not too mushy. That's yeah. why you only want to leave it on for about 10 minutes, you guys, because, yep. yeah, you're right. You don't want it mushy. No, we yeah. don't want it mushy. Okay. And then and you just put this like over that, it's done. any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. And if you really want to healthen it up, you can use um, zucchini noodles. Oh, or oh. Yep. Okay. And, and then so you would take it out the fridge the next day. You have some extra. Huh? And then what you want to do is add your vegan barbecue sauce mm -hmm. to your cauliflower. Already have it pre-seasoned from yesterday. And you want to heat it up. You're going to add it to a, a bun. A toasted bun. Yeah, yes. add a little bun. bit of green peppers if you like. Mm. And on top, we're going to, now I don't know how to say this right, so I think it's gardenera, <laughs> but I say Italian relish. Sure. <laughs> Ooh, a little bit give of it a little Italian kick. Relish. And yes, a nice give kick. it a little kick. Yeah. And TV magic, it's done. <laughs> Very oh. good. Or a little vegan cheese. And there's on no there? meat in anything. And you can have vegan cheese too if you want. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's really No terrific. meat. No oh. meat. It's quick. It's easy. Anybody can do it. Everybody probably has taco seasoning in there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, there you go. We'll keep you posted. I'm going to try it. All right, we're going to try That's that. Fantastic. Yeah. Coco and Lala, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. If you're looking for a way to get everybody together this weekend for dinner, tell them you're making the ultimate Italian family meal. Of course, we're talking about spaghetti uh, meatballs. And you can't get any more classic than that. Our friend Scott Conan is going to show us how to fix it ahead so you don't have to spend your Sunday in the kitchen. His recipe is straight out of his new cookbook. We love this title. Peace, Peace love, and, and pasta. pasta. By the way, brilliant title, Scott. How are you? I'm great. It's nice to see you. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, everybody loves a good old-fashioned plate of spaghetti and meatballs, but I know you have your Scott twist on it. You know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't just do a little something to it. I, uh, I started with this beautiful Neapolitan tomato sauce. So I took, I took a bunch of beef and onions and celery and crushed red pepper and garlic, and I 
cooked it all up together, got it nice and caramelized and brown. I added a bunch of tomatoes to it, fresh tomatoes, canned tomatoes, about 50-50. And then I just cooked it for a while. Mm. Uh, I made a large batch, so this went for about three and a half hours until this meat, which I later pulled out, was just falling apart and beautiful. Mm. And I love those little flecks of meat every once in a while that you get in the tomato sauce itself. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is take that tomato sauce and make these little polpettine. We call them polpettine because we charge by the vowel in Italian restaurants, <laughs> right? So, you know, it just goes. <laughs> so I have here um, this beautiful, uh, can you see that? So yeah. it's ground beef, ricotta, mm. Parmesan cheese, wow. garlic, oregano, just a really simple, straightforward recipe. The, the key to it is this panade. And I just mix it up like that and make these meatballs. Mm -hmm. I like the meatballs really tiny. Oh, look so I line them up adorable. like little soldiers. Those, yeah, and I just take them and roll them out really small. It's painstaking, gives you a lot to think about, a lot of time to think. <laughs> and I just line them up on the little tray just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this cast iron pan here and I'll fry them up. Oh, fry the balls. Butter, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of and you see how nice and golden yeah. they get? They're just really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, and I toss them in that sauce, just like this. Look at that. I add a little bit, and I'll just let that cook like that together for about five minutes or so, just for a little bit of flavor in part. But there's so much incredible concentrated flavor inside this tomato sauce with those meatballs now. I take this pasta, this macaroni. This is a store-bought one. You could easily do the one that I have in the book as well. It's a beautiful macaroni and toss it together. And I add a little bit of this pasta cooking liquid as well. Did I lose you there? Yes. I, think I lost you. No, oh, no, there no. We go. Right here. We're, we're, just, we're just taking notes right there with you. Okay. <laughs> so toss it all together. Add a little bit of butter, a little bit of torn basil inside of it. Mm. And this is special stuff. You know, you could freeze the sauce ahead. You could yes. freeze the meatballs as well. I mean, those are really important things to do. And then it's just really easy assembly for you. I mean, that, by the way, uh, Scott, we want that. It looks so good. You said you you throw some butter cubes in the yes. finished product. So I put a little bit of butter inside there. Ah. It, you know what it does? It rounds out the edges of the acidity of the yeah. tomato sauce. Okay. You know, so I feel like it just kind of softens it on the bottom. Oh. and I both like to eat yeah. our our spaghetti with our kids, Lady in the Tramp yeah. style. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. And we're going to try it with your recipe this weekend. <laughs> thank you, Scott. To get thank, this, you. thank you, Scott. To get this recipe, head to day.com slash food. And for Scott's mm. cookbook, we love this. It's called Peace, Love, and Pasta. Head to day.com slash shop.
are back. It is 8.49 with today's food. And this morning, our dear friend Valerie Bertinelli is back. She's with She's us. She's up. By the way, we just lost her shot two seconds ago, and she came back because we just trust and believe. Right. The power anyway, of Valerie. We are so happy that Valerie's here. She's got recipes that are full of light and full of flavor. Hey, Valerie, I know you're just resetting your shot. We're so hey, happy Val. that yes, you're I here. Do. I don't know. Oh, I got to fix the um. That's the all right. Sound. Take your oh, time. No, you're good. Take your you're time. Good. You're you are. Got Can time. you hear don't us? Don't worry. It's the perfect. It's good. We see your glasses and your ceiling. You look it's fine. adorable. I don't know if she can <laughs> hear us. Oh she, oh, she can hear us. There you go. The perfect spring dish, Valerie. Why are my earpods not coming on? I don't uh, know. Right. You know what? Um, you're listening and you to know Wolfie's what? Music. You don't have to be a mathematician to be able to make this. Oh, wow. 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 We're never going to hear the end of this. Go, Valerie. I love how go long people are watching the show. Go, Valerie. Yeah. Yeah. Valerie, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Oh, you hear me? All right. Girl, we're yes, so okay. glad we're so glad to see you. Other than your <laughs> shot just going down, how have you been doing? I've been doing very well. How about you guys? I well, cannot wait to get my butt to New York to see you guys in person. Yeah. I'm right. Oh, we we want on. you to be one of the first chefs who walks through the door. So what are you whipping up for us today? Oh, I am whipping up. Oh, let me get everything on. <laughs> I'm so worried about actually getting on. Um, so I've got a little bit of olive oil. This is a nice lemony, herby um, with uh, uh, pasta with some nice fresh beans. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a pan going with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just, I'm all for clamped now. Okay, so <laughs> let me get the heat up and get this all melted. And then into that, you're going to throw some shallots, one shallot. And that's mm -hmm. all nice and chopped easily. Mm -hmm. Shallots are really easy that way. Get that stirred up. While the shallots cook, you're going to slice up some garlic. Now, usually I like to grate garlic into any mm. meal that I'm making. Yeah. But I want to see the slices of garlic in here. Mm. And they get really beautiful and soft and creamy. And they just melt right into the pasta. Mm. So I've got the pasta already going. Just plain old spaghetti. The good stuff. Mm. Good old-fashioned spaghetti that I grew up on. Yeah. So while this sautés a little bit, plus we're going to get a little bit of chili pepper, red pepper in here. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going to soften up in the butter and the olive oil. So as that softens up, the pasta is really ready to go because I put it in when we first met you guys at the very, very beginning, like 45 minutes ago. Not that long ago. <laughs> anyway, gonna... you're going to use the nice hot pasta water and throw in your snot peas. And you're going to give them a really quick blanch in there. And so while those guys blanch and this guy fries up, you're going to throw in a little bit of heavy cream. Oh, and this uh -huh. is going to give you a really a beautiful, mm. creamy sauce. Mm, it's will. just a couple tablespoons. It's not much. I love that I'm hearing all these mmms and mmms. Mm. Mm. One of these days, we're going to be together and you'll be yes. able to actually taste it. Yes. So while that cooks down, I'm going to throw this heat down really low because I don't want to boil off all the cream. Then you're just going to grab some pasta water out of your pot right here mm -hmm. where your beans is, are blanching. Throw that in there and you're going to loosen it up. And while you're at it, just grab all of your spaghetti and your beans. It's not peas. What am I calling them beans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're going to throw them right into right in what you just created. Yeah. That beautiful I like that sauce. thing just drains the water Ooh, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't that great? Yeah. Then you're going to throw on some lemon juice and some lemon zest. Mm, Get a nice lemony flavor because mm. that's the way I roll. Get that all mixed up. And while you're mixing that, throw in some Parmesan. Mm, of course. And then you're going to throw in some fresh herbs. Oh, that's parsley. Oh, that's, 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 that's a live and shot. That is beautiful. Amazing. There you go. Hey, now, Val, could you serve that, that cold? You sure. absolutely could. Look, I made some last night. It came right out of the fridge, mm. and I'm going to have this for breakfast when I'm done with you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, Valerie, Isn't that beautiful? For breakfast too. Yeah. That's great. Who's Val oh, hell yeah. Down? Hey, Valerie, how's Wolfie doing? He's doing great. His album drops on June 11th. I hope he comes back to see you guys. Yeah. That'd be great. I love Lucky that song, uh, Free. That track, Free, I think just came out recently. So many good songs. Isn't in that okay. amazing? Yeah. I mean, it's so hard for me, even though I know him, that he plays every single instrument on that. It's crazy. That. It's crazy. Mm. 
He's brilliant, but I'm his mom. What do I know? <laughs> and Carson, when his first, when that single came out, what kind of reception Distance. did it get? Yeah. Oh, immediately. I, yeah. you know, as I spoke to Wolf, he was worried about what you know Van Halen fans would think, but he's he's carved his own way yeah. with this record. And as Val said, it's and I'll say it. I mean, it's ridiculous that he is that talented to do every part on that record, <laughs> and it's so good. I love you, Carson. No, it's true. <laughs> I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Yeah, it's great. You don't have to pay anybody else. I'm so proud else. of him. Yeah. Yeah. I show, yeah. That's right. You don't have to split that check five other ways. <laughs> <laughs> good to see Thanks, you, Val. Val. Oh, we good miss you. you. We miss so you. Good to see you guys. I can't wait to see you. Enjoy that pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to get your hands on Valerie's recipes, you can go to Day. Got. It's been a long 24 hours. Today. Today.com <laughs> slash food. <laughs> and don't forget to catch episodes of Valerie's Home Cooking on the Food <laughs> Network. Bye, Val. We love Bye, you. Bye, Val. This morning's guest is known affectionately around the world as Pepper Thai <laughs> for her fun videos, her love of spicy food, and Chrissy Teigen knows her quite well. She calls her mom. I love it. For years, Pepper has been showing off her culinary skills on YouTube in Pepper's Corner, a series featured on Chrissy's channel. And now you can cook along with her because the Pepper Thai cookbook is out today. That's right. We're so excited that she's here with us to tell us that and so much more to share one of her favorite family recipes. Good morning, Pepper. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, New York. I love Thai I food. So. Pepper, I just, before we get to your recipe, I, I guess Pepper is not your given name. You weren't born with that name. How did you get that nickname? Uh, <clears throat> when I first came to America in 1983, uh, her father and I bought a tavern up in Seattle, Washington, and uh, and we run the tavern for a while. And uh, I've been cooking there, and uh, and I always make my own food, and I eat so spicy, mm. so hot. That, uh, <laughs> and then pepper. my name, my Thai name is kind of hard to pronounce, so I, uh, so they give me the papers. We'll uh, take it. As, uh, we'll take my it. My name sent. Yes. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about what you're cooking here. Stir fried spaghetti. Yes, yeah, spaghetti and like a sweet chili jam mm. um, with uh, sun dried tomatoes. Mm. Uh, the, I think it's a very easy, pretty much kind of like a pad thai, a little bit. It, I think it's a lot easier too. <laughs> this way. Wow. Oh, um, well, every, oh, good morning. Uh, Hi, John. Hi, Chris. They are waiting. I'm so excited for mom. We can't hear anything. Oh, okay. Well, it's not rehearsal. I saw Carson. I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi. hi. John and morning. Chris. Chrissy is not. We miss New York. I know. It was oh, so fun to be fun. all together like that. Pepper, so how do you make this? Give us your, your, your recipe here. So I just fried garlic, uh, chicken. Uh, slide up and then uh, chili jams. I add in a sun dried tomatoes and I will tell the chicken is cooked. Mm -hmm. This is the chili jam. I had it in my book. Uh, you can make your own or you can buy it uh, at the supermarket. And you can make it spicy uh, it, uh, or sweet, right? Or maybe if your kids don't like right. spicy. Yes, right. Yes. 
I mean, even this uh, chili jam is come with uh, no spice, medium and high. And for me, I add more. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, yes. Pepper, Pepper, you use a lot of fish sauce uh, throughout the yes. cookbook. Uh, what is fish sauce mm -hmm. for folks who aren't familiar with that? Uh, fish sauce is like a fermented fish. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I cannot live without it. Um, I, you know, uh, we use a lot, uh, try to get people to learn how to use it. Uh, even a household is like a regular thing at the house. People are really uh, tend to uh, using, using it uh, now more than 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, our house is like every day. Uh, you know, more than the soy sauce. Right. Oh, wow. So, Pepper, Thai food, I think anybody would say, is one of the most delicious cuisines on earth. Mm -hmm. The flavor is just so yes. elevated. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But people are probably a little intimidated to try and recreate a Thai dish in their own homes. Mm -hmm. Why should they not be nervous to do that? Uh, people always order Thai food, but I know they're intimidated. I mean, even... Chrissy, she have me now. She's rather have me doing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, it's so easy. Uh, <laughs> we have to do our own hair today. <laughs> Does she always do that uh, when you're yes. cooking? Come in and do Such your hair? Such a stage mom. You look she beautiful. She, wow. she loves to teasing me and yeah. playing around with me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I would cook every day if Chrissy it, Teigen came in and did my hair. And tussled yeah, your exactly. hair. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, I yes, I did that. Yes. Robert, thank you so much. Congratulations on the cookbook. Thank you so much. Thanks, we miss Pepper. New York. Love your guy. I watch your guy every day. Oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you. It's called the Pepper uh, Thai and, Cookbook. Uh, you can find it at today.com. Yes. <laughs> Slash mm. food. Love Thai food, food right? Yeah. 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 Oh, got to do it tonight. Thank now you. that's a good Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, Chrissy. Bye, Chrissy. I wish Bye. John was Bye. in the Bye. towel. Thank you. <laughs> the family affair today. Oh, I that's love awesome. her. Jocelyn Delk Adams, she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. I know. Hey it's now. been so long, guys. Uh, it's it's good been to see so you. long. Thank you. What so are we making? Lemony chicken.